Welcome back to Macrodosing, a live Macrodosing, live in studio. We've got everybody. We've got Billy, Big T, myself, Arian, Coley, special guest Donnie, the wonton Don, joining us. we got Avery and Mad Dog in the control room. It's good to see everybody in person. It's good to have everybody face-to-face like this. I'm Billy, just... why do you take the glasses off? Bro, we had a deal. Dude, it's just that I can't look at the computer with the shade, and then it's... Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. you're the guy who looks shit up, right? I, just, I gotta be active. That's what <laughs> I'm gonna put it, yeah. I guess we're just built different. That's yeah. fine. I've been doing this shit for years, Billy. I got these baby blues. Before we get into the actual podcast, I uh, want to give a big shout out to Dat Chat. Dat Chat is our presenting sponsor of this show. Dat Chat is a very fun app. We've actually been using Dat Chat a lot. Arian literally just said before we started recording, you say, you high key fuck with that chat. I high key fuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. Arian's always on that chat. Uh, we're gonna start reading some of the questions, some of the posts on that chat on this show. It's a cool app. We like it a lot. We're all on that chat. I want to give a shout out to one of the dudes. He left a post on there and they deleted it because he he tried to screenshot my response, which is what that chat is for. It's like a privacy type of yep type of deal. So, uh, shout out to that dude who I should have said his name. But was it's post deleted, so I can't. Yeah. He they they do protect you against screenshots and in fact tells you. The name of the person that's that tries to screenshot your shit. That chat's a cool app. A lot of podcasts you're using it right now. I think that we're, you know what we are. I think we're the best that chat users at this company. I think we use it the way that's supposed to be used. Getting some real shit on there. That chat's an awesome new social networking and messaging app. A bunch of us here at Barcelona are now using it. It gives you the ultimate level of privacy. Now you can message and share with the people you know the way you normally do. You can send a bunch of drunk texts that you might regret. You can self-destruct all of them at once, pretend like it never happened. If you're sending private pictures, that chat is great because no screenshotting is allowed. I would like that for, like, my text messages. Yeah. Well, you could just use that chat instead of texting. Just be like, hit me on hit me on the DC. Hit me on the DC. Yeah. That chat will let you delete all your pictures. Uh, if you want to talk about something private with your girlfriends or guy friends, bachelorette or bachelor party plans, no screenshotting allowed. I know a lot of you out there are getting married. You have friends you know that might be getting married when it's time to plan the bachelor party, when it's time to plan that bachelorette. You don't want any paper trails out there. Use that chat. Use that chat to do it. It's you the best way. You sow your royal oats. Yeah, exactly. If you want, just it's a safer way to communicate with your friends. Use that chat, and you can communicate with us on there, too. You can join the Macrodosing group and uh, and post on our is it a, do we call it the macrodosing board or the macrodosing? It's the macrodosian cave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Mac cave. <laughs> Download Dat Chat for iPhone and Android. That's D A T C H A T, or go to datchat.com slash barstool. Get more info. Download Dat Chat today. Dat Chat on the iPhone and Android stores right now. Check it out. Massive thanks to our great friends at Dat Chat for being the presenting sponsor of Macrodosing. All right. China. We're here to talk <laughs> about China. Um, but before that, let's just do like a quick reset. How's everybody in the room doing? Aaron, how was your trip here? It was fire, man. Uh, <clears throat> well, the trip here wasn't fire. Let me take it back. It was shitty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. But uh, So I took a train ride. I was in Seattle, right? I went from Portland to Seattle and then Seattle to Portland all on a train. And I'm a train guy now. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. 100% trains are way better than planes. Correct. Cosign. Planes are overrated. And so it's so relaxing. You get this, like, I, I had a roommate, and it's like there's two sh- uh, seats, and you fold them down as yep. it becomes a bed. You have meals, three-course meals. Uh, it's just a beautiful experience. The the scenery is amazing. And then I get on a plane. I had a red eye to New York, and it's just they just treat you like cattle. You know, they just mm-hmm. hop on, get on, and everybody chop, chop, chop. And then the turbulence fuck with my anxiety, so... I might not do planes for a while, man. Dude, trains are by far the superior way to travel. It's not even a question for me anymore. And w- when you can get that train at room, I know there's one particular train that goes from New York all the way down to Florida, so I try to take that when I go back to D.C. as much as I can. It's called the Silver Meteor, which is just a classy fucking That's sounding sick. train. Oh, that sounds And it's classy. got these nice carts in it. You've got a bed that you can lay down on. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. You don't have to go through security to get on them. Mm-hmm. No. Way more comfortable. You feel like – I almost feel like people should – should be more woke to the fact that train travel is massively superior in every way yeah. to airplane travel. We should actually circle back to train talk because I think China has some of the nicest trains in the world. It, it's true, and it's 
troublesome like how far behind we are with like train technology in this yeah. country like we've really I've, like when amtrak was pitched i feel like that was early 2000s for some reason i feel like al gore was attached whether or not he was doesn't really matter to me but i feel like it was sold as like high speed like these things are going to be fucking flying and they really don't like no, we were kind of no, no. and i'm a big no, train guy but i feel like they should be going much faster yeah I, cause I went to japan and um i had a travel lady and she like set up like this whole like little travel and like so we went from like we went from like tokyo to like kyoto and there was like two or three other cities that we went to and we went on train and it was fucking amazing and yeah. I, now that i'm thinking about it just now they're way better than <laughs> they were here. Yeah, right. I just yes. Didn't think about it. And I it, still like the ones here. Yeah, a lot. No, I'm a no, big I would, train. Guy. Yeah, I would prefer it, but it's just like yeah, you're you're a thousand percent. And then I, and I typed up. I was like, yo, there has to be like luxury trains because you could tell it was a little, it wasn't as modern, a little out of date. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I looked up luxury trains, and it, there was one. I, I don't know where over there in Asia it was, but in Asia it was like this luxury. Like it looked like the ones like like, like if the Titanic was a train. It was okay. Like yeah. yeah. You know what's well, probably I mean, that's that's actually a horrible fucking thing. To say. Yeah, you don't want to be I, that I, train. Yeah. I've I've changed my plan. Instead of Titanic to the ship, it's just going to be a replica of the Titanic, but it's on a train track. That would be so it can't it can't sink. Dude, I across the Atlantic. Yeah, so. that, should, that should be painted on the side. It, it yeah. won't sink. Yeah, <laughs> guaranteed. There's definitely like big plane involved, and why the trains didn't get much more entrenched in the. United oh, talk States. to me. Talk to me. Like there's got to be like because there was there was this proposed plan. Like, do you guys see that picture on high speed rail? Yeah, yeah like it goes viral all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and it would be Honestly, so sick. It turns me on whenever that yeah. picture of the United <laughs> States that has the different train lines pops up on my timeline. It's about once every six months. I actually get aroused when I look at it, that because I'm like. Fuck, I could get to Chicago on a train from New York in three hours. That's amazing. I yeah. do that all the time. It's like New York to Miami in like five hours. Like I yeah. I just constantly go to Miami. Yeah, I know. Like all the time. So the reason that China has a train system like that and the U.S. doesn't is because in the U.S. you got to worry about property rights. Like all the land is owned by someone. And if to build a really fast train, it just has to go like direct. Mm. So they would have to buy up all the property like along that train line. Whereas got in it. China, they just say... You know what? We're That's building the train now. here, and you have to move. <laughs> and if you don't move, <laughs> we're to just be gonna, fair, you yeah. could ask certain demographics of this country if how they feel about like eminent domain. Just yeah, take your land. Definitely yeah, has happened that, here for sure. As a matter of fact, my grandpa had a ranch, and um, the government came in and said that we're gonna need part of that, and they just took it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talk to him, Big T. I mean, they're supposed <laughs> to pay you fair market value for wait, your land. Wait, Big yeah. T, you should be the most anti-government taking your land am, guy here. I am. But they are, when they do that, they're supposed to pay you fair fair value Who's, for it. According to who? And that's it why fair? it becomes Well, like that's where it comes fair. in, right? But no, it's yeah, pretty I'm, fair to have your house and keep it. That's what I think. <laughs> no, fair. agreed. I am anti-government the taking any of my shit. That taxation that's, is that's theft. Yeah. Eminent domain is theft. But hmm. it's not like they just come in and steal it. Why don't, why don't we just go, go underground? underground? Yeah. Quick, uh, quick fact. It's called the Mile Long Club on a train. <laughs> oh, I looked it up. Yeah, really? Mile Long. Club. I am a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. I knew someone would be wondering. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. Run a train. I t- oh, <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Actually, no, 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 <laughs> no. Where, where do you don't want to run a train on a train? That would be weird because it's way too tight of quarters for that. Y- yes. You're way too close to the dude. Well, if you yes. just went to like uh, room to room. Mm, yeah. Where did the phrase run a train come from? There's multiple. I think yeah. there's a multiple caboose. people in the caboose. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. These are things yeah. I've never thought of before. Probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> Trains fuck, though. I love, love a good train. Mm-hmm. It's so much smoother. Like Arian said, you don't have the turbulence either. Yeah. You don't have to worry about buckling up. You don't have to worry about... Like everything is immediate on a train. You just get there. You get on. You don't have to wait for an hour and a half. Yeah. When the train arrives, you just simply get off the train. You don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, walk through a massive airport. You don't yep. have to wait till the train taxis to its gate. Yeah. Yeah. Trains it's are just a million percent more efficient than airplanes. Something about the sound of the train, it just like lulls me to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, I was on a 25 hour train in China and I slept for like 20 of those hours. There was like a Chinese person in the room with me because each room had three beds and I slept for 20 hours and like they started worrying that I had. <laughs> died on the train <laughs> and when i finally moved like they all just breathed a sigh of relief they're like we thought we were like in yeah. this room of a dead foreigner yeah, i don't want to go to jail for killing this white guy yeah. Dead American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what what's interesting i took the train before i was back comfortable flying i took the train from here to atlanta um which was like 18 hours That's beautiful but it got pushed to 20 hours because they said we hit a tree 
which I don't know if you guys know anything about trains and how they like there's not a lot of trees that like just mm -hmm. pop up in front of it. So that what I learned because it happened again on the way back <laughs> means they hit a hobo. They murdered a guy <laughs> oh, with wow. the train, Ooh. which happens quite frequently. Really? And they don't like to create a panic that you've been involved technically in a murder. Um, oh, wow. So they tell you they hit something, which doesn't really make sense. Like trees don't just pop up in the middle of tracks. Like I would have yeah. been good so lie. gullible. Like, yeah, we hit a tree. Yeah, it's not a good lie at all. Holy like, what shit. do you mean we hit a tree? Yeah, Yo, you, you killed they, somebody. They would, yeah. They would oh, yeah. Keep You're an accessory to murder. So the, on the way back. Manslaughter. On the way back, I wasn't on the train yet because it goes from here to like Louisiana. Um, and then wraps back up. So that one, they killed him like immediately outside of New Orleans. So I wasn't even on there yet. But the train still had like the blood on Dude, it. Dude, that happens oh all the time gosh. in the subway. All the time. I've seen it like, it, but what usually happens is people going between the carts and then falling in between. Mm -hmm. And that's how they get squished. People who do that confidently freak me out. They're, they're, they just move like real quickly between the train cars. It's yeah. like that. No, you, you should not be moving this yeah. fast. You should be very. Are y'all talking about like getting to the other side? No, like if you if you're on a subway, there's a door at the back of each car, and you can go into the next car down, even while the train's moving. Oh, like in the movies. Like in the movies, and sometimes people just like sprint through there. Like I didn't know people that actually did lives. that shit. And it's like the most dangerous shit ever because the train's bumping and it's going side to side. You fall down, you're fucking dead. Oh my immediately. god, dude! More people when if they miss the train when the train's leaving and it's going slowly, they jump on the back of the train. Yeah, that's cool. And hold on. Yeah. That's pretty sketchy. No, that's cool. <laughs> I had a friend who did that. He's Matt, still here? I was just, he's still here, but he's... Not for long. Yeah. <laughs> he has other risky behaviors besides jumping on the Oh, you train. don't say. Like, he's just an idiot. Hanging out with Billy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being friends with William Football. Raw dogging. He raw dogs. Dude. I was on the other side of the door making sure he got there okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Couldn't open it, though. There's, like, the conductor's... So you're just giving him, like, window loves, just saying, hold on. So wait, he could have made the train, but he just wanted to Billy jump didn't on hold the we door were, for him. We were running on the train. I got in. There was a couple of people behind me. And then he was late because he didn't have a metro card. And he just ended up jumping on the back of the train and holding on. So you didn't hold the door for your friend? No. He was trying to get a metro card. We thought he wasn't actually going to full send it. And the train was going. Got it. One, one thing I realized living here long enough, like, you don't have to pay for a metro card. I'm the only person that pays for the subway in this whole city. Nine million <laughs> I did people, for a the long time, like, and then I just stopped and nothing happened. No, like, but you don't, it doesn't matter. Bro, Wait, but then you have to you have to climb under, right? I can. I have luxury. I can just step over. I realize not everyone can <laughs> oh, do that. Okay, but yep. yeah. I mean, I see plenty of people who just like hop over. Yeah, yeah they just yeah. jump. Or there's the the emergency door. People just hold the door open and people just flood in. Mm -hmm. Which yes. I love. That's that's beautiful. My man. Me. So the first time I was in New York, my man, uh, I was I didn't know that you didn't have to pay. And so I, I was. I asked, I asked this dude. I was like, "Yo, where do you where do you buy the metro card?" He was like, "Come here." <laughs> <laughs> he just laughed at me, and he just hopped over. He's like, "Come on." And I was like, "Where?" I was like, "Man, nobody cares." I was like, "Bet." So I, I, I haven't paid since. Very yeah. funny TMZ article. Like Arian Foster arrested, refuses to pay for train. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, everybody's doing it, man. Correct. <laughs> yeah, not big T. They make a hundred and twenty-seven dollars a month, and it is all off of me. That's their. Cause you pay a hundred and twenty-seven dollars for that shit. Yeah, I see why people have it. I'm hopping it. I always pay for it. If I got caught, that would just be so embarrassing. I usually pay for it too. They just I'll give you a honest. ticket, like you don't get arrested. How many emergency doors? How much doors... is the ticket? If is it less than one twenty-seven? Oh yeah. How many emergency Shit. doors on average do you think actually make the noise when you hit it? Because I've seen so many false emergency doors. Yeah, I think that's just placebo. Like they be they be fucking with people. Mm -hmm. like, I'm talking about they're not even on the subways. This is in general. Yeah, in general, I don't schools, I don't, bars. I don't think any of them are actually connected to any alarms. Whole shit is capped. The song, whole song. Whole, yeah, the entire situation's capped. Big I cap. agree. And then I agree. on elevators, you know what else is capped? On elevators, you're the, wrong. The closed, the closed door. No, no, it wrong. Work, they work here. That's it's right. It works here. No, it's cap. It I've, works. What's I, that? I've worked in door closed. The door closed button. I've some of them are. I've okay. worked in too many buildings as a security guy where I've tested this theory on a lot of elevators. Some of them, they do work. Some of them are just a button that you can push and nothing happens. Right. Okay. So I, I think a more accurate way to put it would be if for whatever reason that button gets disconnected or stops to not work on an elevator, it will never get fixed. Yeah, that's fair. I think so that's if fair. it goes out of order, it's like, okay, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So they might connect it when they install the elevator on, on some of them. But I don't know. I feel like there are just so many. And granted, I've, I've written a lot of very bad elevators the last like four years in my apartment complexes so um elevators are badly designed the buttons should be on the floor 
Pixcoin. No. I, 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 was I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Elevators are badly designed. They should go sideways. <laughs> I mean, some walk elevators, man, that'd be fire. That's a subway, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a train. <laughs> but not yeah. in a building, though, right? Yeah. All right, so Serpent. how many times have you seen people, like, pick their nose and eat the boogers or just be in their drawers and then... They pressing the same buttons you pressing. Like, that's disgusting. Just had a shit on the floor so you could tap floor 12 and you good. I feel like you'd hit all of the buttons always, though. Make it, space it out so where people with big feet, or just don't be a doofus, bro. Just hit the fucking button. And if you fuck up, you're going to have an extra stop. What, but you won't have germs. What happens if it gets crowded? What like, you mean? know, when you're they pack an the elevator numbers, and yeah. they're. That shit, I mean... I think it needs to be, like, I mean, against the wall. What's a, cr- like what's, a what's a crowded elevator? Like, 10? Sometimes people pack elevators. Yeah. That's when you back out. Like, you got to get out. Like, this shit's... I you shouldn't be in an elevator with more than 10 people. Yeah. Get I out. kind of agree with that. Get Nothing out. good happens in an elevator with that's that packed. <laughs> Maybe have them on the ceiling. And then you could just limit the amount of people that could physically touch them. <laughs> the short yeah. people can't, oh, you people know what? Out, can't yeah. get where they need well, to go. Well, you just we do... got grubby hands anyways. You don't want our short little paws on there. <laughs> or you just do the sly, take your shirt, and just use it to cover your hand when you press the button. Mm. I've never actually thought about that, though, Aaron. You're right. There's some, some gross buttons. B- buttons on the floor? That's fire. Yeah. But, but that's the case with, like, all buttons then. then. I guess, like, all buttons are pretty gross. Yeah. yeah. We're, I mean, we're yeah. a gross society. Yeah. yeah. For sure. That's accurate. That's why you should limit... Touching stuff. I love. Like I money, love pushing them though. I like love when pushing you a good button. Exchange money. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's why Money's now gross. most cash is going digital. And I'm okay. With also, it. also back to China. I was only using my phone to pay for things like five years before they came out with that here in oh, the shit. U.S. Oh shit. Yeah, like they had WeChat Pay way before Apple Pay. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'd be Apple paying everything. Mm. Like, yeah, it's only uh, like touching money. Speaking of elevators, Donnie and I had a, a wonderful weekend at the Margaritaville Resort in Times Square, New York City. <laughs> <The> resort. <laughs> yeah, we stayed the resort and spa. Oh, there is a resort. A, yeah, yeah, there is. Oh, okay. It's a full-on resort. Okay. We're talking hundreds of rooms. Outdoor We're pool. <laughs> outdoor pool. Six restaurants and bars. The five o'clock somewhere bar, which opens up at five o'clock every day. Um, the licensed chill bar. You've got really everything that you need there except for working elevators, which was an issue yes. uh, for us the entire weekend. The elevators just, they, I think they have four of them for probably like, I don't know, 500 rooms or something like that, and all the staff that works there. At one point, I was going down to the basement, uh, going to the Fins Up Fitness Center, and I was going down <laughs> on the elevator, and it was jacked. There were like probably 12, 13 people on this elevator, and we get to the sixth floor, and this poor guy that works in the kitchen at one of the restaurants there looks in and he goes, I'm so sorry. Can you guys get out and let me in? Because <laughs> I've been waiting here for 30 minutes for this elevator. Mm-hmm. And we're all like, you know, we're paying money to stay there. And so we're like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. We were also waiting a long time for this <laughs> elevator, too. I just felt so bad for the guy. But I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? I, since I am paying for the room, I think I'll I'll just continue on the elevator that I was on. <laughs> oh, Hold on, he was we, it was a service elevator? Yeah, no, it was a normal elevator. Oh shit! Yeah, was that a dick move? Because I keep I keep feeling bad bit, about it. A little bit, yeah. No, no, but, no. no. I think He's, the way he asked you about it showed a lot of humility. Yeah, and I yeah. think you feel bad about being like, you know yeah. what? I'm more important. It's a bad than situation all around, but still a dick move. Yeah, you're the right. The customer is always right, though. Yeah, but the people that or say not. that are the most wrong people. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not. <laughs> Those are the customer. biggest dickhead. Anyone who's yeah. ever said the words, yeah. the customer is always right, is either a dickhead customer that you don't want or a dickhead boss that you don't want to work for. Because I, right. no, I don't know how much you guys know about customers, but a lot of them are fucking idiots. I would say the majority. The majority mm-hmm. of customers are fucking dumb. Yeah, really dumb. Yeah. They that, just piss people off. That's how Karens were born. Customers always right. Yeah. You just end up with that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You're right. That's what gave that Karen his like, license. Uh, unevolved version of Karen. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. But there's a difference between what y'all are talking about most of the time and somebody asking you, like, hey, I know you paid all this money for this, but can you just, like, not do what you need to do? That's not the same. Yeah. As, like, somebody going into a fucking McDonald's and raising a. For yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. They're like, hey, can I get that burger instead? <laughs> like, the person that right. works there. Did you see right. that lady? Yeah. <laughs> um, who, who was the comedian? Um,. Fucking, oh, he he does impressions all the time. I don't know. He was just did Frank Caliendo. No, black dude. Um, Ari Spears. G- oh, no, Jay Farrow. Jay, Jay, yeah. oh, not Jay Farrow. The, oh, the next one. Oh, the fat, the fat guy. <laughs> Definitely not fat. So anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, he was doing he was he was he was he was doing a show, and some white lady gets on gets on this stage. Oh, I did see this. And tells him I'm offended. Of what you said, and he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and like the whole crowd booing and shit. She's like, "I just think that you should." There are people in the crowd that are offended. He was like, 
Get the fuck off the stage. This shit is crazy, dog. Damn. They, uh, that's some customers always right bullshit. It right is, there. though. I've never seen that at a comedy show, though. No, no like, I haven't either. That's wild. I would actually, I would venture to say that 90% of the time, the customer is wrong. 100% of hecklers at comedy shows. Those customers are never correct. Those customers yeah. are always yeah. idiots. And just being a, like, having a job is mostly about dealing with people and educating them in the nicest way possible <laughs> how they're actually wrong about what they think, but still making them happy about it, which is a very tough skill to have. I would say, though, overall, we had a good time at Margaritaville. Without right? a doubt, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a wonderful stay. I'm just saying that that one specific elevator instance. The elevators were that, rough. That was the only bad part, but the Margaritaville in Times yeah. Square is an amazing, romantic, enchanting place. Uh, we ate lunch inside of the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. There's one table that they set aside, and we just we hawked that table. We, just, we saw a family that was eating there, and we just stood next to them, and we said... <laughs> I think first you need to explain to people that there is a Statue of Liberty that's holding a oh. margarita glass. Mm -hmm. I thought they would just assume that. Okay, yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. naturally, at the Margaritaville Resort in Times Square, in their Cheeseburger in Paradise restaurant, they have a giant two-and-a-half, three-story Statue mm -hmm. of Liberty, and she's holding a book that says, No Passport Required. You did have to show your vaccine passport to get in there. You did. I do yeah. feel like that bears. Uh, that yeah. bears that's a hot it. conservative take yep. right now, BC. Yep. No, I mean, it, it was true. And then, I agree. And then yep. uh, she was holding, instead of her torch, it was a giant margarita glass. And the margarita glass had sharks that swam around in it. And it was That's light sick. up, and sometimes yeah. it's a strobe sick. light. And so she was looking good, and we decided, you know what? We want to be the people that eat lunch inside of the Statue of Liberty. So we waited on it, waited on it. Finally, we pressured this young family into getting up and leaving their lunch early so that I could sit inside. Can you imagine? Like you pressured that man out there? Yeah, you guys just, <laughs> we just guys be running around being dicks. We're being <laughs> really I was on a bullying mission not trying knowing to tour a place you live. <laughs> you don't know these two people. They're both wearing sunglasses. They just are like hovering over your family. Yes. It's like, hey, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, it was it was fun. It was a it was a good lunch. The drinks were flowing. I think I tried all the different novelty cocktails that they had there. It was. It was a good time. I got my I got a latitude adjustment. Is what I now got. the only thing I must say is that I was almost killed by a bouquet of flowers. Uh, Twenty minutes after arriving, I'm I'm hanging by the pool and I hear a loud thud. I turn around and there's a bouquet of flowers. And I'm like, where did this come from? I realized that someone had thrown it off the roof. <laughs> and like the roof, how tall is that building? I it's think like, it's 36 stories, so it's pretty tall. Yeah, and so you know, I think at that height, if that had landed on my head. It could have done some damage. Definitely. What was what was the vibe of the other people staying at the Margaritaville Resort? It was a little mixed. So it was Dave Matthews Band weekend at, at Penn Station. I oh, love that. So there were a lot of people that were staying at the Margaritaville Restaurant and Bar and Saloon and Resort that were also going to the Dave Matthews Band concert. So <laughs> What a weekend. Yeah. Great great weekend for white people. I was going to say, that's the <laughs> whitest weekend <laughs> of all time. Actually, I saw some black people there. Yeah, yeah. No, it was actually... Um, Ethnically, it was very mixed. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was a very diverse group Good of for people Dave Matthews that were there. In and fact, his band. yeah. In fact, it was funny. We decided that we would bring some some cards with us when we were going to the bars because you know, like it's that's fun. actually fire. It's fun to have playing cards whenever you go out to a bar with your friends. What do you play? Uh, so we were playing a couple different games. I think we played golf a couple times up the river, down the river. What? Some drinking games. Yeah. What is golf? It's a, a a game where you get four cards. You try to get the lowest score possible. We just mixed it up a little bit, but then it's a white person. Thing. It's a white person. Yeah, y'all yeah. don't play spades. Y'all play spades. Well, so, so we, whiz. we looked across um, across the bar, and there was a table of four young black ladies that also brought playing cards. Huh. Yeah. And so it was a moment where we like looked at each other. Uh -oh. like, <laughs> all right, we're, we're not so different, you and I. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not so different, you <laughs> and little, I. Little cross cultural, you know. Like, listen, at the end of the day, <laughs> we all like to have a good time at a bar. We all like numbers and they're, suits. Yes. They're playing boo ray. You guys are playing goldfish. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. I like this. Yeah. Well, so somebody that we were with was like, hey, what game do you think they were playing? And I was like, it's probably stereotypical of me to say this, but probably spades, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Because yes. four people. Spades or bit whiz. Um, yeah, it's probably spades, though. Mm -hmm. Spades seems like a fun game. Spades is so fun. It's just nothing that, that I was ever taught. Do you know how to play? Up. No, never. You're learning how to, we're all learning how to play this weekend. Okay. This week. Oh, fuck it. I don't even, I don't even count You're days. You're on a perpetual weekend. Week. Yeah, you are. Your whole life is a weekend. Yeah, I, I <laughs> don't. They all just do. They're the same. It's five o'clock somewhere. That's a Jimmy Buffett saying. You and him, not so. It's not Friday so somewhere. Yeah. All right. Before we get to China, we've got a brand new sponsor, Home Medics. Home Medics. I'm uh, very, very excited about the sponsor. They sent a massage pad. They sent a foot massager to the office. I don't know about you guys, but I get sore sometimes in my advanced age. Now that I'm in my late 20s, 
Uh, it sometimes gives me backache, sometimes get a foot ache. There's nothing better than a foot massage. Nothing. Foot massages are awesome. They are the key to life. I love foot massages. And you can now get a foot massager from Homedics. Very excited to try it out. Just got in the office the other day. Taking it for a spin tonight. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Pretty pumped about it. Well, Homedics is going to help you out if you have any sort of back issues, if you've got muscle issues, if you're just looking for a nice massage, a good way to relax at the end of the day, you can use Home Medics. They've got a whole line of massage products. They have a massage gun with built-in hot and cold technology. They have a massage cushion that lets you lie down or sit up, depending on your therapeutic needs. And then that three-in-one foot massager with vibration so powerful, it loosens, it loosens the muscles in your legs and your lower back. The moral of the story is Home Medics has massages that address your pain points from head to toe. I can't wait to try out that foot massage. We're going to give it a spin tonight. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Uh, the little bit of history behind the company. In 1987, a Detroit family founded Home Medics to make people's lives better. Today, they're the established leader in wellness and home health innovations backed by traditional wisdom and modern technology. Plus, they have an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. So they're a brand that you can rely on. Join the millions of customers who trust the Home Medics family to take care of theirs. Whether you're dealing with chronic pain or you're just looking to help your muscles recover from a workout, we've got great news. If you go to homemedics.com slash dose, that's H-O-M-E-D-I-C-S dot com slash dose, use promo code DOSE, you're going to receive a free portable phone sanitizer when you buy $100 or more in massage products. That's a $60 value, a free portable phone sanitizer, $60 value when you go to H O M E D I C S dot com slash dose. Use the promo code dose for your free portable phone sanitizer with a hundred dollar massage purchase. But it was a great time. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was, a you know, I was thinking back to the elevator thing though, not to, not to oh, harp boy. on, not to, not to no, go beat off. off to a dead horse. But uh, <laughs> that's New York City infrastructure. It's all pretty shitty. That was the most surprising thing when I came to New York is like the infrastructure here is like, I feel like I'm living in the 60s. Yep. You yeah. wouldn't know about what you pay in taxes either. Mm -hmm. The subway, though, it was I the know first in like, the going. world. Or maybe the one in Boston was first. But the New York subway was first DC built was like first. 100 years ago. Yeah. So it's hard for them just to revamp the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas in China, they're just building all these subways now so they get the newest like state-of-the-art yeah. subway it's a lot it's a lot easier to start from scratch than try to i think wreck. we have i think we just have to sacrifice as a as a community and be like yo we're shut down for about three months we're not good at that It'd probably yeah, have to know. be like three we years, had a pretty good opportunity yeah, yeah, to right. do that <laughs> yeah fairly <laughs> recently yeah oh could you could you imagine the conspiracy theories out there if during covid they're like hey everybody stay inside we're going to be digging giant holes in the ground <laughs> would have been way better than what the they were actually doing for the next three months and nobody come outside and ask us questions about it just trust us It'll what be were they actually doing out. big t Divide a plan to keep the population <laughs> controlled and subdued for the foreseeable future. Holy shit! Speaking just of keep China, in mind it started. You, it started with 15 days to slow the spread. Now look at where you are. If <laughs> if that were like what was true, I would almost respect it. No, I mean, I don't think they're competent enough to pull that off. They're I not. That's they're my, not. That's my biggest flaw with that line of thinking. Like, who, there's no way. Who they is could they? Do could they? Good question. The Dems. China. Yeah. Actually, no. China. No. no. <laughs> on this, partly. China. Partly. Yeah. They're in coach. On, on this yeah. point. <laughs> Absolutely. China and the Dems. The one thing I'll give merit to <laughs> in, one this, the same. in this conspiracy theory of like COVID having a reason is in the fall of 2019, what was going on in Hong Kong? There were protests, riots, right? Massive protests. They're, they're, but they want democracy Wuhan in Hong Kong. Is, is pretty far from Hong Kong, though. Right, but if you, but wasn't there well, you also? you can't make the virus in the middle of the riot. Don't yeah, you? that would be too obvious. Yeah, too you obvious. have to do it away. Like, yeah, yeah. someone yeah. could six, knock it over. Six yes. people in <laughs> lab coats in the middle of a fucking <laughs> yeah, million people. Tiananmen Square tank rolling. A guy's but, mixing something in a beaker. But like, well, <laughs> I, just you could comment on this, Donnie. What the thing is, we may have only known about the Hong Kong riots. There was like, wasn't there that people thought there was other riots in China that we just didn't know about because we couldn't know about them. Um, I don't know about those, but yeah, I mean, I do know that it, w it was pretty much COVID that stopped the Hong Kong riots. Yeah. Secret riots. I like that conspiracy theory. Well, because well, well, the thing about China is that we don't know, we, they, we don't have their social media and their social media is so heavily censored. Like there could have been a tons of riots. So is ours China. though, bro. Yeah. But like, we still know that January 6th happened and like, you know, we don't know that happened. it happened. That, that was Antifa. Oh, the false flag. <laughs> we still got the visuals. Allegedly. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Wuhan is about a four-hour flight from Hong Kong. Jesus. I know, but you know, like if you had. So to, you're saying. So you're saying. COVID was made be, to stop the Hong Kong protests. Well, basically, uh, I'm not saying this has happened, but there is like something, you know, a little sketchy that the CCP was having all this revolt and all this revival. There was like a bunch of stuff coming out of China then about like various turmoils. And then it's all went away now that COVID hit and they could keep everyone inside. Okay, so it's like the domino meme. The first domino is various turmoils yeah. and, then, and then the second I, domino the, no, no, I, is global pandemic <laughs> well look to, at it, to be fair to your point leap. your yeah. point about wuhan being a four-hour plane ride like it's probably like a 30-hour plane ride from here we still got covid like yeah, yeah. the distance didn't really seem to uh, get in the way yep. of covid spreading and didn't they shut down everything much faster than anybody else yeah, they did in Wuhan, but they also were like the first country to reopen after COVID. So then yeah. when the rest of the world was shut down, they were reopening and then they kind of got a head start on the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So maybe they released it just to slow down the rest of the world so they could mm -hmm. take the lead. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. I, I think that if China was intentionally weaponizing the virus to target a specific population, they probably just would have gone straight for Taiwan. Like, it's an island. If you infected Taiwan right off the bat, mm. their biggest enemy, the yeah. Republic of China, the, the nationalists, um, who technically still claim ownership of yeah. mainland China, that would have been probably the first one they would have gone after and just taken yeah. out most of that population, most of the older people that are still alive from back when they used to live in mainland China. Yeah. And is China and really Taiwan afraid of just, like, pulling up and shooting people? Like, do they need to do it, like, this backhanded um, way? Yeah, I think they are afraid now because they saw, like, all the bad press they get. That's why when shit was going down in Hong Kong, they didn't want to roll tanks into Hong Kong because they gotcha. knew the rest of the world would That's make fair. a big fuss about it. So <laughs> I'm, not <laughs> super, <laughs> yeah. probably, yeah. I'm not super up on my foreign politics. You know, I keep, I'm keep i vaguely aware. So mm -hmm. could somebody, or unless you want to hit it afterward, do you want to do, like, the history of China? No, and we, we, can, we can talk about it right now. Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm aware, like, people in Hong Kong want democracy. That's how I saw it in some, like, loose article. I read and they're protesting for that is that what the protests were about well I guess Hong Kong had democracy and they were for trying to take it back. a while and then they had a plan in place that like by 2047 Hong Kong was going to become fully part of China uh -huh. again um, because in 1990 the UK gave Hong Kong back to China but they couldn't just make it part of the country overnight because oh, it's, about, it's very different okay hold on dates back to colonialism yeah, it does. It mostly does. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, because like this is I, this is really not my bag, so I'm just really asking questions here. So, Great Britain owned Hong Kong at one point, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and then they gave it back to China. Yes. And and when was that? I think 1990. 19 and yeah. something like that, or, or maybe I think 1997. Was, 90, was yeah, it 99? I think it was late 90s. And yeah. so, what are they protesting now, though? Um, well, like China was just slowly passing laws making Hong Kong more like China. Mm. So they tried passing one law that said, okay, you can still be a democracy, but like China is going to choose who you can vote for. Like we're going to choose like five people that you can vote for. I mean, shit, like, that's what we do here. I was going to say, that's yeah. that <laughs> seems democratic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's perfect, actually. So, yeah. So There's Hong more Kong options than we get. We only get two. I, I think England was technically were they leasing Hong Kong from China? They had like a hundred year <laughs> lease. Yeah, it's like a soccer loan. Yeah. Yes. And then their hundred year lease ran out mm -hmm. at the end of the century, I think. And yep. they're like, okay, well, they want to re up. Sign it. Yeah, it's like for, yeah, price went up Super too high. high. <laughs> Supermax yeah, Hong Kong. Yeah, no, yeah the, the neighborhood. You know what? It's this neighborhood's changed a lot in the last hundred years. I think we're gonna have to pack up the U-Haul and jet, and they just gave it back to China, yeah. and then there's, like, that transition period. Also, Donnie and I, when we went to Hong Kong, that was right before the start of the riots, right? That mm -hmm. was, like, a month or two. Hmm. Yep. Interesting time. Yeah, interesting. A month mm. before. Mm. Mm. A month mm. before, so Who? we got either mm. just Was there right someone there. inspiring the youth there? Most places I travel to after I leave, the <laughs> place completely goes to shit. <laughs> I was like, I remember I went to Colombia, and I'm just telling everybody, it's so safe, it's so peaceful, and, like, a week after I left, just riots all over the place <laughs> i love it you're the odell beckham of, yeah. <laughs> of world travelers yeah. caravans coming china, straight to like here. covid broke out as soon as i left china damn oh fuck damn, Donnie. you yeah. might have brought it to the u.s um, man what we should talk about though is how the uk got possession of hong kong in the first place that's a good start because it was related mm -hmm. to the opium wars do you guys know yeah, about I'm those vaguely at all? aware of that it was where they wanted to trade with 
um, China and China said, fuck off. And Japan said, yeah, let's do it. And so, um, and then, or, or, or I could be wrong. That's kind of close. Like, yeah, like the UK and France and like the US, everybody wanted to trade with China because China had a bunch of stuff that they wanted. But China didn't have a lot of things that they wanted from the UK and stuff. So right. it, they're kind of, it was hard to trade. Um, and then they realized, well, if we get all of China hooked on opium, then they're going to want a lot of opium. <laughs> we can just we can just give them some opium for all the stuff that we want. Mm. So that's what they did. The UK would like pick up all the opium from India and then sell it to China and get like all of the things that China had in exchange for it. Like I don't know if it was if it was tea or whatever. And so they did that, and then for a while, like China started to develop a serious serious opium problem. Just like everybody was hooked on it. And finally, the emperor was like, okay, no more selling opium to us. Like, stop. And UK was like, no, we're not going to stop. And just invaded China. And, like, uh, <laughs> went to war with China, the opium wars, where they pretty much, the UK won. Because at that point, China was like, they hadn't, uh, they didn't have, like, a modern military at all. World history is interesting. Yeah. Because it's a lot of, a lot of conflicts are basically based on the exact same thing, which is one country has something that gives you a shitload of serotonin and endorphins. And then if you can just continue to provide that to somebody, yeah. then you're good. But when you stop, then you're in trouble. Yes. Like it's, it's a very, very simple explanation for most wars that occur out there. Like mm -hmm. now the big global conflicts are with like trade tariffs because guess what? China's producing a shitload of cell phones that give us that opium like sensation, gives us a serotonin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same type of thing. Just I'm just saying. The more history changes, the more it repeats yep. itself. So, yeah, the UK won, and they were like, all right, you have to allow us to start selling your people your people opium again. And, like, part of the treaty was they got possession of Hong Kong, which at the time was just, like, a crappy island off the coast of Guangzhou, China. So they were like, who cares if we give them, like, this small island? Not a lot of people lived on it. It was just, like, a fishing village. And then the UK turned it into this gigantic city. Mm -hmm. So their 99-year lease started in 1898, and once that lease ended and they gave it back to China, there was so much financial uh, apparatus there that it really helped China open up into this sort of producing everyone's goods mm -hmm. in the world. So like when Bill Clinton you know, made the Trans-Pacific Partnership back in the day, it was because of Hong Kong becoming going back to China and becoming the sort of outlet for all of their goods into the rest of the world it's like the financial center of yeah. asia or one of the exactly. financial centers of asia yeah so mm -hmm. with all the shipment and stuff mm -hmm. yeah because it's where they could have banks that the government didn't control at all because right. it was still like a completely different financial system yeah. but uh yeah i mean because when i used to travel from china to hong kong like you still have to get your passport stamped and stuff they use a different a, a different currency so it does feel like a completely different country but then there were all the riots because they were like, all right, you guys are starting to change things up and starting to take more control over Hong Kong. But then the riots, I feel like, just sped the process up. And now just over the past like two years, Hong Kong has become like a lot more like China. It was because it was supposed to be not till 2047 that like Hong Kong was finally part of China. But I think over the past years, they've really sped things up a bit yeah that's crazy to think that anywhere in the world could have like an open transparent plan of how you're going to be transitioning anything for 50 years and actually stick to it yeah like yeah. so much shit would get changed because especially if you live in a society that has elections people are just going to get mad because something's not happening that they want to have happen and next thing you know you're voted out and they vote in the guy that's trying to like fuck up the entire plan on purpose yeah you know so tie the tie the NBA to all of this shit. Like how did how did LeBron James get motherfucked around? Mm. Well, all right. Well, I think we need to make a distinction here, at least in my opinion, because the government of China, they suck. They're like they're they do some really bad stuff. The people of China are good people, oh, right? Yeah. Just like anywhere else that you would go in the world. So it's not like we're saying like all Chinese people are are doing anything. One no, way I don't or think the anybody other. thought. That. But the government has mm -hmm. their hands are not clean. 
Um, Big T, do you want to get us started on on LeBron James? I know that well, well, we said we were going to do the China episode. <laughs> it, he was like, "Okay, I, I'll take you know I'll, I'll take, take care LeBron, of the I'll take LeBron. LeBron. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll stick a LeBron. Put me on a floor. <laughs> slap on the court. Yeah, yeah. It all it all <laughs> it all started with uh, the Rockets GM Daryl. Are you fucking like, stealing Big T's Are thunder Big right T? now, dog? Yeah, I, no. You but, know that he wanted to talk about LeBron. Wow. Well, China episode. Wow. LeBron James. Well, he can talk about LeBron, but like we got to talk about the start. Oh, you just want to set the He's giving us a team. Assist. Okay, yeah. you're, you're opening for Big T. You yeah. know, it's good podcast. Yeah, yeah, you're He's right. Pulling it up. Open oh, it for him. You know, yeah, you. Your Moore. flannel does not match your jacket, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Daryl <laughs> Moore. Camo Thank can you. go with any flannel. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll defend him. Camo can go with any flannel. That's not true. Bro, I'm That's not true. about style. That's fashion. not even camo. It's just green. No, it's got some camo. Oh, it's camo on it. Yeah. Bro, it's jungle camo. It has camo on it. It's not camo. Trust me. Billy's wearing camo. Wait, wait, wait. What is the difference? A camo is like. It's entirely camouflage. That has Bro, a lining of camo. That's like I like the fact that people think I hunt, but I don't really hunt. That's Billy, dude. It's old. <laughs> Bro, it's Old Navy. That's what I'm saying. Nobody yeah. buys hunting gear for Old Navy, Bro, my I, G. I literally, I don't think I've bought clothes since high school. <laughs> I don't think you even bought them that. I mean, I know, yeah. My I mean, this is the first. I bought this jacket uh, when I was in Seattle. This is the first jacket I might have bought in a good two years. I, I, just, I don't buy clothes. That's like a that. clothes. I don't buy clothes. Thanks, I'm, so, I'm with you, but that doesn't match. Anyway, Daryl Morey uh, basically said uh, he stood with the Hong Kong protesters. protesters. Well, he, he liked to tweet. Yes, I, I, I thought he tweeted, no, he tweeted, he tweeted something out. Image. He made a he made like a statement attached to his name. Then he had, like, is it still he here? Did. Is it? Can we yeah, pull I'm, it up? I'm looking yeah, at he, he deleted it, but quick. then he had to apologize because basically, the CCP went nuts. They were going to not air any Rockets games on their streaming, their NBA streaming service in China. And they're basically. they're really connected. Um, because I, I I remember going to because uh, I, I went to a lot. Of, I'm, this is the one thing I'm bougie about: uh, travel mm -hmm. and basketball games. Like I got to sit courtside. And so, like, I always sat courtside of the Rockers games, and there, and these, like, f I think, like, four to six seats in the in center court, there was always Chinese people sitting there, mm -hmm. like, there's, and I didn't know what it was, but there's some kind of connection there. I don't know what Yao it Ming. is. It Yao could Ming. be, but they yeah, love yeah, the yeah, I mean, I know Yao was there, <laughs> yeah. but there's some kind of connection there. I think, like, with ownership or something, that so, has to be. Mm -hmm. the, so you could argue that the there's a larger majority of. China that loves the NBA more than the U.S. I agree with that. Yeah. Like when Kobe went over there, I was yeah. Kobe's huge. I don't yeah. think it's gods. the NBA. I think it's specifically Kobe. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. Kobe was their god. I don't even know how. I, this is a stat I've known for a long time. I have no idea how one would verify it, so everyone just be cool. More <laughs> knockoff Kobe jerseys get sold and bought in China than any NBA jersey in America I would, on a yearly I'm, basis. I'm okay with just that. knockoff yeah, Kobe. Okay I mean, just by the sheer number of people that live over there. Right, it makes yeah, sense. It, it tracks, yeah. but they love Kobe like. Yeah, Kobe. I mean, they love Kobe like I love Kobe, I think. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's my no guy. one in China really watches the Chinese basketball league. Like, I would be the only one going to games, <laughs> and I'd be like, "Oh, are you going to the Shanghai Shocks game tonight?" And they're like, "Fuck, we don't watch the CBA, dude. We watch the NBA." <laughs> mm -hmm. What time zero, of day does it zero come pride? On? What time does yeah, is it the like NBA? in the morning? Uh, yeah, I think it. I think they play all the games live, like while they're going on in the U.S. So yeah, most games would be in the morning. Yeah, that's, that's, that's on fire. Bad. They love the NBA over there. And Daryl yeah. Morey, uh, they, I mean, so much money from China is now going into the NBA because of, of all the streaming rights, all that stuff. So Daryl Morey, he, he made a statement saying that he stood with the protesters for democracy in Hong Kong. China, the CCP, flipped out about that. He got leaned on by mysterious forces such as probably Adam Silver. Adam Silver, <laughs> for sure. Uh, to be like, hey, you know, like all the money that all the players make. Probably two thirds of that is coming from China. I actually don't know how much it is. But it's it, a lot. It's a significant revenue stream for the NBA. Definitely. And plus, Nike has all their production overseas. Like, mm -hmm. and and then LeBron. Yeah. So short. Got so long story short, Le people in Hong Kong are protesting to keep democracy, and the the government of China doesn't like it. China has a big stake in the NBA economically, and the players, and and Big T, I think your quarrel is you you speak up for justice in America, but not overseas because money's tied to it, and not even don't speak up about it, speak against it, like speak in favor of the Chinese government. LeBron spoke in favor of the Chinese so government. So he, uh, Talk I'm to looking, me, man. I'm looking Actually, at this his, is interesting. I'm looking I might at be on your right side now. here. Yeah. He called Maury, uh quote misinformed and not educated about the situation. Correct. Um, so 
One thing to add, this was right around the time that LeBron James was out in China to play a game. Like, usually the NBA will play a right. couple games in China. Mm -hmm. Which the Rockets were too, weren't they? Yeah. Wait. I thought were the Rockets were the over there too. Yeah, they, they oh, were yeah. in China. That's that's why when it first happened, I was like, I I kind of forgive LeBron for not speaking out against it while yeah, get he's home physically first. in China. Yeah, get home first. Get home, then say what you need to say. <laughs> But then he just put his foot in his mouth like four times. Well, and that's correct. the other thing the NBA as a whole, who will move an all star game out of Charlotte, North Carolina, because of a transgender bathroom bill, but I'm will they go play games in China where they're rounding up Uyghur Muslims into concentration? I'm camps. not with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I, I'm with, I think I'm with. This is a big deal. Yeah, area. Is, oh, yeah. Handshake yeah. moment. No, this, oh, yeah. this, I think a lot of, like, I think pretty much everyone was like, LeBron, you're a fucking moron mm -hmm. after this. I think that was a pretty understood thing. I, I, I think and i think that politically i think we can get here right i think there are people who are actually morons i don't think lebron's a moron correct i don't think you think lebron's a moron i think you could say he's logically inconsistent and some i think of in this instance might be tied to his pocketbook very stupid it was well i don't but, think it was stupid it was hypocritical but go. for money and like, i think it, he I was think, doing sure, it for a reason i think if we sure. i think if we change the discourse to like you're fucking stupid to like i could see why you did that for money but you see why it's inconsistent correct. then we could have like a real dialogue and sure yeah it's not, it's not I, I don't think those clicks. are mutually exclusive, though. I think it was a very dumb thing to say. So you think he's actually a moron? Well, no. But dumb in what regard? Because the NBA would argue it was a very smart thing for their sure. front for yes, his star no. to In say terms no. of making the NBA and himself more money, mm -hmm. it was... Which you should be in favor for. I'm in favor of everyone making as much money as they can. He could have not said anything, though. Yeah, he didn't you, have agreed. to. I don't, I don't agree, actually. If, they, really? if the NBA wanted to salvage... Because like the, the the salary cap did take a hit even after LeBron. But said, the NBA could not, have said something. Yeah, but LeBron is the NBA for all intents and purposes. Like sure. what Adam Silver is saying something doesn't mean as much as LeBron James Agreed. saying something. It just doesn't. Doesn't resonate the same. Uh, as it shouldn't. Though. That's where like the NBA would argue like no, this is actually very smart from a financial standpoint. From a hypocritical standpoint, very dumb. It looks bad for sure. What I didn't like in real time when it was happening was people trying to equate it to undermine everything he had said about things that had happened in this country because that did feel mutually exclusive. Like, they don't have anything to do with one another in my mind. When he's speaking out for things that were affecting his people and his communities in this country, doesn't feel the same as when he's talking about something in another country that most people didn't even care about or know was happening. But then you with. can see where someone would say, if you are speaking out against something that you feel is... Um, perpetuated by the government and is affecting people, then why would you speak out in favor of a government that is actively like killing people? Well, I don't. I he was I, silenced more than he didn't care. No, and I, th I what think do you mean? I agree with you to an extent, right? I agree with you, t Big T. This is a big moment for me and you. I think we should just take a pause and just. Yeah, I agree. Let's everybody, land the plane first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're clapping and we're still in the air. <laughs> everybody, breathe. this this is a good moment. I can feel the love. I right do now. agree with you. Um, I think that. When you talk about, because that was that was like a, a MLK stance, right? And it bothers the fuck out of me when Republicans bring up MLK because all they do they have not they probably haven't even read the entire I Have a Dream speech. What about Aaron Rodgers? That was so funny. I, I, that, that was, was the dumbest good. shit I've that ever was so heard. So funny. Aaron Rodgers is my dude, but to quote MLK <laughs> and some shit like that is ridiculous. But um, uh, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I agree with that, right? And so what you're saying is being logically consistent. Yeah. I, I a thousand percent agree with that. Um, I think in LeBron's case, he has so much represent. He's representative of so much. It's hard for him to be accurate. It, it's hard because like I, I'm the first one to say, I don't know a whole bunch about China politics and, and what's going on in Hong Kong. But just from the surface level, people are want democracy. They kind of want a little bit more uh, reins from their government. <clears throat> I'm for that. And if you're going to actively call somebody else uneducated when you're clearly not educated about a subject, I'm not, that's not I, right? And that's where me and you, you know what I'm saying, we, Correct. we are aligned. He, I, I, he was educated on the one specific thing where he was like, Daryl Morey, shut the fuck up. You're ruining all of our money. That's yeah. where he was very educated. But and, it, and, that, and that, that's, why, that's the part I don't like, though, right? Because it's, it's, it's the, the, the shit that bothers me about the NBA and the NFL and their pro Black Lives Matter stance is that it's it's just there, there's no substance. Like if you really want to have, uh, they painted the back of the end zone. 
Yeah, have you not seen their, their it helmets? Said, it says end racism. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath where, the upright. Where have you been? Yeah. Actually, they t- they took that out because it's salute to service month. So now it says. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that thank thank you vets. But but the the issue, the issue I have is like they'll do shit like that, right? It's performative. Where if you really want to help black communities, like go really put money into those communities. Go start STEM programs and like. Do it on a very consistent basis. They just right. kind of they give turkeys in the hood and be like, we're helping, we're giving back. Right. Um, that's what's bothersome about uh, the performative politics um, of the NBA in the in the NFL. And 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 if you're going to to be like for social justice and for the freedom and 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 caring about human beings, then do that across the board, not just when it's protecting your dollar. Because when when we first knelt for the flag. It was like six of us. The NFL, the president was calling us sons of bitches. The NFL was on our heads. The owners was on our heads. And we was like, fuck y'all. And then now that it's cool and we understand that the public majority agrees with it, now they got all this belief in it. Now they're back. They was back in us now. But like, it's too late then. It's now like, they're sponsoring like kneeling time. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> kneeling time brought to you by Northrop Grumman. <laughs> right. it, it, old it, Navy khakis. They don't, they don't crease. I was, <laughs> I was actually disappointed even like, you know, I'm, I'm skeptical about a lot of stuff, but I was even disappointed how quickly the discussion turned from actually having a conversation about what needed to be talked about with race into just getting mad about the stuff that was related to that conversation. You know, like where it's just like, oh, this guy put this on the back of his jersey. Oh, Myers Leonard isn't standing during this part. Of the, now yeah. we're mad at each other. And yeah. Like it, it just, oh, it's probably a bad example. With you know, Myers Leonard, you know, when I heard, yeah, things went, <laughs> things went what did he put on the back? You know? No, no, it's just like he was one of the ones that, that didn't take a knee and then it became a discussion. Oh, this yeah. person need, this person t- yeah. didn't yeah. take a knee. It's like, like, it's it's like, like, on the, bi- the big thing isn't Silly. whether or not you're on your knee. There's a giant discussion that that's just supposed to be drawing attention to well and now all the attention is on this person took a knee this person didn't I, Yo, you know now, when now i was having steve a smith debate <laughs> and ray lewis being like i took two knees <laughs> that was the wackest jerry, jo- and ray, jerry jones ray lewis is my dude that was the wackest shit i've ever seen in my life was like, i'm gonna take two knees for yeah. jesus yeah. Like, yeah. Man, yeah. Cut the game, man. But, the, when i was officially out of the like sports and like uh performative art shit mm-hmm. was when i heard chris weber Oh and, and he he went on like this monologue, and I couldn't. T- Please tell me you've seen this, Cole. I probably have. Keep going. He went on like some monologue of like how it was. Somebody has to pull this clip up, but I can't even. I can't even replicate what it was because he was trying to say something very impactful, but it was just a fucking. And he just wouldn't. He wasn't like saying anything. He didn't land his plane. He just kept saying like <laughs> phrases that he had yeah, heard. Uh, yeah, Chris left. Weber often talks like someone has like a gun to his family and like they'll they'll pull the trigger. It's like Speed the movie, but it's Chris <laughs> Weber talking instead of a bus. Uh, keep going. Here's another thing we can uh, agree on, Big T. When when the uh, Democratic Caucus put on the kente cloth and crazy. they all took a knee for a photo op trash that was crazy ridiculous i don't remember that it oh just, yes you do pelosi it was when nancy she has pelosi. Nancy fucking... pelosi took a knee Everybody, okay she's a traditional african guy yeah i vaguely she's like do taking the knee. horrible dog it's crazy. just horrible it, it looks photoshopped yeah how, how it's outrageous it's it like is. it's like her schumer a couple other people it was it just, just it was gross the conversation very quickly shifted to all the stuff that was just not important the, related to that conversation during because that all happened in the bubble during that stretch I've never heard the anthem more in my life than during the time when they were protesting the anthem. Mm-hmm. Like they, they were airing it on TV like more. Like and to the NBA, like I agree with you. The NBA has done a terrible job with all of this. There have been certain individuals who have done good, but as a whole, as a league, been terrible. The WNBA was with the shits. They yeah. were like, "We're off the court. We might not even fucking play." And I fuck like, with "You're them. not airing that shit." Like they were making real stances. And where I do side with Big T with the LeBron shit, Bill Russell wouldn't have carried water for the NBA like that mm-hmm. over a check. Like there are players Kareem. in the history. Of Kareem, Kareem wouldn't have done that. Yeah, they and Kareem's been very critical of LeBron, and he'll be very critical of anyone as long as he's alive to still pen. I letters. saw him. Okay, so I thought it was only two people. That I would get like starstruck if I saw. I thought it was gonna be Jim Carrey and Hove. If I ever see them in real <laughs> life, like them, them two are the only. I've never seen them in real life, but if I do, I might be like, "Yo, that's that's Jim Carrey." Yo. Mm-hmm. I saw Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in real life. I was like, "Okay, yeah, that's that's Kareem." Like, yeah, he is. He uh, kind of stopped me in my tracks. He's an imposing figure. Yeah, and he's tall as shit too. Super really tall. tall. Yeah. We, we interviewed him one time, and he was. He put his feet out underneath the desk. The whole length of the table. And it was like an entire long, like, 
family dinner pause, table pause, size pause. thing. No, I'm just saying. It was his <laughs> legs. His legs went like all the way to the end of it. Not yeah. much. Yeah, very, very intimidating guy. You wouldn't do that for Bill Russell? Uh, you, you, there's no telling. I didn't think I was gonna do it for Kareem, but I, yeah, I saw him at a exactly. Dodger game exactly. this summer. Actually, I saw him at a Dodger game, and I was like, I didn't even say that. I couldn't. Yeah, I usually leave celebrities alone when I see him. Uh, and I was like, that's yeah, that did it for me. Yeah. So when are you gonna bring your podcast co-host courtside to a game? Uh, shit. good question. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Be a, that'll be a good 15, 20 racks, my G. <laughs> What's the cheapest? Well, not, checks ain't like that. Not if What's it's the like, cheapest courtside seat that you can get? Uh, Oklahoma City. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you go to like, we, have, we have a hookup there. If you go to like, I mean, the yeah. Rockets now, right? So I used to pay a good like fifteen hundred to two two grand for a seat. That's not yeah. bad. Uh, it's, it's not bad for a yeah. Rockets game, but like when they was like really bussing, it got a little higher. Uh, L.A. I could, you go, you go, good luck if yes. you find one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, well, so they kind of anyway, suck right now. They're probably getting, nah. They still going bad. They could be trash. No, LA tickets always going bust. I just wanted to. I think it just depends on it. Just depends on the team. So I say anywhere from fifteen hundred to five grand. I'm gonna look All up right. Oklahoma City if they play the Pistons this year. <laughs> I feel like that would. That's be, your idea of the two the worst teams. We, we in the league. fly out. Yeah, we fly out. Pistons are the bad. worst. I just NBA think it's game. very funny. Yeah, That's we have a hookup now with them. With who? The Oklahoma City Thunder. Aubrey McClendon. No, no, Alex no. Alex Bennett. Alex Bennett, her co-worker. Her father-in-law is the oh, owner. Oh shit! Her father-in-law oh, is shit. Mr. Bennett. I think we could play for yeah. the Thunder if we yeah. want. <laughs> yeah, I would like to play. Hey, I, <laughs> I, I, they're they're having me. <laughs> I, I would pass me the I ball. I got a mean eighteen footer, man. Dog, putting in a good word. I'm telling you, I, I'm dead serious about that. About shooting my, long, no, my eighteen footer, long twos mean. in the modern NBA. I'm You're not playing. You, I, I give seeing my. Court. I give twenty four hour fitness nightmares. <laughs> Cannot stick me in it. You really team. do think you're Kobe shooting long I'm telling twos. you, though, that's my shot. It's disgusting. I, I have modeled my game after Kobe. And he modeled it after Jordan. I will pay homage. But that's my game. My game is Kobe. The 18-footed little turnaround. So mm-hmm. it's like a reverse Pokemon evolution. Like Jordan's Charizard and your Charmander. I'll take that. Kobe's just As long move. as I'm in the lineage, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I think none of them could tackle me. So. Okay, I'm looking <laughs> up. Uh, Jordan could tackle you. For fuck, sure. Jordan was huge. I had a fucking chance. Of course he could. Basketball players are so goofy on the football field. Have you ever seen a move? It's different. No, I, I, get, I get that. It's I'm different. speaking more to his. Both of them would be I able to tackle I will shake the dog shit out of any one of them. They're too far too. Jordan's far too competitive. He would hunt you down. I will put you in. You're insane. I uh, not a chance. That's what I did. He, he woke I understand up, that, He woke up Aaron. every single day and figured out a way to put the ball through a hoop. Very well. To be fair, no, That's he didn't. Cool. He woke up every day and he was like, when can I play golf? Like, he very much right, treated right, basketball right. like a day job. The <laughs> other half <laughs> of his day was spent to learning how to put a ball in hoop. The I other, woke up every day figuring out how to not get on the ground. Michael Jordan woke up every day. He said, how much can I drink and still play these 36 <laughs> holes of golf? Michael Jordan cannot tackle me, dog. It's disrespectful. For sure. He's, You're disrespecting me right now. Is this worse than PFT saying you can't catch? I don't know where, and I still need a 30. Now that we're in person, what's, what's <laughs> the matter of fact? We're going to do the live show. Shit up. Live okay. show. Live, okay. Live show. Live Make 30 seconds. It's me and PFT. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I've, I've found some tickets here. Lower sideline. Row A looks to be about midcourt. Detroit Pistons at Oklahoma City Thunder on April Fool's Day. Ooh. Ooh. I like this. Actually. 405 each. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, hey. A little road trip. I'm so down. I'll take okay, a train. So does a train run through I'm Oklahoma sure, I'm sure there's a train that goes there. Yeah, I think you can go to Chicago and then cut it. I'm not even drinking. I'm so down for this right now. <laughs> Let's do it. This would be down. very funny. Are y'all down? I'm oh, down. yeah. I'm, I'm down. down. Fuck $400? $400 per ticket. That's now, is, court is, row, is row A just the front row of the seats and not courtside, though? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. You got to I mean, ask, know someone ask, in the ask know. your hookup here. Yeah. Set it up. Oh, no. It'll be an event. My mistake, 450 for floor seats. The other ones were row A. That was before the floor seats. Okay, yeah. So yeah, good question. Forty five dollars more. Yeah, I'm yeah. okay with that. I'll spring for it. Um, Billy, do you have any any fun facts or what's on the stat sheet today about China? So I, you know, I knew Donnie would bring a lot of background knowledge on China. I just had a couple current events that just shows how China's just doing a lot of CCP type stuff. <laughs> okay. So their government's being all governmenty. Governmental. I mean, <laughs> recently. <laughs> yeah. Re- recently. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, uh, so if you guys remember this, back in 2019, um, there was a Chinese businesswoman who was found at Mar-a-Lago trying to like sneak in and meet Donald Trump. She was recently just deported back to China, and like in her hotel room, they found a signal detector, uh, p- tons of hidden cameras, nine USB drives, SIM cards, and cell phone, eight K in cash, several credit cards and debit cards. Um, 
a recently a tennis player just disappeared. I which, read about that after accusing her coaches of uh, assault. I'm not sure sexual, the exact yeah. sexual. Um, and basically, Xi Jinping's been going after uh, celebrity culture in the country. Basically, he's banned. So if you guys are familiar with like K-pop, like Xi Jinping has banned like any sort of K-pop effeminate looking men from the their t their television. And he, you know, he even like Jack Ma disappeared. Who's the head of Alibaba for Who's a while. Who's in charge of determining like how feminine is too feminine of a man to be on television? Oh, this is Xi a good Jinping. conversation to have. Yeah, they also yeah, it's him, a one man it's commi- a one man committee for sure. It's there's a there's, yeah. there's definitely a board of masculinity. Uh, I feel some, like you'd be good at that job, Billy. I think that would be hilarious. Yeah, I'd be like that's man's man. No, he would but just then, he would just just acquiesce to all the incels. He would just say whatever <laughs> they say so they don't come after him. <laughs> there was another there was an incel attack recently. <laughs> talk to me, talk to me, man. Billy's got a Google alert uh, set about yeah. about so like can, where are the incels? Away, yeah. <laughs> Five years ago, China banned. The mention of time travel. So if you okay. if you were writing a TV show or a movie, you couldn't talk about time travel. That sounds more like they're frustrated that they don't have time travel, so they just don't want to hear it. It's anymore. either that or they fucking have it. Because mm. they're Try worried, it like wraps. a show about time travel, it might like rehash some things that happened in their past that they like, don't even want people to know about. Oh, that's what conservatives know. are doing right now, right? Big t- Yo, that's <laughs> what <laughs> the culture. <laughs> No, but that what you say? I just fuck, that's fucked up that, that you can't talk about time travel. On, I know. It's like on one of the most TV. fascinating subjects. I'm kind of with them. Like either it's kind of like flying cars. Either do it or, or stop talking about it. I mean, yeah, just do do it. Bend the the, the just physics figure it laws. Out. Just figure it out. Or just stop talking about it. Yeah. Nah. Let us imagine. Well, hang on. Let you kind of kids... believe in time travel, though. Huh? You kind of believe in time travel. Though. No. No. But not not as we think of it, but yeah, I, I think. In order for not to get too sciencey again, but in order to travel through time, you have to have as much, you have to have an infinite amount of energy, right, to go the speed of light. And there's no way to get an infinite amount of energy right now. We have a finite way mm-hmm. to get energy, so there's no way you can actually go light speed right now. How do you have to have an infinite amount of energy to go to speed of light? How do you know that? Uh, I, there's a whole bunch of math behind it. Like, and I will not pretend to know that I do, but uh-huh. from all of my studying and research of it. Uh, in in order to like to increase speed takes energy, right? And the fastest known thing in our universe is light. Light is the fast. Light, light is the speed limit in our universe. There's there's nothing that can go faster than that, um, technically. Um, and so in order to reach that, right? Because when you reach light speed, time stops. A photon does not experience time, which is wild, right? So when a light when when the light is born, it dies, and it experiences mm-hmm. no time in between. It's it's wild concept to think about, but 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 and, and, and that's the yeah. that's the now I, I understand why they banned talking about. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in. This I'm is one of their better right. ideas. Yeah, <laughs> credit where credit's due. Yeah. I think go check. That's We've done a lot of shit on them, them, but yeah. fair is fair. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> pr- they probably just don't want people yeah. to like think, oh, what happened 50 years ago? Cultural revolution. Yeah, yeah. That type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But then do you ban clocks? Like, what do you mean? Like, how, how stupid does it I get? I think they... It sounds like they're banning nerds. They, they just get their... nerds out of here. They're like, no yeah, effeminate think, men and no nerds. No, because I think they banned uh, tattoos on TV, too. So. Jesus. And oh, man. So. kids are only allowed to play video games three hours a day. Oh, my God. That's I awful. mean, that's, that's probably... Pretty, yeah. That's that's far I more than I thought that. it would be, to yeah. be honest with you. I don't know if that's a China-specific problem, but I, when I feel like I read about kids overdosing from playing video games, I feel like it's from that corner It happens in China. Yeah, there was a guy in China. He sat down for, like... Like two full days playing video games and when he finally got up from the couch he he died on the spot yeah that so killed like, you that, that kills you to just play yeah, video games I, think, two days? I think he had like a blood clot or something like that yeah. oh, he I was just he, he was just he like, like in the same position for like two days playing video games got him stood around. up and died got i thought he around. legitimately overdosed from like dopamine because of how much he was getting you from can't overdose game. from dopamine no what, you what can't video game was he overdosed because he was having so much fun playing yeah. video games that's basically how people die from cocaine he's just having way too much fun on dopamine i'm pretty sure you get like go psychotic like people who do meth yeah i don't think you could overdose on dopamine it's a, it's a chemical. I, I think you can yeah. deplete yeah, no, your I, brain's dopamine sources, and so then you just go into like a really bad depression. Your brain's not working. Okay, right. yeah, that makes sense. yeah. It balances. Yeah. That makes sense. Billy, did you hear about that? China has like mocked up a U.S. aircraft carriers oh, yeah, that they're, they're using, using for, for bombing. Yeah. 
bombing yeah. exercises. God, I, I hope I die before this next world war pops off. So there was um, going back to the LeBron thing real quick in the NBA interaction with China. One of the craziest things that happened. I remember this was right after like you know the whole controversy where LeBron would issue a statement and then issue another statement apologizing for his. Pre- it was a very Urban Meyer like situation that was going on <laughs> yeah. with LeBron James for a little bit. Then they showed like a graphic of China on ESPN. And they put a seven dash line on the southeastern part of China, which makes no sense because they're just they just showed a, a outline of the country. Right. Because it's like, oh, this is above our sportscasters shoulder when we're talking about China. That makes sense. Like you see on the news all the time. But they added that extra line in at the bottom. And I didn't know what it was. And I looked up. Apparently, it's like the most controversial thing ever that you can put on a map because the seven dash line implies that China has all the rights to Taiwan and the entire South China Sea. And that's all their territory right there, which is not internationally recognized. And it literally shows that ESPN and Disney just awarded China (laughs) fishing rights (laughs) exclusively to the South China Sea and ownership of Taiwan, while Taiwan still thinks and maintains that they have ownership of mainland China. It's just very funny to see like all the small little political give and take that goes into it because you don't think about it that much i think as americans we don't really think about china we don't think about well, anybody but yeah. ourselves. Don, donnie you t- uh, talked about this in your uh, dragon skin documentary how that a lot of this posturing by china is in order to like this na- hyper nationalism is in order to be conducive to keeping control because it's the only thing keeping the country together like this idea that hong kong is china remember you had players on your team who they basically had to have a talking about like you couldn't start talking shit to the hong kong players yeah about china right before we played yeah were saying like guys like like the the coach of our team he gave a speech he's like all right we're playing the hong kong team tomorrow i want like no political talk and then, like, one of the Chinese players Check just, like, sports. screams right away. He's like, Hong Kong's China. And, like, everyone just starts cheering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's literally like, like Aaron, you might let's not know go this, Brandon. But, uh, but, but Donnie, <laughs> Donnie won a Super Bowl in China. Yeah, and I scored the, o- ever, the only touchdown of my career in Hong Kong. Did you ever win a Super Bowl? Aaron? I didn't. He's actually a better football player. He's the only Super Bowl winner <laughs> in this room right now. That's- so he's a good Congrats. football player, but Michael f- Jordan isn't. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you if why do you think this nigga can tap? I don't understand. <laughs> you do. I do think there were no worse athletes than Michael Jordan that had tackled you in your life. There are two entirely different skill sets, my G. If you if like to to be like you don't have explosion like like this in the way that we do. Like you just don't. Have I it. certainly don't. No, 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 no I'm not talking Michael about Jordan you. probably I'm does. T- I'm, there, he could have probably have trained for it. Yes, Definitely. but then a six-six defender would not be hard to shake. Like I played six-six defenders. None of them were Michael Jordan. I, exactly. I think that's what we're both. Michael thinking. Jordan was six-six. What one ninety? Tackling is a completely heavy. different skill. Though. How? Give me his. Give me his. Got, give got, me his stat. I think he's like two hundred five. Yes. It, it, even two hundred five is it's very. Steep. I'm probably two six. I'm playing. Now. I'm playing two thirty. So he, for it's, sure, you're not tackling me in an open field. He, he was about two. He was about one ninety five, two hundred. Yeah, you, you're not playing D line. I'm not at saying he's gonna stonewall you three yards by the line of scrimmage. What are you saying? I'm saying he's gonna dive at your legs. Good luck. Okay, I, it's not me. It's Michael also, Jordan. Well, tell him good luck. I've got faith in Michael he Jordan. Def- the athlete. Definitely can't. My do it apologies. Now. Definitely can't do it now. Yes, no. your apologies. Fuck that. <laughs> right now, he might be able. I'm to hot. Do it. He's put on a lot. Yeah, of you are. You're furious, though. I think. Yeah, he's like Fuck a Michael Jordan. Like, I think. Size. Listen, football. I think you have a really I'm on good your game. Side. You have I'm a, I'm you have a really side. good game. You have over a hundred yards, but he gets he tackles you once. That's no. what I'm saying. Uh, no. Who is the worst okay. tackler you ever played against? Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Is there so anybody? You, uh, me, actually, I'm curious. In the, who would have a better shot tackling you, Jordan or Kobe? Kobe. Why? Because I like him better. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Who was the worst awesome. guy? Who was the guy that you saw before a game and you're like, oh, this guy, no chance? Um, or who did tackle you and you were disgusted at yourself when you got up? There was never like any. I, like I, I like I'll be honest, at that level, it's you don't. It was it's the art of war. Never underestimate your enemy, and so that's kind of how I approach it. I never really looked at like, oh, he's trash. I would think he's trash in my head, but I would never treat him like he's trash. You know what I mean? Um, there was one dude who I could ne- like. I bothered me that I couldn't get off on him like I wanted to. He was the gr- he was the best DB tackler that I ever. That was pause too. He's the best DB tackler I've ever won against. Um, Vontae Davis. Okay. Yeah. 
Vontae Davis just knew my moves, like, and it was annoying. It, I played him all the time. He played for Miami and he played for the Colts, so we I played, oh, we played him twice. He's a year. the guy that quit at halftime. Yeah, he no, gone. he's the guy that retired Sorry. when his body told him it was time to retire. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happened it was at halftime. Of, I think he opening hit, week, right? I, I, week I retired one? mid mid season two. I mean, it was yeah. in the middle of the but game. It was right? Week one, was it? Was week one, wasn't it? I, I have no. No, no I don't think it was week. It was like it was like week because it was after me. So. So I was, uh, it was, I think we I set off a chain of events. So I retired like game five or six. Uh, Andre Johnson retired like two two weeks after that, and I think then Vontae. I thought his was I, it was I, September sixteenth, twenty eighteen. So that yeah. may have been like week two. Yeah, oh, so it was, it was I remember people then. being like, "Why the fuck did you do training camp if you knew yeah. you were just gonna?" Did he have an incentive in his contract that he had to reach, and then he got a certain amount? I can't tell you, but all I can tell yeah. you is like. When my body was like, I, uh, I'm yeah. nah, nah, I'm not with it anymore. Like I just, I just knew, and I, and I, I, I didn't give a fuck about the money at that point. So I was like, I don't want to waste your time. That's what I told uh, Adam Gates was my coach. I said, like, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. He was wasting your time. No, okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Adam Gates, when I left Miami, I don't know what happened. But when I was there, he was a really good coach, dog. Really, one of my favorite coaches I've ever played for. That's interesting. Players, coach. Everybody loved him. Really knew his shit. Like if you, they Miami went to the uh, playoffs the, that first year I was there. They lost to the Steelers that that year. I mean, when I left, I, I got calls from my guys like, "Yo, he's he's tripping now." Like, I, don't like huh. I think coaches just get power hungry, and I, I don't know because I still got a good rapport with him. I don't got no no problem with him. He treated me really good when I was there. I, you right, Billy? <laughs> Oh, they're tripping, though. <laughs> he can't, no, he can't to... believe you're defending Adam Gates. <laughs> He's beside himself. <laughs> no, I just fell off. Did you play with Jay Cutler? Uh, I didn't, but he would always talk about Jay Cutler. Yeah, that was his because that he was had that one. Yeah, that's why you knew who he Adam Gates was. He had that meal ticket. Like Jay Cutler had that great year with him, and so Adam Gates was just like reminding people. He was like, "Hey, look what I did with Jay." He was uh, he loved Jay Cutler. He was always telling me about how impressive he was and stuff. Like yeah. That. yeah so I mean, I was like, I bet, man. Mm-hmm. Then, he, <laughs> then he brought him in. Then he finally he did bring him, him into Miami. Miami. I think. What is it like playing in Miami? I feel like it would just be like we overuse the word distraction a lot. I feel like in sports, like oh, that player is a distraction. When in reality, if you have you know a locker room of professional athletes, they can probably figure out how to get the shit done on their own. Right. But I feel like playing in Miami is absolutely a massive distraction. Well, I so the facilities are actually in Fort Lauderdale, so it's like all oh, that. 30, 40 minute drive. And so I stayed in for a lot of the, like I, at that time I was 30. I didn't really give a shit about the night, the nightlife like that, but mm-hmm. I could see you get drafted in the first round and you yeah. got money you, and you, you knew in South beach. You're like weekend. 22 years old. You got $30 million in I your could pocket. See, I could see how that could be a, a little bit of a distraction. I would, I would die. I, I never, I don't, I don't like clubs anymore. Yeah. So I, by that time I couldn't give a, I couldn't give a fuck about that shit. Yeah. Is, and is Houston to Miami a, Downgrading clubs? Uh, it depends on what kind of clubs. Houston's a little more, more, a little more known for the um, strip. Yeah. <laughs> What's but, up uh, with New York? They be working. No strip clubs in New York. No, but like the New York teams. Why, like, do you think it's nightlife being close to the city? Like, like a lot of implosion. Uh, I think it's uh, the. Staff, man. I think Billy's just like, why do yeah. the Jets suck? Yeah, I mean, I, yes. I, I'd like to handle this one. It has nothing to do with the I think, city. I think it's the staff. It's the <laughs> talent value. You know, I think, I think in general, dog, my, my beef with NFL, the coaching carousel that is, it's like they just think, oh, the coach lost it or whatever. Like, no, like sometimes it's just shitty players. Sometimes it's the coaches, they don't have good chemistry or whatever the case may be. But, like, like when, when, we, when we was playing the Jets and Rex Ryan was the coach, he was one of the best defensive coaches I played mm. against. He's fucking good at that shit. But then you know the whole feet thing happened, and then I don't know. I don't know why people care about shit like that. I think it's just Mark Sanchez became Mark Sanchez. I mean, I don't want to shit on Buddy, but it's just like if if you don't have ballers, like you're not gonna win. It's just really not even more simple than that. Although Rex Ryan came on uh, part of my take a couple weeks ago, and he pointed out that he had the highest score ever in the history of the state of Maryland. For problem solving and logic, I don't know if that's an actual test that they give there, but Rex Ryan said it, and I choose to believe it. That's cap. It's, I don't know what like. Is there no a test thing. that like is administered to adults in Maryland <laughs> <laughs> to measure your your problem? Voluntary solving? testing for adults. <laughs> because if so, he claims that's that he CBS. got the highest yeah. score. Right by the COVID stand, come <laughs> test your logic in the history of the yeah, state you got of two Maryland. hours. Here's your pencil. Uh, there, there should be testing for adults. 
just for no other reason but to just clearly label who is a nerd that I don't want to ever hang out with by the people who choose to go and get tested voluntarily. And then uh, this is a sweet spot, right? Because if it's too low, like, I'm cool off of that as well. That's true, yeah. yeah. If you go out there and you're like, wow, it turns out I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like, wor- wor- workplaces should just send their employees there just to get a baseline. Day That'd be one. Th- That's tough. Slippery yeah. slope there. That is a very slippery slope. I'm just, it, yeah, you just stop testing after you get out of college. Probably yeah, for good reason. The Jets are just bad talent evaluators. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's not the city's fault. I agree, man. I, and I think I think this is the biggest thing with pro sports is a whole bunch of motherfuckers that have never played and don't really know shit about the sport are picking who's going to be on the team. And they're just bad at looking at that shit. I, there's a problem I've always had, too, like especially with teams that are perpetually really bad. They'll hire a coach, and there's usually like a very loose plan, if any plan at all. And then, like, two years, especially in football, two years in, they're like, ah, you, you suck with this team that you inherited that sucked. You haven't won a Super Bowl yet. You're fired. Yep. We're going to do all this. Like, you got to give a guy five, six years. And I understand, like, they talk about, like, oh, the fan base gets gets weary and, and they'll, like, what are they going to do? The fans aren't, like, Detroit Lions fans aren't going anywhere. Yep. Cleveland Brown fans did not go. Like, these teams suck forever. They don't go anywhere. You might as well at least try a real fucking five-year plan. And I if agree. that doesn't work, yeah, maybe you switch some things up. Yeah. But teams are so quick to pull – like, everyone's so worried about getting fired that they end up getting fired. But I think that's also uh, ownership. <clears throat> this, Definitely. When I found this out, I, was, I felt like such a horse. Because right. you realize that... <laughs> you realize that... I'm going to let you know why I felt like a horse. You realize that, like, yo, like, these owners... We were just their fucking hobby, dog. Like, they made billions elsewhere. And, like, this is just how they get together in the little yachts and shit. And they're like, yo, we whooped y'all ass. You're their fantasy team. Yes, dog. <laughs> they, they playing real life fantasy football. Mm-hmm. And it's just fun to them. And so they don't really like like our our owner. The owner that for the organization that I play for, uh, he didn't know what the fuck. Like, he don't know what's going on. No. Like, he like he kind of, like, he had a, I remember he used to come to practice, like, with a script in his hand and shit. I'm like, there's no fucking way you know what you're <laughs> looking at, dog. Like, you got shit to, you got money to wash, man. Yeah. So, like, it, the owners don't really know what they're doing, so they get pressure from the fan base. They get pressure from all these people. There's a bunch of people in their ear. Like, right. Hey, man, you should move to And then they just make bad decisions, and it's perpetual bad decisions. And you got cats like Jerry Jones who thinks he's the greatest thing that football has ever produced. He's gonna continue. At least he gives his head coaches time, though. I like that. Yeah, he, he definitely does. gives his head coaches time. Though. So he let does. me let me pull back on my. Well, also now. because he's he's the general manager of the team, so right. he gets <laughs> to talk to the coaches. He literally Facts. makes draft picks for the team and as when, the owner, which is what I would do if you're gonna be a, a, an percent. owner of an NFL team. Yeah, that's not gonna be my hobby. That's like my. This is what I do now. I'm an owner of a football team. I'm gonna be as invested in it as I possibly can because it's fun. Like this is this is what my idea of a good time is, is to, like, be involved in a football team. But Jerry Jones actually, like, he told Mike McCarthy before the game against the Broncos, he gave him what his game plan should be. <laughs> Sat down and had a meeting. Can you imagine that? Like, you're a football coach. You've coached in the league for, like, probably, what, 15 years as a head coach? And uh, and the owner of the team is coming down and be like, all right, we need a blitz on second down. <laughs> <laughs> all right? I just, I've spotted some issues with a right guard's hands. You need to you need to tell the defense tackle get low, get low on him, and that's what Jerry Jones does. Which I kind of I kind of do respect. I respect that. the hell out yeah. of it. That's I think, why I think Cubans figured it out the best. Like he just wants to take jump shots with the team before the game, and then he wants to be the loudest fan. I thought you meant building. like the people Cubans. I'm like what? <laughs> no, they they've got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark Cuban, he's got it. Yeah, just be the. Be the guy that you can like a fan. Yeah. You can afford to pay the fines for criticizing the official. Correct. That nobody else can, so you might as well just do it the loudest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. Um so China. D- <laughs> Donnie, is it true that you have better white privilege in China than America? Yeah. Well, it was that case until like maybe the past three years when there there was kind of like a shift. Maybe it was once Trump was elected, but when I first moved to China I felt like the most free I've ever felt because they kind of just like like they were like, we're going to let foreigners do their own thing. Like we're not really going to get involved with their lives. They're in China. They do their own thing as long as they're not like getting Chinese people wrapped up in their shenanigans. We don't really give a fuck. So, (laughs) I mean, I was in the U.S. where you get arrested for just walking down the street with a beer. And then I moved to China. You can drink in public. There's no, like, open container law. I mean, I was even smoking a lot of weed when I first moved to China. So I thought it was crazy illegal over there. 
I mean, technically, but they just didn't even know what weed was. And so, like, <laughs> all right, I, that's fair. You could just, just like leave. smoke a joint and like a cab ride home from the club, and uh, the, maybe the cab driver would be like, "What's that smell?" And you'd be like, "Ah, this is an American cigarette." And they'd be like, "All right, cool." <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you smoke a shitload of cigarettes over there, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Tons and, of cigarettes. You popularized the. Uh, they call. Are you? Do you call them hoons? Or I call them hoons. A lot of people think hoon is the Chinese word for cigarette. It's, yeah, it's not. Okay, so you just invented that. Yeah, actually, a friend from like Massachusetts was calling them hoons, mm-hmm. and so whenever like I came back from China, they were so cheap there. I would just bring back like ten cartons. Yeah, and so I'd be like, I got the hoons. And you palooza. Po- you popularized <laughs> the, the term. Yeah. It'd be a hot box of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, the hoon squat, right? Yeah, you didn't popularize the the action or the activity. Well, there, yeah, there's That's just, just a natural thing. Why do you think that is that people, when they smoke cigarettes, especially in China, they crouch down to a catcher stance? So it's not just smoking cigarettes. Like people in China squat a lot, and they're incredibly good at it. Like, uh, can, I need context behind that. Too. I mean, so the Asian squat. squat is when your heels are flat on the ground. You know how like most people in the U.S. when they squat, it's more yeah, sure. like right, so uh, on the balls of the you feet. See, like, yeah, that's ball. catcher. Cat, yeah. They do the full on, I can't even do it. I use this. Ass to grass. <laughs> yeah. Like they go down. Grass, and they're very comfortable. They can do this and eat like a full meal and shit. Um, so that's the Asian squat. So that's actually the premise uh, behind the squatty potty. Uh, yeah. So in China, like most of the toilets are kind of just like a hole in the ground. They don't, they don't like have the seat. So maybe it just comes from like as a kid, they're always squatting to poo that they just... So, they, uh, so I mentioned the Squatty Potty. This is not an advertisement. This is just a real live endorsement. Squatty Potty is designed so it's like you put it underneath the toilet, and mm-hmm. it makes you like your knees are like in your chest. And it's because our we evolved. We definitely evolved, Big T. But we evolved in a way that we that's how that's how we evolved to to poop. Yeah. And, and our toilets are designed, and it kind of cuts off one of the one of the two, so it makes it harder to push out. So yeah. when you squat like that. Your fecal matter flows a little better, so that's yeah. So I've always wondered why China, we like I guess people in China are actually pooping correctly. You're supposed, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have better I, bowel movements. I've like wondered that. why why we don't poop facing the toilet. <laughs> straddle AC, it, AC Slater style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> straddle like, the toilet, no, like the cool, like the the cool like a cool youth pastor. No, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially now with how much we're on our phones, like you and get stuff, on the motorcycle. More pro, sense. Yeah, you fucking, put your use the tank as a table. Yeah, you put your drink up there. Definitely, your drink, drink, drink. drink nachos. <laughs> I'm, I'm not riding this way. Cereal, yeah. <laughs> you on your own on this. You know one, how bro. dogs always stare at you when you're taking a shit? No, don't. What the fuck? That's because it's like they're. Why? Why? Why is a dog in the Aaron bathroom? Aaron will never you? know the joy of a dog looking at you lovingly yeah. while you're pinching off a loaf. Yeah, because it's Close like the a, door. it's packed behavior. But they, but they get in and they want to be like, hey, why are you leaving me? Well, What's they, up? I love you. No, it, it's packed behavior. They're per, they're watching your back while you shit. They do it while they shit, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. They'll, they'll make sure you're looking at them because oh, yeah. that's when they're their most vulnerable. Yeah. So oh, they want to like, make sure you're It's, you're it's packed behavior. They're when you're saying, shitting, you're very, like... It's, Super it's very dangerous. It's like I got the watch. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I got your back, bro. Yeah. Like dangerous. Yeah. No, like back. Like I get what you're saying. Just the way uh, you're saying it. Yeah, like, I've right always now, wondered. It's very and dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why I just like it's natural instinct that you're not shit and facing the wall because you don't know what's behind you. That's why chicks go to the bathroom together too. I mean, that's actually that is, a real yeah, danger, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> they actually, for real. Yeah, Look yeah. out, yeah. Keep a burner with you when I, you go to the bathroom. Billy, I'm going to put a mirror there, and now you can straddle the toilet. Next, time I, sh- next time I shit, Billy, you're coming with me. You're watching my six. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're watching <laughs> my <laughs> six. Because I'm, I'm facing the wall when yeah. I shit from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Billy's Need somebody watching outside my the back. stall while you yeah. shit. <laughs> watch it. So I would say my like last year in China was when they really started to crack down on drugs, and this never happened to me, but the cops would show up at clubs around like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., close all the doors and make all the foreigners there pee in a cup. And sometimes Ooh. they wouldn't even do the pee test. They would come in and just like shave off a patch of your hair, oh. like all the foreigners. Oh, fuck. And then test that. And I think it was just because they were looking for a way they could start to kick out a lot of foreigners because they were like, we have way too many here these days. And they were like, the easiest way, they're probably all on drugs. So, mm-hmm. yeah, if you failed the test... You could, I think you would have a choice. You could do like two weeks in jail or you could just be kicked out of the country. Mm. Right. So it's there. legal for it semi a lot of people. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's legal for police to, to give you random drug tests there? In China, yeah. 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 In China. Oh, okay, I'm yeah. cool off of China, I think. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I was shocked though. Like at first when I moved there, I thought like, oh, you get caught with weed, you're locked up for like years. Yeah, locked up abroad type stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think that's more if you get caught like Indonesia. selling drugs there. Yeah, or that was like there Philippines was someone too. Indonesia. Yeah, it's yeah. Philippines, so Duterte, the, like the person yeah. there. Australians, they like always try to like go to Bali with drugs, and they all just get end up life sentences. <laughs> just yeah. like it's fucked. Yeah, if you get caught in the Philippines with heroin. They can kill you. Yeah. There, there's actually like a death penalty. Oh, I that. mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're well, you could do like a like motorcycle citizens arrest, but it's like citizens death penalty. Right. Like I think the 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 leader of the Philippines was like, if you know someone doing heroin, you can go kill him and not get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Pa- Pacquiao is gonna unseat that guy soon. All right. Do you think he will be a little more liberal than that guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a little more. I really don't lenient? know. You might crank it up. You'll just yeah. be like, all right, no more, no more killing, but you can beat him up. <laughs> yeah. Call me. I'm doing better. drugs has to come fight me today. <laughs> yeah, Manny Pacquiao. That's that's the sentence. <laughs> Capture everyone doing drugs. Bring them to me. Ring five rounds. Yeah. It'd be pretty sick if, if that's you can how beat me in a fight. You can do drugs. <laughs> not Manny Pacquiao. If that's how wars were decided, just the president of the country just gets in a fist fight. Well, we're in deep shit. Well, remember <laughs> dude, the last, the last. We've so been in deep shit. The yeah, last there's, fucking. There's been a single president I've yeah, yeah. in their hands. I, I've talked well, about who's this. Who's the most before. athletic? Barack. I feel like out of the last. Five, I feel four like Bill five, Clinton. Probably. I was gonna say. I think too. Clinton's got like some of that southern like sneaky strength to him. Yeah. Bro, when Bill Clinton was in office, he's like, listen, Billy. He's like six three. He was like two thirty. He's like Brandon Walker. Yeah, I bet Brandon. If you if you put I would, Brandon, I in would a take fight, Brandon in a fight. You think you not not Brandon? not saying I would fight him. I'm saying no, if he we're was finding someone, that I, would, for sure. I would take him. <laughs> I, I also think choose him to win. I'm pretty sure that Bill Clinton was a little bit more athletic than Brandon. Although Brandon could dunk a basketball, he won his his high school's slam dunk contest. He did, huh? Yeah, so he's not exactly like a slouch. Or well, he's, he's, he played, he's a town he of seventeen basketball. people. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. He went. Yeah, he went to Last Chance U to play basketball. Yeah, and also. Their hoop was probably like nine feet. It's like okay, we need we need somebody that can. He had a at peach school. basket and a ladder where he played. Yeah, that'd be way better if wars were just decided by the people who actually have the conflict. Like y'all just fight it out, and then we'll just go along whatever who wins and loses. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We have no quarrel with the Chinese people. No. Well, but like our I two honestly, societies are on a collision course. Right I would now. say like uh, my first five years in China were the most fun five years of my whole life. Like I had more fun. The five years after college in China than I did my four years in college, yeah. by like a long ways. Well, you went to so a nest close. Guy. Yeah. I where, mean, yeah. Where yeah, did I you stay? What, what what parts <laughs> did you stay? In? I was in um, Guangzhou my first year, and then the rest of the time I was in Shanghai. And Shanghai just rages. It has one of the best nightlifes I've ever experienced. Really? Yeah. Like there used to be a club that would would open at four thirty in the morning and go until noon. And what so, like, fuck? pretty good. No That's windows, <laughs> no windows or anything. So you would just like after you leave. Those are hilarious. So you set your alarm to go to the club. Um, well, I yeah. think it's the after hours. Spot, yeah, you know okay. I mean? it's you the go, after go, hours. Go, go, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, I'm waking and up four thirty. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a hell of a imagine, morning. Imagine like if it's in the downtown office area and you're getting it actually out. For, you're getting out for your lunch break from being an accountant. Yeah. And then the club next door is letting out at noon. And the yeah. clientele that are coming out of there. Holy shit. A lot of walks yeah. of shame. I feel mm-hmm. like my first two years after college, I would be fine with like walking out of the club at 10 in the morning and be like, all right, whatever. I'll be back to normal by Monday. But now at my age, if I did that, like if I see the sun, I'm like, I'm fucked for the next four days. Yeah, yeah. no question. Yeah. yeah, no question. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, I think it's important also to understand the history of China. They were... They've been a dominant civilization for about the last 2,000 years, maybe even a li- little bit longer than that. They were like, in, in their eyes, they were bigger than the British Empire. They were the center of the earth for so long. And then they hit a little road bump earlier this century, and uh, the, the Japanese during World War II absolutely just uh, took a shitload those, of them out. Yeah. Those stories are insane. Have you guys ever read, I think it's like, I think it's literally called The Rape of Nanking. Yeah. Yeah. Just like so horrific. Again, excuse my ignorance. Can somebody give me a brief history on the beef between the Japanese and the Chinese? Because when I went to Japan, like I figured it was like I, I, I just that my foreign politics are just spotty. I know some stay here, know some here, but Asian politics I just don't really know that much about. They don't teach you that much, yeah. No. And I, I really hadn't cared enough to learn. But when I went to Japan, uh, 
there was like you know I had a lot of tour guides I had people like I talked to and I'm and there I just got this sense that like they don't really get along with Chinese people like that and no, I'm like what's the all. beef I didn't understand the beef and nobody really explained it to well, me. Well, there's a lot of like Asian ver- on Asian racism, right? Like yeah. inner Asian racism yeah. against one another. Even yeah. in America. Like, no, I know that when you grow up because I grew yeah. up with uh, I got a lot of Vietnamese friends and and. Like, if you call them Chinese or Japanese, like, it's like a, of course, it's like fucking racist. Right. But it's like, they get really, like, offended. Like, this shit. I, I, I get why, but, like, I was talking more specifically, like, nationality wise versus, like, Japanese mm-hmm. versus Chinese. Like, what is mm-hmm. the beef? Does anybody know? Um, yeah. Well, I know, like, China just used to be the dominant power. And, like, all of the surrounding countries, Japan, Vietnam, South Korea, they had to pay homage to China. Like, they, it was called kowtow. Like, they all had to kowtow towards the Chinese emperor. It kind of just means like you're paying tribute or you need to like kneel and just let them know like you're the big dog out here. Mm -hmm. And then when Japan modernized crazy fast, because like Japan saw all these Western countries are coming to Asia, they're taking land, they're taking over. Like we need to modernize fast or the same thing is going to happen to us. So then they managed to do it like in the span of like 50 years and then they could even compete with like the uk and that they kind of use their newfound power to be like all right china we're no longer your bitch like now we're gonna make you our bitch and that was like when the chinese government was kind of falling apart there was a bunch of like warlords and so around world war ii or even before world war ii that's when they just started to roll into china and take over like huge parts of the country and yeah, I mean, during World War Two, it was just horrific. Like there was a lot of war crimes. That's um, when uh, that's when my grandfather was over there. Like before yes. World War Two, during World War Two, he was up in like the northern countryside of China, and so he was. It was the nationalists and the communists that were representing the Chinese at the time. They were involved in a power struggle between the two. They hated each other, but they had Japan invading from yeah. the north. So it was like, okay, the enemy of my enemy is going to be my friend for a while. Mm-hmm. So it was like the two of them against uh, Japan, and then Japan just slaughtered like millions of people in China, just absolutely brutal stuff. Worse than just killing people. Like, yeah. Oh stuff yeah. They that would also couldn't... use them for medical like experiments. If they were doing research, they would just use Chinese as like human guinea pigs. I, I don't even want to mention some of this. Like I had to read it for school once. Like they were. It's like <clears throat> terrible. So from their perspective, China was used to being the big dog. Japan mm-hmm. comes in, absolutely subjugates millions of them. After World War II, there's a big power struggle. The communists beat out the nationalists. The nationalists all evacuate to Taiwan, which is there. That, that's where that government is right now to this day. The communists take over China, and they're like, you know what? We're not going to let that happen to our people anymore. By any means necessary, we're going to modernize. We're going to take the world over again because we're China. That's what we've done for the last 2,000 years. Yeah. It's like ingrained in, in so the So, yeah, they really just had a 100-year span, which they call in China, they call it their century of humiliation. And it was like the 100 years where all the Western countries and yeah, Japan finally came in and were just taking advantage of China. And now they're like, okay, that stage of – our country is over. We need to get back on top. So their so their uh, current status is like residual ego problems. Yeah, e- just yeah. like a lot of, due to like that one hundred years. A lot of a lot of countries in the world share that same thing, but with China, it's like magnified to an extreme yeah. level. Where the entire reason that their government right now is so authoritarian is because we're like we're not going to go through that bullshit. They got man. bullied. So, yeah. that's so, wild. so the pendulum yeah. swung so far that now they're like any means necessary. We're not going to be anybody's bitch anymore, which yeah. is what has led us to like a lot of the conflict that we have right now with China. So listen to this: wow. global wealth surges as China overtakes U.S. to grab top spot, according to Bloomberg Wealth. So global wealth tripled over the last two decades, with China leading the way in overtaking the U.S. for top spots worldwide. That's one of the takeaways from a new report by the research arm of the consultants McKinsey and Company. So the national balance sheets of ten countries represent more than sixty percent of the world income. So their economic boom. After, uh, I'd say, 97, when Hong Kong became a better part of China and they used it to trade with the rest of the world. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, that was when they insane. reopened. Like, yeah. Because it wasn't just in Hong Kong, but just like Shenzhen, Shanghai. They were finally allowed to trade again and like become capitalists. Like now, it's technically a communist country, but when you go there, you're like, this seems like the most capitalistic place ever. That's what and, I think is a communist country. And they call it, yeah, they call it capitalism with 
Chinese characteristics or it, something like that. It's called consultative like Leninism was one of their tenets. So basically they're like they're like communism, but they're a little more decentralized. And so it's not just one group making all the choices. There's a couple more local sort of CCP arms. Yeah. Well, it's like with Jack Ma, like he ran the largest company in China and he was like allowed to just run it like you would run a company here. But then the moment he says something bad about the government, then the government's like, you know, we can just take this company away from you and you really can't do a thing about it. So you're allowed to run your own company in China, but you just you want to stay on the government's good side. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, you want to talk yeah. about the Boxer Rebellion? Donnie and I talked a little bit about this oh, over the, the weekend. The Taiping Rebellion, I Taiping. believe. Taiping, okay. Yeah, so this was the second most violent conflict in human history. Hell and yeah. like, no one has heard of it, I assume. Have you guys ever heard of I've, the Taiping? Me, I've yeah. heard of what, what did you say? Rebellion. Boxer, Boxer Rebellion. Rebellion. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that, but I've never looked into it. I've only heard it. So the Taiping Rebellion was um, during the Qing Dynasty. I don't know the exact dates. I think it was... 1800s maybe um and this one dude starts to claim that he has these visions and the visions tell him that he's the younger brother of jesus christ okay and he's like uh i talked to god god told me there's too many demon worshipers in china it's like waco but in china yeah <laughs> i know a few cases like this actually and uh there were a lot of like unhappy unemployed peasants at the time because like the country had just grown so much. He ended up building up a following, claiming like, "Hey, uh, I'm the younger brother of Jesus Christ, I'm going to create the heavenly kingdom of China," and it turned into like a, a Christian religious country. And um, he got a huge following, and they just went to war with the government. And to this day, it's the most violent conflict in human history, besides World War II. All because one guy had nuts. some visions. Yeah, it's like, how does he get such a big following? We were we were talking about uh, testing in China. There's you have to take a test for everything, and to get a job in the government, you have to take a test. And apparently, he failed that test okay. five times, and because of that, he's like, "All right, well, I'm, I'm going to conveniently you, have then, a vision yeah. that I'm fucking Jesus Christ." It's like nope. Jordan getting I'll cut take, from his high school basketball. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, this boxer rebellion though is also pretty interesting. Yeah, that was with, like, the U.S. was involved in yeah, that, too, th- right? I didn't even know this. Like, I've heard about it, but I didn't know there was actually, like, literal boxers. A legion of, like, fisticuffs boxers. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah. I, had, I did not know it was yeah, related no, to They called themselves the Righteous and Harmonious Fists. Ooh. Yeah. Like and that's that. how it got its name, as, yeah. as the Boxer Rebellion? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, how come no one who ever has visions is ever like, yeah, I had these crazy visions. They told me to go to Chick-fil-A for lunch. It's always like I'm Jesus's brother. I have those visions. I'm going to go kill everyone. I don't, gonna, think, I don't think, think you need a vision a to tell you But like the, the I had a vision and it's like, uh, it's like peaceful as fuck. It's always like yeah. some fucking random. Yeah, well, he was like, I'm going to turn China peaceful, but first I just need to take down the government. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, 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 kill all the violent people. In a peaceful <laughs> way. <Yeah. laughs> Buddha was peaceful, though. He was. Yeah. yeah. Very peaceful. You, you guys think that this podcast is going to be available on any service in China? Nope. There's, surprisingly, there's just not a lot of podcasts in China. Like, even, like, unrelated. Like I'm okay with that, actually. Yeah. I don't know why. They, they never got big in China. Ch- something, um, yeah. Something about China that I've read about is that the national conscious. So, like, for example, we have access to tons of different you know media and too just, much too much exactly they have so little and it's so concentrated that your average you know chinese citizen is fed they can control exactly what they know and they're fed and what they sort of believe so how do you, how do you regulate something like the internet just like on a technical level so hard you need a vpn to uh yeah that's what i needed in china to use like most of the internet because they have their own Chinese version of YouTube, their own like Chinese version of Twitter called Weibo and all that stuff. But if I didn't have a VPN, I couldn't use Gmail, YouTube. So what Dropbox, is a VPN? Like, this is not my bag either. What is a VPN? A VPN, it makes your computer look like it's somewhere else. So I could turn on the VPN in China and it could look like I was using the internet from the US. Is this shit legal? Yeah, they it's were actually a so sponsor on Pardon My Take. Express VPN. Express VPN. Yeah. 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 It's so a virtual private network. Yo, shoot me a VPN, bro. So what you can do is, like, you know, have you ever been overseas and they got different Netflix overseas? Yeah. You can use a VPN to log into, like, British Netflix here in America and be like. And watch the shows over there. I got Peaky Blinders two weeks early. I can't. 
the 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 British accent it fucks with me. Yeah, you got to watch that with subtitles on. No, so. it's just I like, can't. It can't. No, you don't like. You just don't like the sound. That's, a, that's probably you a hot don't, take. I don't got well, a problem with the people. It's no. Just, well, also, it's confusing because there's like 20 different rap. accents in the yeah, UK. Like, I love the Liverpudlian accent with like Patty the Batty, but then I don't like the posh like London accent. Right. All the time. They probably feel that. I know they definitely feel that about us, though, for sure. For sure. Like, I just, they just talk funny. You know what I'm saying? Where you just like, <laughs> they, fucking they just saying? talk funny. <laughs> and I, that's hella, that's they hella, sure do. that's hella ignorant. Like, I understand that. That is a very ignorant take. I have no, like, if we have a conversation, it'll probably be dope. If you ask somebody from England, do an impression of American accent. It's shit. Which, which one do you think they usually start with? It's cowboy. Like it's either dude, southern, cowboy, southern, or it's or it's Los like Angeles surfer. surfer dude, I will yeah. say, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, like a shit like British that. actors. It's so cool, man. British actors can speak English. Oh, they or fuck speak so well. Oh my god, way better than American people. Can when do you British see like actors. a dope actor that they had killed a movie, and yeah. then you see him in an interview, like I, did, how the fuck? Wow. Well, yeah. they're cheaper. Is what, that why foreign yeah, labor? Th- yeah, no, seriously. The we English outsource they're, they're, they're like, yeah. we're like, we can't get Will Smith, but we can get Idris Elba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the new Star Wars movies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, all their actors are foreign. And they're uh, just they're wait, cheaper. I don't know. They did that for money? Yeah. I mean, I think like people from the, they're known as just very good actors. Yeah. yeah. Like Daniel, yeah, Craig, uh, Daniel Craig doesn't like cost dates back I'm going to be honest, I totally heard that from my mom. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's true. For sure. We got wrong. to the bottom of that but real sh- quick. You're a fucking <laughs> sure wrong, guy. Record really time. Be, no, but I can be slaying these opinions, though. No, I think I, the UK well, just has really good actors. Who's buddy from like the Prestige and Batman? Uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, I know he's Welsh, so it's not technically England, but like there's no way he's like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm foreign, so I'm taking a pay cut. Like, right. Not a chance. Right. Yeah. And don't and isn't the pound worth more? Yeah, th- I yeah. mean, they, they even had George Clooney as Batman. That is actually okay, sounds so like Big Cap, Billy. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not I Big Cap. There's be cap. no, no three. There's three reasons why. Um, hey, why what do website, Americans? What website sell, are you on right now? Uh, like, the original Carrie, Star Wars also had British people in it too. Right. Carrie Rickey, who's a film critic and worked with the Philadelphia Inquirer since 1986. Oh, very. Critical. She watches 500 films annually, so she's. So do very I, my well nigga. Get Jeff D. Lowe in here. Uh, so three reasons. Generally, British actors are stage trained, learn their craft first in theater, in Th- contrast to many American actors whose sense. apprenticeships are to in daytime point. dramas yeah. or in Disney shows. Generally, the Brits don't demand the pay scales of American actors, mm. and generally, the Brits are more likely than American stars. Actors to serve the role rather than the career. Okay, so, so they come from so like a Shakespearean. They do it for the love of the art form. Yeah, bang. Yeah, so they're much. Though. They're much better. And yeah. and when they start out, they might not ask for as much money. Right. You know what? I think the best job that I've ever seen in terms of nailing an American accent, especially considering it's from a foreigner, was Kate Winslet doing Mayor of Easttown, where she put on oh, yeah. the Philadelphia accent. Like, they can mm. learn regional accents. Idris Elba is another one. When he did The Wire, oh, he was doing a Baltimore accent. It's like He was how, doing the, the least Baltimore oh, accent of everyone on that show, though. That's true. That's fair. Guys, uh, I got... So this proves my point 100%. Samuel L. Jackson claims black British actors are cast because they're cheaper than U.S. counterparts. Mm. So that's, that's the, coming from Samuel Motherfucker. You're talking about the highest grossing actor of all time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I but he's, so everybody's he's cheaper than Yeah, Samuel everyone's Jackson. cheaper than him. So yeah. <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya. Kaluuya? Mhm. Yeah, yeah, that's He's a Star Wars guy. His fucking he he no. blew my mind with his accents. That shit. He's, yeah, of, he's, uh, the, he's the guy in Get Out, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm he's blacking British. on his name. Though. Daniel yeah, Boyega? I can, yeah, can I think of that guy's Kaluuya. name? No, I'm thinking of the other That's the Star guy. Wars guy. Boyega's he's not a Star Wars, Wars guy. John Boyega. No, I know. We're John, Boyega. Talking. John Boyega. John Boyega. That's John Boyega. Boyega's in Star Wars. Yeah, it turns out there's a real rival. Like, like American actors really don't like British actors. Cause oh, I'm sure British actors don't like American actors. Like, I'm sure. There's, it's well, fuck like them then. South Park, they're taking their jabs. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they took they their are. jabs. The, uh, makes sense, what's though. the one that like caught you most off guard? Mine was uh, the main guy in Walking Dead being British. That threw me for fucking loot. I didn't see that one coming at all. The one that was like, uh, Carl. Yeah, he's British. I didn't know that. Yeah. Recently, Tom Tom, Tom Wamsgans. Were Tom, you to say that? Well. Tom from Succession? Yeah. Yeah. What? I don't know these yeah, yeah. He's I'm so shit with names. <laughs> yeah. no, no, but that way. makes, that makes so much gets? sense because when the pilots, to produce so many pilots and not knowing which shows are going to take off. Definitely. They're all British. They're all cheap. Yeah. yeah pretty, much, just like, pretty much everyone in Succession is British. 
That's oh. crazy. Uh, yeah, isn't isn't Shiv? Is she British? Yeah, she's British. Yeah, yeah, I remember hearing her talk. You know what? I recant. I do like British accents because Black Mirror was filled with a lot of that shit. Yeah, yeah. and I British love it. So I take well, it back. The new I think it's just rap. British rap. There's the new, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. new yeah. British accent. Shop, look shop. <laughs> it's, just, it's just hard for me to... My man, my man UK just, drill. My man was listening to it. Your girl is an Uckers. Yeah, bro. Like I, so it's like, I don't know, man. Maybe this is where I'm from, but like my man was like... Um, we was making fun of it, and he was like, he was like yo... What you on the street? Yeah, somebody yeah. said something like that, and my dude said, "My dude said, y'all don't got street, y'all got cobblestone." Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what they say? They say it's they it's a street, it's road. Yeah, it's like I'm man, touch road. road. Yeah, it's like I'm from the road, and it's like I, 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 I'm, st- I'm, I'm sure there are you know struggles everywhere, but it just it just don't I don't feel. Like you gotta get my we gotta to introduce relate. you to troops yeah. because troops is a guy from from London, and he's from the road. And he'll tell you all about the road over there yeah. in England. I'm, no, I'm positive. Okay? There's poverty everywhere, and there's drug oh. sales everywhere, and there's conflict everywhere. It's just... It, it seems just nicer feel, in your mind because it, it's in England. Yeah, it just don't feel like... I'm sure somebody could give me the business out Bro, there. Bro, actually, I, your mom don't know my mom. Stop telling man you're my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> that's Big Shaq. Big Shaq. You know yeah. Big Shaq. Big Shaq's so actually a comedian. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a real rapper. You know, this, yeah. you know this, this is what it is. is I just figured out what it was. Like... A big part of, like, the street culture is, like, woofing. So, meaning, like, shit talking. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you kind of, like, getting... There's nothing that they say that is intimidating. (laughs) And it's, like, it's just... I laugh at it. And so, it's not, like, a disrespect. It's just, like... No, it's disrespectful. You fucking (laughs) felon. It's not not intimidating, I guess. Knife violence? I much rather get shot than stabbed with a Stanley knife. Uh... Nah. A stabbing? No. Just, <laughs> I, Are you kidding? A stabbing's yeah. just so much more personal than yeah, shooting. Sta- no, I, I would like, hate to get It's stabbed. all knife violence. Like, but, you have guys coming out with machetes and but you stuff. Have a better chance. Gun you got a better chance. Yeah, there's yeah. different guns out there. But I'm saying you have a better chance of survival with a knife than a gun. But this, yeah. I mean, one... I, I get in this debate a lot how I'd rather be shot Why than Why are you stabbed. in this debate Do frequently? You? Because, again, these discussions. Anyway, getting <laughs> shot. That's an answer. That's <laughs> not a reason. Getting shot way, part of my take, way more yeah. sterile. Way more um, sterile to get shot. The bolt's hot. Goes in. You, like it basically you heals you as you get yeah, shot. Yeah, burns. It cauterizes <laughs> the wound. Uh-huh. Exactly. It's healthy to get shot. We should yeah. all get shot. So Everybody knife? should get shot at least once. Yeah. You don't know where that knife's been. <laughs> like, no, seriously. So, uh, so you- China's biggest terrorist attack. Just want to talk about because like, there's like no guns in China. So the biggest terrorist attack I think in the last fifty years, where thirty people ran into a subway station with machetes and they and they killed like 35 people it's like i would almost prefer just to get blown up in like a bus bomb than yeah. get hit to death by sure. a machete but yeah, i mean obviously no terrorist attack is like a better terrorist attack I agreed but. yeah but getting <laughs> chopped up yeah i would hate Jeez, that yeah i'd much rather get shot all right here's the question you billy have a better chance of survival. billy would you rather get shot in your head and killed or stabbed five times in your stomach and survive Oh, bro, the thing is, if you get stabbed five times in your stomach, that means they tear up your bowels. Yeah, and enough. you have to live I'm with I'm going to tell you like, something. I might pick shot in the head. Yeah, dude, mm-hmm. if you shoot me in the head and, like, like, there's tons of people who get shot in the that head and survive. That bugging right now. What, what the you fuck are like talking a, about? What? You should have, like, a... Would you rather live with some terrible I would rather have syndrome? the opportunity to know I'm in a fight before yeah. I'm yeah. just dead. Yeah, I could get shot from, like, a mile Dog, away. Dog, you well, could well, just get... Somebody just walk by and got me. You out of there. Rather than... I'm about to stab you, fam. I don't. And, and now we can tussle. No, that's not how they fight. They, they're coming out with Stanley knives. Not just fucking having oh, been, You get to dictate the, fights. The murder, too. Like, the murder just... rate was higher in London than New York. About, I think it started th- three or four years ago for the first time ever. Okay. Um, and I think do I we bet have, we've surpassed that. Do we have now? to no. get out of this room, Avery? We have uh, 25 minutes. Okay, perfect. Right. Yeah, it's Brandon. Brandon said he'd just do the show behind us while we kept talking. Okay. So right. I know this sounds crazy, but it I'm, does. I'd much rather get shot. My thing, though, when you're talking about it, if we're talking about surviving either, I'd much rather survive with fucked up bowels and a bullet that went through my brain. Yeah, okay, yeah, so I, maybe I, I'm I can't misunderstanding think your... correctly. Yeah, You'd think be they... the man if you got shot and survived, though. Maybe. But if I can't, be a if I, I mean, yeah, like 50 cents really milked it for as much as you can worth getting shot. That's but yeah. like, you get Chaps way more too. street no, grams sure. for sure. Dude, definitely. I was at a dinner one time Definitely. and French Montana Chaps came to the table and we were just like, respect, like get this man a seat, please. Oh, he got shot? He's Yeah, I think he got shot in the head. You know who I respect gotcha. the most is young Dolph, who got shot a hundred times, didn't get hit once. That's, That's who I respect. Not so true. then you haven't been shot. How, you've been shot the at. Fuck? How can you get shot and not get shot? He was in a car. Oh, you got shot at. A hundred times. Oh. How the fuck? 
Do you miss a whole hundred shots? How the fuck you miss a whole hundred shots? And then several. And then several months later, he actually did get shot. Uh, I was gonna say I thought I heard of he did get shot. He got shot in the arm coming out of a juicery in in L.A. It wasn't quite as <laughs> as hard as getting shot and just kind of like looking up from his. Yeah, that, that, was whole, uh, that was an episode of The Sopranos where that one guy got shot and he went to the hospital, and then Bobby was like, "Hey, to his buddy, like I know you, I know your friend's getting all the street cred because he got shot." I'll hit you in the meaty part of the thigh. <laughs> I won't tell you when it's coming. Then this dude gets shot in his ass. And yeah, album sales blow up. I feel like I, it is good for street crime. Cam- Cameron shot himself, got shot and drove himself to the hospital. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. John Lennon got shot and died. <laughs> Shout out Daisy. 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 That's Daisy. a That's a wild story. Cameron? John Lennon. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, dude loves you so much he kills you. Like, And then like one of the, you seen that picture, that eerie picture where Cuz standing right behind him? Yeah, because uh, he, he, like, he had met him the at day the Dakota, before, I think. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, so he was going to do it the day before, but he lost his nerve. And then he went back. He's like, fuck it. I got to shoot yeah. John Lennon. Yeah, he's that like, scares the shit him. out of me. Nobody's going to shoot you, Billy. You are not God. John Lennon. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. But, like, <laughs> still, like, you know. Yes, anybody could get got, but you're way less in the sure. spotlight than John Lennon. Was. A couple what? people, a couple people dress up as Billy for Halloween, and he's uh, <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> serious, man. He's that's like, I'm, the, I'm the Beatles. But now. it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Like his the, the guy actually. who killed it actually matters a lot. The guy who killed John Lennon, like <laughs> Red to uh, fucking catching the rye, catching, and yes. then who's like mm-hmm. John Lennon? Like yes. some dude could be like, yo, like. Billy football. Billy football. Yeah. Billy Billy football. That's how I get a I job at Barstool. I think you're going to kill I take Billy <laughs> yeah, out of the Billy, equation. Yeah, Billy does want to kill me. I think Billy, I, I think you want to kill a producer. Him, so wait. Job. Look, how, look how flush yeah. you're getting in your How face do you right feel no, like. You're scared as shit. For this There's gun, for this now we England, New York guard. violence. Like that was a British guy who got shot in New York. How does that fall into your little web? So a British guy got shot in New York. John Lennon. Right. Do you think he? Do you think he was like? <laughs> he thought you were just laying out this scenario. Yeah. No. Like, okay, so there's a British guy. Yeah. You okay. He was tell like, me more. I wish I could have got. I wish I could get stabbed on my home. Shooter town. reads catcher in a rye. Okay, keep going. So this is actually. I'm with you. Well, Lock stuff. A debate that I've had before is, at what point do you get assassinated, and it's no longer a murder? Like John Lennon, you could say he got. Did he get assassinated? That's a, he, assassinated. he got right, assassinated. Assassination. Yeah. So at, at what Billy point, would just get murdered. Yeah, definitely. If, if Billy killed me, that would be an assassination. I think yeah. okay, that might I be think, regicide. You know that's a good. Billy <laughs> gets murdered. PFT gets assassinated. Yeah, I think you so. get assassinated. Yeah, Aaron gets assassinated. Yeah. Maybe. The rest of us. Especially well, if it's well, like man. a forty fans. I think you're like, right at the border. Could, could, oh, I'm way below assassination. I'm way below assassinate. I could get assassinated. If it More was, than likely just murdered. If though. it was a guy that had you on his fantasy team. And I'm, he's that's like, assassination. Yeah, it's assassination. assassination. Mm-hmm. He's right. like, how your hamstring feel now? Uh, Big T, I would say, actually assassinated. <laughs> really? I yeah. think I'm more of just like body fat. No, you would get assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> was too, so wait, wait. Nondescript man. Yeah. Yeah. John Doe. Was, yeah. was, Biggie, John was Doe? Biggie assassinated? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Antifa would probably assassinate Big T. That's fair. <laughs> they love that too. I'm just saying it's not. It's, no, it's I'm not on their fair. list. I'm on their yeah. list. Oh yeah. I don't think anyone would like try to kill me because like you had sex with a woman. No, no, but it's just have like, you had sex with just, a woman? It's weird that you Billy, don't have know. you had sex. I'm dodging the question. question. Never. <laughs> Look at he's so scared of these well, people. Well, the thing That's about weird. Portnoy is probably the most polarizing person at the company. He's never even been punched in the face. You know, yeah. I think, <laughs> but Nate, but I'm not Nate worried got about pied. Nate did get pied. Nate got That's a good pied. Point. Nate got pied. Yeah. Nate did get pied. Yeah. I feel like there's a big. It, it really matters. I would rather get shot than pied. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm gonna look they up the They pied Bill Gates. No one's gonna feel bad are. for you if you get pied. Uh, Avery, Mad Dog, what do you guys feel about the difference? Where Where's the line drawn between assassination and murder? I feel like it's got to be in a public place. Like assassination, like JFK, he was in a public place. I don't know. I, yeah. I I think it would still be considered a murder if it was just like, in, like if I got shot in here or someone famous got shot in here i feel like it would just be a murder but like right. if it was like out in on seventh avenue it's assassination so i the, the it is a very arbitrary distinction mm-hmm. you're right so the assassination uh the dictionary app that i have um because i love words um it Shout says the words. premeditated <laughs> act of killing someone suddenly or secretively especially a prominent person mm-hmm. so it's not really distinctive it's kind of yeah. arbitrary so the pro- it's the it's the subjectivity of you have to be prominent yeah, yeah, so, so it was yeah. like um, maybe ex- Billy, if you get murdered, I'm not, the and, guy and thinks has to be planned he's out. assassinating you, but to everybody right. else, you just got murdered. Yeah, no, it was but like, guy got shot. It's like 
it's not even about people knowing. It's not like a like a fame thing. It's just like, you know, I'm on a podcast. Someone could be like <laughs> sketched out and be like, yo, that guy. I feel, fuck him. I, I feel like if you're not him. on the logo of the podcast, you can't be a sad. Like those are the only two that can get a sad. I'm not saying it's thing. I'm just saying in general. That would suck if you like went through all the trouble to plan out your assassination, assassinated the dude, and then there were like on the news. It was just like, oh, this person got murdered. Like yeah. you feel like, wow, I, I really, I, I thought I was oh, doing. Yeah. Um, so wait, yeah. it's a, it's a, a murder is considered assassination if money was paid or if it was done for political reasons. Oh, like so if it an has to be an assassin. assassin. Yeah, or not, if it's not necessarily true, it's or done for political reasons. Right. Right. Now you got to get into the definition. So now, of big political, well, I think which is, is, is a very it broad murder term. with premeditated. Like, what's the different types of murder? Let There's it's, it's manslaughter. Manslaughter is like third. Third degree, right? But like manslaughter, first, well, no, manslaughter is a different charge. Yeah. It sounds There's, the no, toughest. It's not, like, it's not it sounds like the it's most like, brutal. It's, right. You can kill somebody without malicious intent. Most like states a, have a like car. first, second, third degree murder. Then there's manslaughter. Did oh, Scott so Peterson okay. assassinate yes. or murder his wife? Uh, well, likely neither. <laughs> but he was charged, I believe, with first degree murder. I, I also think that if you screw on a giant silencer to a rifle like before Flanders, you do it, yes. that's an assassination. Mm -hmm. No matter who you kill him. Yeah, no matter who. Yeah. Okay, Anybody. so first degree murder needs a specific int intent to kill, premeditation, or deliberation. So I feel like assassination has to be first, first degree, degree murder. Yeah, so, yeah, all, all assassinations are murders, but not oh. all murders are assassinations. There you do you get a higher charge, like if you did, so for example, does uh, JFK's shooter did he get a higher charge than just regular murder? Well, he got no. killed. He got murdered. <laughs> right, but he, <laughs> wait, wait. he, he got, got assassinated. He got assassinated. He got assassinated. He got assassinated. Did Lee, Har Lee Harvey Oswald get assassinated or murdered? Yes. He assassinated. was a public figure at that point. Jack Ruby was 100% an assassin for the mob. Okay. Yeah. They're yeah. just they're just tying up loose ends there. Jeffrey Epstein. And the, I assassinated. argue that. Assassinated. Well, he killed. Well, likely. Oh. Yeah, likely assassinated. Ain't no way that dude. Hillary Clinton. Oh well, she, uh, she's well, Jelaine's going that. on trial yeah. soon. Yeah. Who? Jelaine. Just, just like Maxwell, his, the woman who she, like would like second in command. Yeah. Word. Like she just was, got, she, have we not done an Epstein episode? That's well, I wanted to wait. I wanted to wait, I wanted oh, to wait okay. till because I don't know enough about it. But I just yeah. I did read a little bit about the his his uh, his murder. Or I mean his suicide. Fuck out of here. Ain't no way, he bro. Can there's, he was on suicide watch, dog. Bro, there was his cellmate was this cop it, yeah. from Briarcliff, <laughs> New York, who's oh, just this goes. roided up dude, who's his cellmate, who's like a hundred percent a hit man, just like a hundred percent. You could look Probably. him up. He looks what, what was Jeffrey Epstein doing with a cellmate? That's the <laughs> yeah. big question. Yeah. That's like, kind of wild, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think he was hired to protect him, and he switched sides. Mm. I don't think there's any side switching. Mm. I think he did exactly what he was sent to. Where is he at now? Where's Buddy at now? He's still there. Look him up. Because um, if he, because if he's out, he was a and former he, and cop, and he's out of, and he's out of the country, I would say you had a point. But if he's still in the can, I don't no, know. no, he was a former cop, dirty Westchester ex-cop, is Epstein's cellmate. Yeah, dude, this guy, he, he this police officer is sort of from where I went to high school. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. So, nice. yeah, look at this guy. This, like, roided up Guido former cop. Watch the G word, Billy. That's that not, this is the guy that's going to kill you. I'm Italian. Can we can say, say Guido? Yeah. Is Guido a pejorative? I don't even know. I think it's a it. pejorative term. Is it? But no, there's so much pride on. that Guido's had. It's not Guido's as bad had. as the other G word. Guinea? Uh, Guinea? Uh, Guinea's fine. What is the Okay. I guess that's another word for Italian. Yeah. Oh. I never even heard that word. I guess I'm just not around a lot of Eye tiles. Hey, another brother. <laughs> that guy. He has touches the road. A, yeah. Oh, oh you want to hear the shag? Yeah. yeah. Fire. Uh, oh, all right. We got to oh. bleep out his name because now Billy's implicated him as being an assassin. And he calls it 100% an assassin. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what he said. Yeah. yeah, he says 100%. Can you bleep out his name, Avery? Roid it out. Yeah. Okay. Just the, trying to look hmm. after you here, Billy. The dude uh, in China, Bo Xi Lai, a lot of people thought he was going to be the next chairman of China. But then, like, it came out he had this British dude poisoned because the British dude was going to rat him out about some of his, like, shady business practices. So him and his wife poisoned him in his hotel room. And then, um, like, uh, when it came out, they, like, got the cops to say that he died from uh, alcohol poisoning. But then, like, the guy's family was like, he doesn't drink alcohol. Something sounds fishy. Came out that he had him poisoned. Now that dude is in jail for life out in China. Jesus oh. Christ. So that was like he was going to be the next chairman. It would be like if Joe Biden, like, was found poisoning someone right before the election. Mm -hmm. Pretty Jeez. crazy. That would actually be fire. How about Joe Biden? <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, it'd be. <laughs> we yeah. spice this shit Finally, up. like. This, yeah. is, this yeah. is one thing I don't understand about Big T's worldview necessarily is – 
at the same time, the Democrats can be the most incompetent people on the planet, but also Hillary Clinton has murdered a dozen people. Okay, with first hands. of all, don't ascribe that to me. I've never said that. That's ridiculous. Secondly, they try to do a lot of shit and they consistently fail. Okay, so they're just the most like incompetent bum- bad guys. They're the most bumbling criminals ever. Um, no, they have a lot of a I lot agree of that people within trackers. their ranks who are doing a great job right I now. I agree that they also bumbling. have a lot who are really stupid. And but most of the stupid ones are the forward facing ones that they put out there to make you think they're stupid and they're lurking in mm. the shadows. Okay, who are the who are the ones who are good at being creepy? Hold on, before you answer that, I think you'll find a lot of common ground with far left people, dog. Far left people fucking hate Democrats. It's true. I am one of those. I think Big T might be really far left. They <laughs> also think hate you, you go so far right, you end it up. It just on comes the back around. <laughs> the spectrum there, is a circle. A ca- you should follow this, dog. Follow, there's a, this is an account on Twitter called uh, Accidentally Right. Based. Accident, I'm accident, accidentally Based or Accidentally Based. I've, since, I've seen some of that. Yeah. Shit is fu- cause th- like Some of the takes are so outrageously right that, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's fucking hilarious. But go ahead, answer, answer your question, my bad. You said which ones are yeah, what? which ones are the ones that, that you're afraid of? Which ones are the Democrats that are very good at being like violent and sneaky? I don't think you know the Kamala? names of any of the ones that you should be afraid of. Oh, so you don't know the names either? Correct. But you I don't just think know Anthony Weiner? <laughs> Anthony Weiner, criminal master. A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, that's the thing about Democrats. Like Most Democrats are just, they can't govern. Like, so... Biden and Pelosi and those people have enough power that you should, in theory, be afraid of them. They just don't know what to do with it. Why would you be afraid of Joe Biden when he's crapping himself in front of? Well, the, the, the first, again, he has the, enough what power, power that theoretically. A power who controls that? Joe Biden, Billy? Hmm. Who tells him to pick what report? Kamala. Do you think so? Who tells him? No, he's know. been squeezing her out. Do you not read that report from CNN? You should go no, look, look into that. No, she, she's she's on the outs right now. So you is fake news. I mean, she's on the outs. Well, no, you know when CNN's criticizing the Democrats that shit's bad. Either that, or there's like four people that made a coordinated attack on somebody in the press and reached out to CNN. They're like, "Hey, we're pissed off at Kamala. We're all gonna go talk to CNN to put the pressure on her." Well, no, it's her that's pissed off. You think she? No, she's I think mad. people are pissed off at her, so they're leaking all this stuff to CNN. No, no, no. The story is that she's upset that Biden is not like she's not being a part of shit. Oh, well, I mean, you're the vice president. That's kind of your job. She's getting the Terry squeeze out. If if you're if watch that word. Got to bleep that. Watch the T word. You know, I'm a writer. No, I don't give a shit. What's the Terry squeeze out? It's a we have a guy here. We do not have a guy. We have a guy here. His name's Terry. I'm just saying he's tucked. He's tucked his tail so hard now that he has to actually walk around the office and see everybody. Arian, we he's tucked his fucking tail. No, I'm saying that's like no, like oh, that's his real name. Bleep that. Oh yeah, no, his name is inside joke. I ain't in. He tucks his tail. He walks past me in the hallway. Doesn't look me in the eyes. He's a bitch. What? You swung on him? Sound like real beef over here? No, he's just no. He's like the biggest loser. Anytime, anytime you call somebody a bitch, that's. Beef, dog. I ain't called. And him it's on site. You just I called him a bitch. Oh, no, I called him. him a I say he just tucked stale. That's that's. It's just like hands. it's like such submissive, hands. like like he's not an alpha. Bell. No, he's get him like, he, he has he knows his place in the pack is like low. low. So yeah. he sounds like, like not an alpha. Darts his eyes and he's he doesn't respect you. No, no, no. It's like a cowering. No, oh, he's a coward. Like like the tail is tough. I disavow. Arian, we could t- we could have a, a nine hour podcast. Matt we would not <laughs> scratch the Rico Bosco episode <laughs> have to on be sick. on the history of his beast or whatever. All, all I'm saying and is, is he I'm, in the office right now. Yeah, I'm yeah, disavowing. He's what, I, I saw him just leave a second ago. I disavow as well. I disavow everything. These. Two Why guys do you guys? Said. Why I'm on are you so side. afraid of him? I'm, I'm afraid of him. You guys are acting out of fear. No, I like Rico. this rider. You just point at things and say fear. You're the one who's afraid to say you've had sex with a girl because of people on your computer. That's. That's different, man. They're trying That's to kill different. me. Yeah. <laughs> I like Rico. I think Look how red he gets. It really honor. is fascinating how scared these motherfuckers you is. PFT. How red I get? Yeah. I just get red naturally. How but scared. Breaking what? news. Oh, breaking news. What's breaking up? The Packers released. Aaron Blake Rodgers. Bortles. Fuck that. Blake Bortles. They're cursed. Oh. Packers are cursed. Wow. Done. Yeah. I'm out on the Packers. Yep. That's bullshit. So basically what they did was they signed Blake Bortles to get the Seattle Seahawks playbook. And ha- they also ne- they needed that's a well it's a well calculated that, that happens a lot. They needed I I don't care that Blake never played a snap for the Seattle Seahawks. And he never technically was on the team. They used Blake. Also, they probably just used him to be a scout team version of Russell Wilson because mm-hmm. he's the closest in talent that you can get mm-hmm. to Correct. what my man Russ is doing Correct. out there. So yeah, they used curse a curse a pox as an owner of the Green Bay Packers. I'm disgusted with the team. In fact, I just saw that they're. 
They're selling 300,000 shares of new Packers stock Ooh. tomorrow morning. Short it. I'm thinking about short it. I'm thinking about putting some some options against the Green Bay Packers stock. <laughs> I think that shit's going to tank tomorrow <laughs> and well-deserved. You don't get rid of the boat without suffering the consequences. Imagine thinking the Seahawks have a playbook. Yeah, it's just <laughs> hand the ball off. They don't even have that one. Hand the <laughs> ball off, punt on fourth and one. That's all they have. Hmm. You see Pete Carroll throwing the challenge flag yesterday? What was that? It was a hand warmer. Was it? Yeah, it was an electric hand warmer. It looked like one of those Amazon Echoes that you have in your house that you just like yell at. It, and it, it looked like a food. It looked like a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. He couldn't find his flags. So you could just throw whatever you have in your pocket, and I guess they just give you a challenge. I like Pete Carroll. You do? Yes, good guy. He's a from uh, with my dealings with him. I would like to have Pete Carroll on this show. Actually, yeah, that'd be electric. Uh, this show specifically. Yeah, for the nine yeah. eleven episode. A thousand percent. Um, but. He's a 9-11 truther. So what, at, no. one, at one oh, yeah. point, he had uh, one of the major generals that was in charge of CENTCOM. I'm probably messing up some of the details in this, but I think the guy was in charge of CENTCOM and some of the responses to any threat against America, like controlling the Air Force and scrambling jets and all that stuff. To this day? Yeah, so he, well, Pete Carroll had one of those generals out to speak to his team during training camp to like talk to them about the importance of leadership. Mm -hmm. And then Pete was like, hey, come into my office for a little bit. Sat him down and then was asking him all these questions like, "How do you know that there was actually a plane that hit the Pentagon?" Like grilled him on it. Uh, so he's Pete Carroll is very uh, intellectually curious about the events surrounding 9/11. Mm. So he could still be agnostic about it. He could be. He could be. What are okay. your dealings with Pete Carroll? Um, <clears throat> one time we played him in 2013. And he came up to me. It's really rare when head coach head coaches kind of get this. Um, I get diva vibes from a lot of them. Uh, so he comes up to me because I went to high school in San Diego, and so um, and this when they had Reggie and Lindell, and that day was they had the whole dynasty down there. And he came up to me, and I had never spoken to him in my life. He goes, "How the fuck did we miss you?" I was like, "So he's like, yeah, down in San Diego. How the fuck did we miss you?" And I was like. Makes you feel good as a mm. player, like, and we just chopped it up for like 10, 15 minutes on the field. He seems like a good guy. Yeah, I, I think that Pete Carroll seems like it. It's no wonder that most of his players like playing for him. Yeah, I just think that he's not a very good coach in terms of like strategy. Um, he's he's I, had great quarterback luck. I don't know, man. Um, he's had a great defense before that was not his doing at all. No, that was Quinn. He had Dan Quinn. He had Daryl Bevel. I don't even know. Is he a Gus Bradley? Is he an offensive coach or a defensive? He's coach? supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's always had these good defensive coordinators. Who, by the way, he's got a type. He has a major type. It's like if you are a bald white dude with a goatee, <laughs> you're my defensive coordinator. Now, I think I, I actually think that the uh, coordinator is a black guy up there right now. I got to look up who it is. But for Can't like diversify. a good ten year span, it was just a, a cycle of different bald dudes with goatees that he had as his as quarterback. Can't speak to that but from my experiences with him. Um, he's been hella cool. Dudes that I know how to play for him, say he's like a player coach. He's all about competition. That would probably piss me off if I played for him. Like, if I'm a, if I got a certain tenure in the league, I'm not trying to compete. I'm just, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But Where else were you looking at going to college? Uh, my number two was Oregon at the time. I was finna go to Oregon or, or Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. You would have put up some yards at Oregon. Mm. Probably. And you'd have – just Jordans for life. I wish I went to high school yeah. in San Diego. Jordans, I feel like that's the best. Hate that's the best place in the country <laughs> you to go to high school. Me, goddamn, you're probably right, and you're not probably wrong the best about place that. In the country, yeah. do a lot of shit. Yeah, San Diego is so gorgeous, dog. Um, it's like a, it's like a, for whatever reason, it's like a really good kept secret because you don't you hear about L.A. and L.A. is just not San Diego. L.A. I tell you like this, from like small town to L.A., San Diego's like this beautiful middle ground to where it's like you still get that city feel but it's not like overwhelming like LA mm -hmm. where there's all kinds of yeah. people um, and there's this beautiful fog every morning that comes like off the coast it's just and then it clears up in the sun it's just beautiful San Diego's amazing yeah I think that would it's be fake great. life carne asada fries. fries yes mm. carne asada fries if you ever in San Diego go to any taco shop carne asada fries interesting and great fish tacos there too yep Dude, I'm craving Mexican food you're not craving Chinese food that's, after all this talk? That's code for a woman. He's craving a Mexican <laughs> woman. <laughs> In sales, he's cheating on y'all. <laughs> Billy's like, I want pizza. <laughs> An Italian woman. Cheese, cheese pizza. New York Just Canada. know, I cracked the, anytime Billy talks about food on the podcast, the, he's talking to his shorties. No, right there. no. Uh, you remember Pizzagate, Big yeah. T? Uh, yes. <laughs> that, that right there was a prime example of the fact like they actually thought that Hillary Clinton and John Podesta had like – 
Nobody Hundreds. actually thought that. That's oh, not some true. Did. There's uh, a kept in their basement. To this An day. infinitesimal percentage of people legitimately sure. thought that but, was real. I mean, these people were just in Dallas not la- like not two weeks ago. Like, I looked these, I looked into that, here. and it is fucking hilarious. It is it is wild, but the only merit I'll give Uh-oh. is that <laughs> there was tons of charges to government accounts mm-hmm. for pe- like for uh like basically <laughs> Pizza and food. Uh, what's the word? They bought food. catering, like catering. They bought food. That yeah. was just no, but like a hundred thousand dollars worth of pizza. Yeah, if you're putting, if how you, much was that McDonald's if, bill if for having, Clemson? If you're having a shitload of <laughs> events <laughs> on a cam campaign trail, no, but for one event, what a zinger! I don't know if it, I, I, I have not looked. It's, into it's the just charges. like they were definitely writing off other stuff, like they, that we don't. It could be something like as. Do we need a pizza like, gate? It doesn't have to be something probably, weird, but yeah. like they're I'm definitely down, I'm using. I'm down for a pizza gate episode. It's probably definitely like explainable. It's like, yeah, we need some cash on hand to, you know, do buy, something else. I'm pretty sure if they were children, buying, yeah, yeah, if they were buying kids, I'm not saying they that, wouldn't but include that on their itemized. But on their <laughs> term, on their term <laughs> sheets, we'll, we'll just change it to a different. I'm not word. saying pizza. it was kids. I'm not saying yeah. it was kids, but they were definitely using the money for something that wasn't pizza. That that's that's probably fair. Accurate. That probably that happens all the time and yeah. like everywhere. But yeah. but the leap to children is the big leap. Right. Kind of right. weird, but I'm, I'm weird not that saying that's what they were doing. I, you know, I, I'll be honest. I just watched the documentary. I've done no subsequent research on it, and it was just the logical leaps that they make. Is, there's obvious flaws in it, but it would be fun to just dig into if y'all yeah. are down. I would. I would like to do a piece. Have you ever? Has, have you ever looked at as any uh, post? I don't know if it's still happening, but it was happening a lot, especially last year. Anytime Tom Hanks or like a really big celebrity posted on Instagram, all of the comments were just about. Why do you keep fucking kids? Like yeah. every comment, so uh, infinitesimal. I can't agree. No, with. yeah, like, I, are, and that's another thing. It's, it's it's always this like big elaborate ring, mm-hmm. you know, like it's this big ring, and it's like the Democrats and celebrities. You know what's yeah, and that, like I I just don't understand like why where did it, like what's the you know what's the and then Matt part? Gates just didn't he just get Gates. He, Matt Gates, oh, is yeah, his name? There was, uh, yeah, yeah. He's like, like literally 17, charged 18 with like... 17-year-old prostitutes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. was so, some... He has like real charges. You know what's right? the weirdest yeah. part about the whole thing? They say that the reason the second the second season of True Detective sucked was because they almost uncovered the whole scandal, so they had to make it. It was getting too realistic, and they found too much. Like whoever the guy who wrote it, like Polizzi or something, yeah, something like, like did like they got in too deep, so that's why the season sucked because they had to rewrite it because it was going to reveal too much. They made it bad to make people stop watching. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, like, it, like a it's fire plan. I, I do admire yeah. their their. Uh, constant devotion to like being really creative and weaving yeah. the pizza gate conspiracy into anything that's happening in pop culture when when Tom Hanks was on SNL remember that yeah. at the, yeah, at the that start of fake. of covid they were like no this is fake he's actually in a prison but they're allowing yeah. him to appear on SNL and well, all this stuff is CGI yeah. around him or yeah. like the titanic in the yeah. QAnon stuff that the titanic's yeah. involved i love how there's just these uh, random yeah. parts that are involved yeah that's that's the thing about conspiracy theories is, is there's always like this overarching we have to reveal it but in a very secretive way like mm-hmm. when i got when i went onto the flat earth uh rabbit hole every disney movie referenced the f- that the earth was really flat like they had to plant the seeds somehow some way like mm-hmm. they always have to Hide it in plain sight for some reason. Yeah, the the hidden symbols will be their downfall. Yeah, their, yeah. Their, their commitment to giving away all their secrets, like the hubris of like child traffic, and then putting it in like an ad. Yeah. Like, it's it's like, like, like in a spy movie, high stepping at the fifty. When, when they, yeah. <laughs> the boner in Little Mermaid. That's real. Well, that's, 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 a real thing. Thing. that's actually a thing. Yeah, yeah. What Disney it? does hide stuff. That's I don't know they, that they, they do have a lot of sexually explicit shit in mm-hmm. their. For whatever, for, I think I think it's just like an Easter egg, like a funny shit that they mm. did that they didn't think anybody would catch up. Yeah, on. I think if you're an animator, you're like, I'm gonna hide a dick in this movie. <laughs> like, it's kind of funny to do that. Yeah, and then yeah. it becomes like, well, it turns out that he had sixty children in his basement, <laughs> and he was trying to let everybody know without letting. And them I know. have sixty children. Yeah. In my basement. So we've relocated. Now we're in the macrodosing studio down the hallway, um, and want to wrap up, clean up some stuff here on China before we do. I want to remind you guys that today's show is brought to you by our great friends over at 3Chi. We love 3Chi. They've got Delta 8 vapes, gummies, tinctures, and oils. You can make your own homemade edibles out of them. You can use promo code MACRO. Get 5% off your order. 3Chi, you've heard us talk about it on the show. They're the industry leader in Delta 8 THC products. All their products are formulated by, by a biochemist. They're made right here in the USA with USA-grown hemp. 
Three Cheese Delta 8 is a federally legal version of THC. It's a much more functional alternative to marijuana. You get an amazing buzz, great body feel, but you get a clear head. You get less anxiety. You don't get paranoid. It's available online at 3 chicom That's the number 3CHI.com. You can find it at retailers around the country. You have to be 21 to purchase. Remember, it's not CBD. It is psychoactive. It's going to give you buzz, so use it responsibly. Don't take it if you're going to be driving. Also, start out with a smaller dosage than you think that you might need, just in case it hits you a little bit harder. They've got Delta 8 balls, which are available in packs of 5 and 25. Root beer candies. They have Delta 8 root beer taffies. Candies, disposable disposable vapes. Their vapes are ready to go right out of the box, available in 10 strains. Go to 3 chicom Shop for those Delta 8 vapes, gummies, tinctures, and oils. You can make your homemade edibles out of them. Use promo code MACRO at checkout. Receive 5% off your order. Go to 3 chicom Use promo code MACRO at checkout to receive 5% off your order. All right, let's get back to China real quick because I think we had a couple things that people wanted to discuss here. Um, was it Billy? Billy, you had something you wanted to ask? So it turns out uh, China's uh, – there was a recent incident of a corgi – being killed Mm -hmm. uh so basically the corgi's owner tested positive for covid they uh took them to forced quarantine at some state sponsored quarantine house and then uh government workers went into the lady's house and killed her corgi uh with a crowbar so arian is now 100 percent pro china pro ccp yeah (laughs) don't think they have a corgi No. It's a dog. It's a type of dog. It's a very cute oh, dog. It's, it's, dog. it's the queen's dog. Who yep. gives a fuck? Also <laughs> very popular in China. Dogs? Um, yeah, no, I think now they're kind of saying, like, if you get COVID in China, they, they will kill your pet. <laughs> I okay think that's that. a thing I now. feel like that's a solid rule. That's a good way to prevent the spread of China. We, yeah, when the we spread, had, not the spread, the spread of China. China. <laughs> the spread of COVID. Yeah. When, when, we had, when we had Fauci on uh, part of my take, I straight up told him I was like, like flex. I was like, I just lie to people and say that it, that it can be spread to dogs and that your dog can die because people I, I think would take more care if they knew that mm-hmm. their pets could die than if they knew that they could transmit it to other people. I mean, yeah. shout out to China for that rule actually because that will absolutely stop the spread, especially in America. Yeah, and like if you get COVID, your dog dies. Mm-hmm. That's a solid reason to. Cause you like, obviously we don't give a fuck about other people, mm-hmm. but yeah. if your dog dies, yeah, now we're talking. Mm-hmm. Now we're talking. Billy also had a question about the population, well, um, right? I just want to clear one oh, thing up cool. about dogs. I feel like it's a very racist thing for people to be like China eats dogs. There's just one part of China that eats dogs. It's like one city. They have a uh, dog eating festival each year, and there's usually like a bunch of protesters and stuff. But most of China, they treat their dogs just like we do, except they actually like to put clothes on their dog. I I see that a lot. White people do. That. See that here too. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See that here too. But um, <laughs> yeah, I I never tried dog while I was out there. It's not something you like see on the menu. Okay. Yeah. I I don't see the difference actually. So like I'm I'm like, that's my defense with people is like. Why do you hate dogs so much? And I'll be like, what'd you have for lunch? And I'll be like, chicken. I'll be like, well, I, I look at you, chickens like I look at dogs. If you compare it to pigs, because I guess pigs are very smart. They're Super just as smart as dogs. Probably more smarter. Yeah. 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 More smart. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I think that it just all boils down to how cute it is. That's it. If chickens That's demonstrated true, love though. to people, if people grew up with like a chicken that would cuddle with them, right? if you grew up with a chicken that like would uh, would go rescue a child that fell down a well, then people will be like, you know what? Stop eating chickens. I would argue cats are cuter <laughs> than dogs, but I would feel like dogs are more popular than cats. Yeah, cats are. You also run into the crazy cat people, though. That's what I'm saying. People though. they hoard cats. You don't really hear about people hoarding dogs that much. Cats also look That's like true. they taste gross, whereas like a pig looks like it. It tastes pretty good. That's oh, because you know a pig tastes good, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be fair, <laughs> but, uh, pigs yeah. are delicious. <laughs> they are amazing. I think I think Bang is one of the greatest. Mm-hmm foods of all time but is that why there's a lot of cultures that don't eat pigs is it just because they like look kind of gross because then they like roll around and they are their own shit they, they will eat they used to pigs. they used to carry more diseases before we had much better farming practices okay yeah so i think it's all in preparation though as long as you as long as you cook it you can get rid of pretty I, much any bacteria i think it had something to do with tuberculosis okay no idea I, I couldn't tell you i don't know enough about pig cooking. but another question about china for donnie donnie how does you know, way western parts of China. Uh, I know you've been to uh, Tajikistan. I know that's not exactly 
Western China, with that area of the world, it's just not talked about that much. What is your thoughts on what China is doing out there with the Uyghur people, and what is your experience around that? So I used to buy weed off of the Uyghurs in China. Um, and then like all of a sudden my last year there, you started seeing like less and less of them to the point like there used to just be like Uyghurs on certain streets where you like knew you could go to buy weed. And then all of a sudden they were gone. I know like very little about what's going on there. I think like the terrorist attack I was telling, I was telling you guys about, I think that kind of like prompted it. Cause that was, um, the terrorist attack was done by these people called like the East Turkmenistan freedom movement which is like um, one part of Western China wants to be their own country. That's also the most Muslim part. Um, and I think after that, China was just like, cause they have no rules to be like, they still need to treat everybody with basic rights. They just like started to go through to all the Muslim villages and cities out there and just like arrest like everybody, even if they were like not connected to the terrorist attack at all. They were just like, nope, we're just gonna we're just going to crack down on Muslims in general after that. And mm -hmm. like in the U S like after nine 11, we have like rules. We couldn't just like crack down on Muslims here. Like there has to be proof. You formally, you did something yeah. wrong. Yeah. There was a lot more Islam Islamophobia here, but out there they were just like, now we're just going to go to a village and arrest everybody in the village. That's if wild. there was like one person, maybe one person in the village had done something wrong. And what about, what, what about Tibet? Like, we haven't talked about freeing Tibet in a while. We used to have concerts for it. The Beastie Boys used to talk about it all the time. Real quick, the Uyghurs, because like I don't, I didn't hear any context behind who they were. That's why I was looking them up. Like, so the Uyghurs are basically just um, Muslims who live in China. They who are ethnically Chinese. Um, a lot of them, or is it like a lot a, of them look a little Chinese? Some don't really even look Chinese. It kind of uh, looks like, for me, it looks like a mix between like an Asian and like an Indian mix. That's, I mean, I'm definitely probably typecasting, but at this maybe it looks like a mix between a, a Chinese person and a <coughs> Russian person almost. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they all look, they all look different. Cause they originate from what? Central Asia? Yeah. Central Asia. Okay. I think way out there. Yeah. It's just, Cause like when you, as a, an ignorant American, uh, the geography I'm just so unaware yeah, yeah. Of like the people there So mm -hmm. it's like When I hear Uyghurs, Uyghurs I didn't I had no idea What the context I just clarified that Sorry mm -hmm. about that bro no, Muslim sorry. food in China Is great They have these Muslim noodle places Like pretty much where, Wherever you go in China You can find a spot Serving Muslim nudes They're hand pulled It's kind of like uh, She's uh, Which they have here In New York There's like a chain Called like She's Famous Foods mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? I haven't been there No Oh they but got them All noodles. over New York You gotta go It's like it's uh, it tastes exactly like the Muslim food out in China. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. But yeah. what about uh, Tibet? What's going on in Tibet now? We haven't talked about the the Buddhists out there. So yeah, I don't. I wasn't hearing much about Tibet when I was out there too. I do know the Chinese government had like a rule where they were encouraging Han Chinese, which are just like the normal Chinese people, to move there. And like, hey, if you move out there, we'll hook you up with like a free house and stuff. So now, like in Tibet. There's like 20 Han Chinese people per like one Tibetan. Mm. And I think that's why there like haven't really been any protests and stuff because they just like moved so many Chinese people mm -hmm. into Their that version part. Of gentrification. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So like, I don't know. I feel like that ship has like sailed more than what is going on. Like they're just like. What's the backstory behind it? I don't know. I just remember that there used to be Tibetan freedom free Tibet, concerts. Yeah. yeah, that was a big thing. I'm still on the free Tibet movement for the record. So when um, Brad Pitt was in the movie seven years in Tibet. Uh, he was banned from China like for 10 years just for being in that movie. Damn. Cause it had like, it had like a pro Tibet. What an odd, like I would love to get banned though, from yeah. China. That'd I want to yeah. go before well, I do. Maybe this podcast will do it. Well, yeah, no, I, it doesn't even matter what country it is. I just think it's pretty metal to be like, yeah. Hey, I'm banned from an entire country. I mean, I'm not trying to get banned. I'm trying to go back to China, but <laughs> yeah, like, the Winter Olympics are going to be in Beijing this coming mm. this coming February. Barstool s said they would send me, but now they can't because no fans are allowed except for Chinese fans. Um, and so I would have to get a press pass, and it might be it might be kind of tough to get. What's the what's the protocol? Do they tell you your band, or is it just like when you show up? You I mean, yeah, you get a letter. How yeah? How does that work? Yeah. Like, do you, I, how do you get know. notified? I, maybe you just try to get on a plane, and they're like, no. Yeah, maybe you, you apply can't. for a visa, and then it comes back, you're banned. Yeah. 
That'd be, that would be cool to be like, you're not allowed in the country. What's up, Billy? I think they send it to the U.S. Embassy. So they know before you even apply for a visa. Because mm. I actually knew this girl who like was a huge uh, pro-Tibet activist in high school. Who, like, you know when you like do introductionary yeah. stuff in college? She was like, two truths and a lie. And she was like, something, something, I'm banned from China. Wow. She's pretty badass. Yeah, so when I was out there, I was filming vids. I was doing all sorts of crazy shit, sneaking into places, being publicly intoxicated. But, like, I never got in trouble with the government because, like, in none of my videos did I really talk about politics. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like they like a couple rules, like don't sell drugs, <laughs> don't say free Tibet in a video. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I kept – I was – putting out vids for like four years i kept on expecting like to get a knock on my door and being like all right you got to get the fuck out of this country and it never happened i think just because i never i never talked about politics hmm. so um, you're soft you stuck to sports. the only time the police <laughs> you the stuck to sports. only time the police came back is we were doing this like prank video talking to hookers in china <laughs> yeah it's a joke it was a joke just being well, like hey how much no it was a <laughs> just, really just ha -ha, gotcha. it was a very lame joke um Blow job, the slang for it in China is play the flute. So we would go ask a prostitute if they could like play the flute, and then they'd be like, "Yeah, sure, it's gonna cost like one hundred dollars." And then we would take out a real flute and be like, "Okay, can you sh can you show me how Got to play it. the flute?" Yeah, a really lame joke. Pretty but lame, then yeah. one lady was like, "Yeah, follow me," and she took us into a whorehouse, and there was just like tons of band ha half naked band. whores there, <laughs> and we were like, "All right, well, here's the flute. Can you guys show us?" And they're like, "Oh fuck, you gotta go." <laughs> and <laughs> we put out the video and um <laughs> china like they don't they like to pretend that they don't have prostitutes and so like someone like a police officer showed up at my friend's house and uh, made us take the video down and like took my friend to the police station and like he almost had to go to jail um yeah and i think that whorehouse like was closed down and didn't even get a blowjob oh so you snitched yeah I know. I felt very bad. Damn. They were also, they were not asking for a lot of money. For sure. Yeah. Wait, I mean, a hundred, hundred US dollars? No, they were asking for like a hundred RMB, which was like $15. What's the going rate <laughs> here for a blowjob? It's a good uh, question. If you talk to Mantis, <laughs> Wedding it's uh, $7,000. <laughs> oh, Billy, what's the going rate for a blowjob? I have no idea. <laughs> well, they were probably, <laughs> they were probably North Korean women in that. How did you, not, how did you, how did you not come all up with that? Because what? isn't that a thing? Billy's done some reading I've about done some sex trafficking. Yeah, there's tons of stuff about mm. they literally ship North Korean women into China for it's That's sex why I w refuse to do those. Well, I think if you were North Korean, you would rather be a prostitute in China than just the normal person in North Korea. I don't know enough about it, but I do know that like when you go OT, I, I just won't go to those. Because there's a whole bunch of like, you know brothels everywhere you go and there's always people inviting you to them, but i would just refuse because i know that there's so much trafficking going on that mm -hmm. like my conscience would be yeah oh, there's no way i, I do, do that. i do not condone um hiring a, a foreign prostitute yeah. yeah i i think that it should be uh decentralized it, you, we should normalize just if you're talking to a girl in a bar she's like hey i'll go home with you for 200 bucks right mm -hmm. okay yep. I, I'm, I'm for being regulated right because i did OT one time, but she was. They, they give you preferences, right? So my preference was older. I'm a, I'm an older. I love older women, and so but that I, it was just a whole bunch of sketchy shit going on. I don't even know if this can make this podcast, but it was <laughs> it was a wild experience that I'm like, yo, I'm never doing that shit again. What's OT mean? Out of town. Yeah, I once had like a girl walk up to me right when I walked in the bar, and she was just she was all over me, wanted to go home, and I was like, this is too easy. Something's up here. And so, like, after a half hour, I was like, all right, I have to ask because I don't want to take up. I don't want to take this girl home and then find Women out afterwards don't like me. that she was a prostitute and, like, have to pay her. So I asked one of her friends. Well, she was also with, like, a guy who was, like, watching this. And I was like, he's probably, like, the pimp or something. And so I, like, asked him. I was like, wait, is there, are these, like, working girls? And he was like, oh, my God, and, like, ran over and told her and was like, this guy thinks you're a prostitute. And then she oh, got pissed at me. What and a simp. I blew it. I think she just liked me for me. Damn. Damn but man. I fucked it up. Or he thought you were a cop and he was yeah. blowing up the spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were also telling me that in Hong Kong it was on Sunday that if you go out to a certain district, it's all the nannies that are in town that, that live there from overseas. 
Filipinos. Filipinos. Yeah. What yeah. What is that like? It's like House it's just made accepted heaven. that you go to a bar and there is a bunch of Filipino. Oh yeah, like you go to the bars starting at nine in the morning. Like it's the one day of the week that all the Filipino housemates in Hong Kong have off, and they just rage. Like from nine a.m. to <laughs> midnight that night you go to any of the bars in one part of hong kong and it's just filled with filipino maids raging damn it's fun i did leave on sunday so i did not experience that yeah uh, that was that was the but, back i mean there's no way you can do hong kong sevens for two days and then go party with housemaids for absolutely another not. 12 hours nope nope uh do we have any voicemails or is there anything else that you would like to ask about china or discuss about china yeah um i feel like we've just been uh, like as a planet just accepting that there's a billion people in China <laughs> and no one's been pushing back on that. Mm -hmm. Like there's no one in the world accurately counting those people. There's just no fucking like. So you, it's probably we're, more than. Yeah, I think it's way more. Yeah. It's either way more or about half. Like it's, there's no way it's because it's been a billion nah, flat. A motherfuckers That's what there. I mean. I, I agree. I think it's probably yeah. way more. Yeah. But like there's no one who's counting that. There's no way that they could do that census like accurately. There's just no fucking chance. Like, I, it's not, I think it's, all of it's an estimation. I don't think they. I think right now, what is the? It's like seven point five or eight billion is, yeah. is the is the going rate right now. Um, I, I don't know, man. There's a lot of motherfuckers over there, though. That's what I mean. I think yeah. it could be like two billion. Like, yeah, it's, I don't, it's possible. I would guess on the other side, actually. I, I would think like China is overestimating really to make people afraid of them mm -hmm. because it's like, hey, we got all the manpower in the world. Just tries. Mm, like, better not. I like it. Well, I do know they recently got rid of the one child policy. Mm -hmm. So now you can have more kids. And I think it was because there were just like too many old people in China, but not enough young people because they've had the one child policy for the last like 50 years or something. So now they're like, we need more young people to keep the economy going. So now you can have two What's kids. But um... And I guess people really aren't doing it now they're like no mm -hmm. it's it's way too expensive to have two kids i was i'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna stick with one was that a part of the the whole COVID thing too was that the disease was developed by the chinese government to kill off the old people because there's too oh, many. oh yeah them. it was going to be too expensive to take care of all of them mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. when they That's all i, I mean they i don't believe smoke shit, cigarettes yeah. too so yeah gonna or, be a lot of lung hoons, cancer there. what did you call them hoons, hoons yeah hoons, hoons. yeah yeah, I mean, they smoke the like the strongest cigarettes I've had in my life. That's what makes me mad, bro. Is like you'll see somebody who smoked cigarettes for like ten years or something, and they get cancer, and you'll see like this ninety-year-old who smoked every day since they was fucking mm -hmm. twelve and drink a, a cup of whiskey, and like this is my secret. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this is just weird. This whole body shit is weird. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. Lucky. It's kind of weird how COVID nineteen is just doing a lot of great for China and all their long-term plans. Billy, I think you're a China COVID. Truther. What? Well, just just ask the, the lab question. league dabbles. The lab <laughs> league now just ask the a truther in that it is the truth. A lot <laughs> so of very th smart people are now saying the lab leak theory could be true. Mm -hmm. I don't know enough about it. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm interested, but it, uh, it definitely could be true. Anything. Well, it's could looking be true. like yeah. likely. It's looking like well, the, I mean, the lab in Wuhan they were researching bat coronaviruses yeah and that's what and it ended up being a bat coronavirus john stewart explained yeah. it best when he's like oh there's been a, an outbreak of chocolatey goodness in hershey pennsylvania wonder where that came from yeah <laughs> like this just happened to take place where the the coronavirus super secret lab is but i don't think I mean, that's the I'm, i don't think anybody would argue that that's not possible i think people argue the fact that it was like intentional oh, oh, yeah like yeah true. behind that's, yeah. it is that that's where i feel like it gets nefarious the whole it came from the lab let's yeah it's pr probably yes. a thing maybe i don't know enough about it i don't know shit about viruses but the intent that we have this devised this plan to depopulate that i don't think that's a thing mm -hmm. it, well it was either that or billy you were into the pangolin theory for a while right the penguin theory penguin. no so so the most trafficked uh, animal for you know traditional Chinese medicine is something called the pangolin, which is basically an African armadillo. Uh, if you look it up, it looks like uh, the Pokemon Sand Shrew. Um, <laughs> so that oh shit, it does. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking ball. So they bro. they take their scales and they grind it up and then they think that it gives you boners. Oh okay. Well, like most of the stuff. I like this better than dogs. So yeah. yeah, they say that the pangolin got COVID, which from a bat in a in a uh, wet market and spread it. it. Got it. All mm -hmm. right. Well, um, if we have nothing else on China, Coley's got guess, one more thing. Yeah, yeah I think there's one more thing just because it's recent. 
Uh, and it, caught, it pissed a lot of people off here, and I think it's weird that it pissed people off here. Uh, a movie just came out over in China. You know what I'm talking about already? The the war movie? Friends, the movie. I don't know if I've seen it. Uh, well, whether or not you saw Shang-Chi? it. Shang-Chi? Is that... No. <laughs> there was a, a war movie that came out. Do you remember what it's called, Billy? Is it the one with the Americans as the bad guys? Yeah. Where they uh, they go over and they have like a giant victory over America and they're like, oh, this is Chinese propaganda. I'm shocked you haven't heard of this. This was like making news over here. Wait, so is it a movie based on a real war? Are I there, think it was. Are there, wasn't it? Well, when did ever? I mean, like it, the China and the U.S. have been have been like allies. Yeah, like World War Two, we had we had China's back the whole time. We were the like, battle at Lake Shenzhen. Um, and so when. When was it supposed to take place? That part I haven't. Yeah, I can't remember. I, when. I didn't hear about I that. I assumed you had heard about this because oh, it's, it's been the number one movie in China for like a month. Right? Okay, so it's uh, it the movie depicts the story of Chinese soldiers defeating American troops despite great odds at the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir during the Korean War. Ah, yes, that was the one time mm-hmm. we went to war with communist China. Yeah, yeah. So it's been pissing people off here. But yeah. what? Godzilla. We put out, we put out these movies literally all the time. Like, yeah. yeah, like <laughs> no one here. How like, dare this you is chronicle American this history? Propaganda. <laughs> yeah, like this is just uh-huh. a historical movie, and people in China love it because it, it like happens. there should absolutely yeah. be a movie about Vietnam. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. But, but it's like that's a, not pro-America. I think it's just very funny that people here are just like, how dare they? Yeah. Right. Like well, it, it's like no, they, we've they, never that, lost. Like it's anything. not propaganda. It's just yeah. his, his, Like it, people have a real big problem with history. In yeah. This, in this country. So, so my grandfather, as I mentioned, he he was in China for a really long time, and he kept a very detailed diary about everything that he did while he was there, chronicling like all the different towns he went to, the things that he saw, That's fire. his life, where he like I, it's actually crazy the stuff that he was he was getting in and out of. Like he should be long dead. I think the Japanese had like a. A massive bounty on his head as wow. the American that was over there so, helping him out. He so, would have been assassinated. yes, he would have been assassinated <laughs> for sure. So, it happened like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. The government of China wanted to option my grandfather's movie or diary into a movie. And so, they wanted to pay us money for it. And they were going to have my family like pr- help produce the movie. But they wanted to change a lot of the stuff about his life to make it more pro China and more pro specifically the communist party mm. of China cuz he was helping them out some but he was also helping out the nationalists he was basically helping out the chinese against the japanese okay. didn't matter what party you were from right. and so they wanted to change a lot of stuff about what he did over there to make it more pro ccp mm. and pro like okay this is uh, an american that realized what a great idea the communists over in china had and wanted to help them out in their battle. And so we declined. We stopped all the pre-production of what the movie. What was the bread talking about, though? The bread wasn't that good, oh. to be fair. I, I don't want to make my family out to be like heroes turning down <laughs> like $20 million yeah, or I'm whatever. <laughs> but they did. They like flew my mom over there and my aunt over there and had them travel around the country to all the sites that he was at. And the government was like taking care of him, spending like thousands of dollars on each dinner with him, whining and dying, all that, that shit. I wish I had gone over there for yeah, that trip. It I feel like you guys fumbled this. I think that <laughs> we might have. I think you need to go back to the renegotiation table. And, I, I, I'll and say be it right as now. communist as you want. Yeah. Like make it as pro communist as I'll say possible. it right now. If you want to, China, if you're listening, if you want to re engage me in these conversations, I will listen. I will listen to what you have to say. And I am their officially the family agent. Yes, so yes. Fly me out as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get the whole podcast involved in it for sure. If you want right. to do us, give us a tour of China. I'll stay. Thanks. For the, <laughs> for the right price, we can be bargained with. But they definitely did want to change shit and make it into a big communist propaganda movie. Yeah. But and then it would be still cool to be like, oh, I guess my family's being used as Ch- like Chinese communist propaganda. Still, and there's a movie. It's, it's a big flex, though. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah, so um yeah, I'm 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 willing to listen to any offers mm-hmm. they have. Who made the yeah. calls like no, we're not going to defile well, this diary. They did get a free vacation out of it. Yeah, yeah they got the vacation. It was it was my my family, my dad, my mom, my aunt and then their close family friend whose parents were also overseas with my grandfather at the time. Mm-hmm. That he, this guy probably knows the story way better than my own family does because he, he I think he was actually in China for a little bit when it was happening. Uh, but it was like a, a big group of us were like, well, you don't think that this really, this isn't above board. Mm-hmm. So we're going to back out of, the, of this engagement right now. I, I think they also wanted to change, they wanted to change uh, his background to being a Chinese American mm-hmm. that went overseas 
and was oh, then like sense. falling back in love with their home country because mm. of the glory of the Communist Party. I, I think that was one of the big little, sticking points. Well, easier than getting a white guy to act. Exactly. Like, like yeah. We were Except for cheaper. Earlier. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't hate that. Uh, so we'll see if we'll see if that movie ever comes to fruition. I don't think that it will, but the diary is really interesting. To Have y'all ever pitched it to any American film company? No, no. I'm also willing to do that. Yeah, highest bidder at this point. Hey, we'll make them Japanese too if you, if they want to come this in is with a, a big this offer. Is a gr- this is the this is <laughs> actually the Japanese were just defending themselves. Let's uh, here's a great synergy. Uh, LeBron has a film production company. Yeah, Spring Hill Suites. Maybe you guys. Oh. Yeah, well, he's kind of pro China. Mm-hmm. You can kind of find a good middle ground there. We'll make this work, LeBron. Give me a call. You know where to find me. <laughs> LeBron's just pro communism in general. Holy shit! I think he's pro money. Yeah, I think I he can't imagine. He it. likes money for himself. He doesn't want to turn the faucet off. That's, I agree with that's that. what I think it all comes I down to. He's a capitalist, like a motherfucker. How could you yeah. say LeBron is a communist? He you is, you is made a tens of millions of dollars playing sports. You're not a capitalist. I am not a capitalist, but I have was raised in an entirely different household than LeBron. Like, we were politically aware at a very young age. And so, I'm not a capitalist. LeBron is a He, to this day, is making capitalist moves. I am actively working against capitalist moves. I do not believe in private ownership, owning the means of production. I don't believe it's healthy. Anti-capitalist. I know. There we go. All right, uh, let's get some voicemails. Donnie, you have one more thing? Uh, Well, I was just going to wrap it up. Like, the one worrying thing is that China doesn't seem to be reopening its borders anytime soon. So there's not as many Westerners out there. And, like, you know, they obviously control the narrative when it comes to the media. So it's like if, like, all day on the news they're talking about, like, how bad the U.S. is. And obviously our news isn't very uh, pro-China either. That it's, like, worrisome that it's just going to, like, get us it's going to get the common people in both countries disliking each other even more and more which the governments are going to be supporting that's what they want yeah yeah and like you could see it you know 10 20 years down the line like leading to an actual conflict so you do I, think that's a real probability i don't i don't think i don't think we would ever go to war with them because we're like so connected like we need so much from china and stuff like that but how much but, do they need from they us, I, us? I, I, what would they go to war with us yeah, it's like, I I don't know, but I just know it's worrisome because now, like, when there's not a lot of foreigners in China, they're trying to get rid of most of their Western influence that it's like, it looks like the future isn't better for U.S.-China relations. Like, as of now, it seems like in five years, the relationship will only be worse as opposed to better. The thing that they do that we fuck up here is they really, for whatever reason, they prioritize, like, math and science and education way more than than we do like i feel like what we prioritize here is entertainment yeah that's our biggest export yeah. i would say like pop culture is yeah. america's biggest yeah. like yeah when it comes to just actual goods we don't we don't make that much anymore mm, but just for the record the chinese people and the american people have a lot more in common yes than they do apart. they do it's just the government yes so i know a lot of people are afraid of china but the average Chinese person, I think you would get along with. They're great people. Mm-hmm. I think it goes, yeah. goes across the board. Y'all are right. Like, yep. We have yeah. so much, you know, overhead beef with other countries that, like, the average, like, you don't give a fuck about them and they don't give a fuck about us in that way to go to war with people. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Facts. All right. Facts. Before we get to voicemails, they're presented by Helix Sleep. They love Helix mattresses. Mattresses. It's the key to a sound night's sleep. It's a key to feeling good in the morning. It's a key to being productive during your day. If you're sleeping on a comfortable mattress, it makes all the difference in the world. I actually recently, I switched my mattress up when I started getting into back problems for the first time. And changing your mattress, it can change the entire way you look at the world. I realized I needed to sleep on a slightly more firm mattress. Helix Sleep hooked it up. Now I don't have any back problems whatsoever. I started doing stretches, started doing doing back strengthening exercises, but also most importantly, I started sleeping on a different mattress. Feel like a different person and Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete. It matches your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. Everyone's unique, Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. If you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. Best of all, they have a 10-year warranty. 10 years. It's a long time. You get to try it out for 100 nights, risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. 
Helix even has financing options, flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix has mattresses with specialized cooling technology, too. If you and your family can never agree on the temperature of the thermostat, maybe switch up the mattress. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. It was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. Over 12,000 five-star reviews, over 1 billion hours slept on Helix mattresses. 1 billion hours on Helix mattresses. Helix is offering up to 200 bucks off all mattress orders, $200 off, and you get two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash dose. You guys know how much pillows cost? Pillows are super expensive. Yeah, they really are. I bought pillows like four years ago. I was checking out. Turns out I was spending $300 on pillows. and I, I didn't know it was going to cost that much, so I felt ashamed to be like, no, let me get the cheaper model of pillows. Pillows are expensive. They're giving you two free free pillows with your order for our listeners when you go to helixsleep.com slash dose plus $200 off all mattress orders. Helixsleep.com slash dose up to 200 bucks off and two free pillows. All right, voicemails. Fun fact. A billion hours is... Hundred no no, yeah, one hundred fourteen thousand one hundred fifty five calendar years. That's a shitload of years. That's a lot of years. All slept on Helix mattresses. <laughs> How about that? Are we ready for voicemails? Let's ready do it. it. Okay. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Stan from Chicago. I had a question. So, if you had to get someone's face tattooed on you. Who would it be? The fuck? Billy, you don't get an answer. You have to get that frog drawing tattooed across your back. Love you guys. <laughs> have a great one. Love the podcast. Quick fun fact. That frog drawing is actually a s- NFT available for you to buy <laughs> on OpenSea. There's some dude going in on me in my Twitter mentions about you don't know what the fuck you're talking about with NFTs. It's more than a screenshot. Try screenshotting your bank account and actually, I was like, bro, I don't give a fuck like that. I was just asking how to, like, I don't understand this shit. Like, it makes no sense to me. It's inflation proof. I don't, I don't get I NFTs. Don't I just know that people that believe in NFTs are just they're, psycho about they're like how real Bitcoin they are. people. They're like, they're, matter of fact, they're the same people. They're the same they're, people. Oh, yeah, no, they're in both. The Venn diagram. Yeah, yeah. It's a circle. Okay. One circle, circle. Ah, that makes more sense now because when I said that shit about Bitcoins, I had a whole bunch of big bros in my fucking, no, you don't know. All right, fam, I don't. But. We can have Jack Mac give us a lesson because he's a crypto bro. Oh, yeah, he's really That's into it. Tommy Smokes. Yeah. Open C, Billy betting. Football. People are bidding on this thing. The Grizzly Bear drawing is also up for grabs. On the, on the frog drawing? How much is it up to? What's it going for? $137. This is Listen, Billy, I hope you get a million dollars for this oh, shit. Dude, I'm hoping. But if you are bidding on this, if you, I don't know if you can don't zoom make in on my them. face. Don't make fun if you are bidding on this, you're a fucking they, moron. Oh, there, it's a better investment than a lot of stuff it right now. It is not. No, yes, it is. It is not. But hey, to each his own. To each his own. And I, I hope you enjoy your frog That's screenshot. That's why I love capitalism, Arian. If somebody wants to pay $140 for Billy's frog drawing, damn it. Go for it. You know? <laughs> you live your life. Fig T's getting, like, teary-eyed thinking about it. I think it's insane, <laughs> but, like, go for no, it. I get it. It's fucking wild. Hey, I mean, look. Someone tweeted me last night. $37, someone, dog. Someone tweeted me some sort of uh, crypto last No, not crypto. The NFT last night. And they were like, oh, you should get in now. The the floor is super low. It's super affordable. And I was just like, let me see what, like, let me just check. It's like $20,000. Actually, like, this is the affordable one? You know what who are you talking had, about? You know who had N- yeah, N- who's into NFTs now? The guy who, uh, who's the NBA, the GM for the Houston Rockets who called out. Maury? Yeah, Maury. Really? Maury's into the NFTs. I was looking at his Twitter to try to find his tweet. He's into NFTs. I just don't get it, man. I, it, some shit's just not for me. I got to talk about this. Cause, so Billy posted the it on Twitter. He said he's dropping some NFTs. And the, <laughs> and the top comment is, too late, I already own it. And someone screenshotted it and made it their own NFT. <laughs> and they're selling it, too. Oh, I love that. The screenshot is now an NFT? It's That's not beautiful. No, the, I told them to delete that. Counterfeit, <laughs> counterfeit that shit. I love no, it. No, honestly, I I mean, it's just like, you don't have to, really, I have nothing to lose by is doing Is it legal this. property? Correct. Like, is, is that yeah, the thing correct. about, like, can, so if, can somebody screenshot my NFT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's not the but same But you don't own it. NFT. The way they explain it is Yes, like, it is, though. The way they explain <laughs> it is like baseball cards. Like, you could 
have a reprint of a baseball card that's not worth anything. But then if you have a Honus Wagner baseball card, it's worth two million. So it's ba- it's just it's just you have this group of people on the playground that's way out there to the left, past the monkey bars, and they just have their own little club and currency and they're changing it's worth something because people just gotcha. agree that it is yeah, yeah, right. that's which is most everything. things gotcha. yeah, yeah right yeah. gotcha also these people have all the bitcoin money so no, I mean, correct you can't buy it with money you yeah oh you have to buy it with bitcoin ethereum, yeah so i'm right? just getting the bitcoin like hold on is it with bitcoin or is it another crypto it's ethereum right ethereum, ethereum. Yeah. but that's oh my god which you can only buy with money no, i just right. wanna i just wanna <laughs> You ever seen you ever seen a uh, forty year old virgin where uh, Jonah Hill's in the store and he's trying to buy those the high hill fish, fish boots yep. and he's like I just want to she's like yeah you can't like that's that's how I feel about NFTs we, and crypto. I just want to buy shit you, y'all making it so difficult we were talking earlier about what to do for our mini episode this week can it just be Arian and Jack Mac discussing Bitcoin oh, and I NFTs I, I, Jack Mac might get thrown through that window right there <laughs> if that's longer than twenty minutes I'm down for it I'm not down to throw him I'm not I'm a nonviolent guy also if these NFTs do well I found my Latin notebook with tons of crazy tons of yes, yes. like <laughs> just... i'm talking i'm talking woolly mammoths i'm talking saber-toothed tigers oh, like creatures the, the billy fan club no. is salivating right yeah, now no. billy was mining <laughs> nfts in <Latin laughs> <Labs. I'm> <laughs> dude if, if these start to take off i have a whole more unique collectible one i can't wait till billy <laughs> buys this what company do you mean if they take off somebody just paid a hundred and thirty seven dollars for if a you're fucking making bucks a pop, you need to sell all of these i know well the thing is it was through so I had to wake up at 4 a.m. to get the cheapest mining price this morning. <laughs> so it actually cost me $200 You're lying. to no, no no to be able to sell them in the beginning. You didn't mention that. You have to, right. You have so to you're still in the hole. You're in the red right now. $63. Yeah, you're you're right in now. you're in the hole right. Right, now. but since I listed it at $100 each and the bidding <laughs> stops in a, a week so People can listen to this and go bid on it if they want to. So nice plug. I'm gonna be putting an NFT on sale too, so <laughs> bid on mine. I don't even. What's your NFT? NFT? Stevie Mittens. It's uh, a picture I draw. It's it's actually a penis, but it looks like a guy uh, wearing snow pants and mittens. I like it. I'm and in a snow cap. I'll give you twenty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what about? Hey. Can you put pictures of feet? Can you do pictures? Of I I will hundred percent sell foot pick NFT. I don't know. I think you, you know, back out of that one too. You backed out of the OnlyFans is yeah. basically yeah. But but if you get the turns out you get the bidding going, these guys are going nuts. These guys are going nuts. <laughs> if I start to make these guys bid, that only one of these foot freaks can get the fucking picture. Yeah, don't talk, call them foot talk freaks. Down call, on them. Yeah. Call, them, call them call them people who have foot fetishes. Damn, That's what really? you want to do to your audience? Yeah, like you really fucking. <laughs> These fucking bozos. Right yeah. yeah. I'm going no, to these DC. freaks. I'm going to get them going. <laughs> All right, so that dude's question was, um, yeah, who, whose face would you get tattooed? Whose face would you get oh tattooed? Oh, my God. That's uh, a good question. I don't know. Do they have to be on the show or just any person? No, just any person. Any person. Any person ever. I would probably say two of my favorite human beings ever, um, one for who he is and one for what he did. Um, I, I wouldn't... If I had to do this, Einstein or Cornell West. One not of those Kobe? No, 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 not Kobe on the face. What about your children? Uh, no. Wait, it, a, is it a face tattoo? I don't know, I don't know how good a human they're going to be. No, it can be, it can be anywhere on your body. I don't know how good a human they're going to be yet. Like, Cornell West <laughs> and Einstein did that shit. No, it's what, just if, a what if I tattoo my son and he's like an axe murderer? I, like, I can't yeah. It feels like something that. you can control, no? No. Fuck no. You never know. That's the thing about kids is like you could be the best parent in the world. Like, if they're a piece of shit, they're a piece of shit. It is what it is. A blank would be a pretty cool tattoo. Environment so. TR. versus... Nurture versus environment. Yeah, nurture. Mm-hmm. Nature versus nature. Nature. Yeah, that, 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 that balance. And all my kids are amazing as, as of right now. Deshaun Stevenson had uh, Abe Lincoln tattoo yeah, on his sure neck. Did. Every Why? now and again, I'll bring up Deshaun Stevenson's name, and then somebody will be like, hey, man, you're talking about Lance Stevenson. I'm like, no, no it's just two different Stevensons that had real beef with LeBron James. Yes. The two biggest heels to LeBron James, actually three, would be uh, Deshaun Stevenson, Lance Stevenson, and Big T. Those are the three oh, yeah. people he has the most people. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep that company. I was going to say yeah. Portnoy, but... I was going to say Delonte yeah. West. Um, oh, Delonte. You going to get him tattooed? Oh, you're talking about no, people. I, oh, yeah. I, Charlie <laughs> Red, so I don't, I don't hate it. Um, I'm trying to think of a good face. I just had one. Oh, I was thinking of Deshaun. Deshaun Stevenson got that tattoo backwards, much like an ambulance would get ambulance backwards because he thought that's how other people would see it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> also, a great... Skip Bayless take. 
uh, old school Skip Bayless, he said Deshaun Stevenson was going to be the next Michael Jordan. Did he really? Yeah. I that forgot about that. high school draft profile. Just because he, like, Le- Skip Bayless loved how much he antagonized LeBron. No, well, this was, it was like he was seeing in the Matrix. Like, this was well before LeBron was even, like, conceptualized in Skip's mind. Damn. Yeah, I don't know. Getting a, getting a tattoo of somebody else's face on your body. A lot of people do it, though. Oh, yeah. it's dumb. This is just if we had to. Maybe, like, I don't know, maybe a piece of art. Maybe, like, the Mona Lisa. But, like, have her, you know, smile a little bit more. Overrated. Look a little nicer. Yeah. Miley Cyrus? Well, yeah, maybe Miley. Mm. <laughs> I was once at the gym in China, and a Chinese guy had Hitler's face tattooed on his shoulder. That's wild. It was wild, because, like, Chinese people don't like the Nazis in general. I, I didn't know if he, like, knew exactly who it was, but... Yeah. Very awkward. I think you have to know who. Hit yeah, him. are you I, sure? I think he knew. That would be I such a knew. terrible are you coincidence. Sure? It wasn't Charlie Chaplin. No, it was. That's it was a, Hitler. He was, was like, he was a, wearing the outfit and everything. And then, uh, oh, he had a swastika. I think he him. noticed me staring at it, and then like put on a, a long sleeve shirt. Uh, but That's yeah, actually a wild. <laughs> there's a, there's this picture of, of like, calls it a ruckus. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody in China with um, a tattoo that said water in English. You know how like yeah, you know yeah, people yeah. here just get like mm-hmm. water or love and it's just like just fuck out of here. <laughs> All right, uh, Mad Dog, you got anybody? My first answer is Harry Styles, but I feel <laughs> like <sighs> yeah, I'm just gonna go with Harry Styles. Okay. No, first okay. answer is the easy answer. Who's Harry Styles? What? I said, who's Harry Styles? <laughs> he <laughs> is. He was in Boom? the yeah. British pop band One Direction. He is now a solo artist pushing the boundaries of pop music. Um, pushing the boundaries. Is he paying you for this? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I love him. You're reading that straight <laughs> off. Let me just uh, press yeah. release page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One Direction. He's I've heard of One he's Direction. Like, yeah. He's like. <laughs> he's a. He's a. He's a. He's a really famous singer, Harry especially Styles. in my demographic of young white women. That's true. Uh, I saw him I'm twice in concert the last month. If I've ever seen him. Yeah, fuck it. I get Harry oh, Styles. Oh, okay. I got. I, I seen this picture of him. Yeah, he was in. He a wore dress. a dress on yeah, Vogue. Yeah, I seen yeah. that. Yeah. He's the one that Candace Owens said bring back manly men. He's yes. that people dude. Lost that their shit. That's shit. when I can't take people like that seriously. When that bothers people, like I can't take anything you take. Yeah, like, say bro, seriously. wear a dress, bro. What I got to do yeah. with you? Mm-hmm. Wear a dress, bro. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with him. He's it also just, just has to be pretty. the face of the person, or can I get like a whole person? Get a if you whole, want to go hard, go hard. Get a whole person. That's though. what I mean. I might get Young Thug when he was wearing the dress, and he looked like fire. Uh, when he <laughs> the, looked like the fucking uh, the, um, Tekken character. Yeah. What the fuck was it? Raiden. Yeah. Yeah. What was, what was the name of that album? Oh. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. I think at some point I said actually, if so, the whole thing going on right now with the Raiders and the NFL and the Washington Football Team is Mark Davis is pissed off at Roger Goodell. Because Goodell selectively leaked allegedly those emails from John Gruden, which then got John Gruden fired. Mm. So now Mark Davis is suing the NFL to get the rest of them released. But Gruden was suing. Yeah, Gruden. Sorry, Gruden is suing the NFL for wrongful termination of his job. Mm. Mark Davis is thinking about filing a lawsuit against the NFL for selectively leaking those, and part of the outcome of that lawsuit would be the rest of the emails would have to get released. In which case, I'm sure you could find some shit in there that would get Dan Snyder removed from owning the Washington football team. Damn. I believe I said, as a matter of public record, that if that happened, I would get Mark Davis's face tattooed on my body, which that would be an all-time tattoo. I don't know if you, you know what Mark Davis looks like. Uh, he's doing he like a big baby, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a, a like that very, old Mad TV character. Yeah, like, yeah. like a happy baby, like a, 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 a life-size si- life David Letterman baby. Yeah. Yeah, I seen him. I yeah. would, uh, I would get. Yeah. I think I've said that I would get his face tattooed. Would you have him like eating PF Changs or getting his hair cut? Maybe have him doing something. I think it would just be him in that classic <laughs> like sit down position where he's wearing the white suit. Backpack. Yeah, maybe the backpack. Yeah, backpack. put a backpack on him. Fire. I also have Wario. I don't know if that counts. Oh, that counts. Yeah, Wario's a person. <laughs> he's my friend. Yeah, he, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what about you, Big T? Um, I would love to do Ted Cruz. World Series MVP Jorge Soler, but the real answer would be George Washington because I, I Cause you love the, him very much, but I also money. think that would be a good conversation piece. Mm-hmm. Where would you get it? How would that conversation I don't go? Know. She, like, a shoulder, like like the no the, the face. Other guy, he said maybe? face tattoo on the face. No, it's no face of tattoo. someone. It's oh, face, a face tattoo. tattoo. Yeah. It can go anywhere on your yeah. body. I think oh, so. Maybe that, like thigh. Oh, Big T, let's role play. Uh huh. Because you said it'd be a good conversation starter. Right. Hey, what's that tattoo of? Oh, it's George Washington. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, no, he was he was a cool guy. He was okay, I gotta did a go. lot of cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is your thigh exposed? <laughs> I don't know. Sir, this is know. a Denny's, please. <laughs> no, don't disrespect me like that. I'd never go to fucking Denny's. I'm wearing a Waffle House sw- hoodie right now. That's yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. I'm with you on the Waffle House thing too. Yeah. Fire. Mm-hmm. All right, anybody else? Face tattoos? I thought it was I thought we were getting it on our face. That's embarrassing. That's yeah, face thinking. tattoo That's on your face. Kobe. Yeah, you don't need to get Kobe on your face. I mean still I like the Cornell West. Yeah. Yeah. I think an Einstein tattoo would be cool too. That'd be actually cool too, yeah. Avery? Oh no. I was I, I listened to the question wrong i was gonna say like the odell catch but he's like catching my eyeball i thought we had to like get it on my face, face. Right? Me too. Yeah, I yeah. That too, yeah. what do you think about it's the whole fire. the whole odell beckham situation area what uh what is the whole so he he asked to be released from the cleveland browns Thank because God. he was mad that yeah. he wasn't it getting enough well catches so but he's Cole, like, he <laughs> hasn't played well when he's been in cleveland he hasn't he's mad that he's not getting enough <laughs> targets but the Browns are like objectively a better team when Odell is not on the yeah. field for them. Mm-hmm. Minus I, Sunday, but we're not talking about that. Minus the Sunday, yeah. Not counting this most recent game. Mm-hmm. But uh, then there was a big movement like LeBron got behind it too. It was like free Odell, let Odell some, go somewhere <laughs> else. I just feel like when I've watched him on the field recently, he, he's not the same Odell that he was before the injuries when right. he was on the Giants. Right. Uh, but yeah, he did get released and he got signed by, by the Rams. Right. I, I think... Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of the times players, if they're unhappy, it, it, it affects their play. He is an obvious, you know, amazing talent. I think that, um, I mean, who, who knows as to why he's not playing up to his capabilities. There's a whole bunch of variables that go into football um, production. And so, there's, there's, I mean, there's, 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 there's no telling. I think if a player is happy, like he seems like an L.A. or New York market kind of guy anyway. Mm-hmm. Like he don't need to be in Cleveland. Yeah. And so I think it's better for ticket sales. It's better for football. If he's like, he's like, he would be great on the Cowboys too, right? Just a drama filled. And I'm not saying he's drama filled, but just it gives you something to talk about. Cowboys are always in the news, whether they're terrible or not terrible. Yeah. And so if you have a market like L.A. or New York or Dallas or something like that, then that that, that that's who those kind of players. I mean, he's he's like a. I don't want to say he's an icon as far as like shit he's done, but it's like he has the iconic presence, right? Mm-hmm. He has that like he's box office. Yeah, he, he just sell, he market. sells tickets. People want to see him. People want to see how he's doing. So get him in a market like that and and let him have an off season where he can gel and mold with the team. I'm I'm, I'm sure he'll produce. Some yeah. say Cleveland is the L. A. of the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Nobody says that actually. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, it's not in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that statement too. <laughs> oh, we got another voicemail? Yeah. Hey, uh, my name is Neil calling from PA. What's going on, Macrodosen Boys and Mad Dog? Um, I was just calling to see, uh, you know, with evolution, what do you think the first thing we'll see in like human evolution? Like, you know how some people have that little ligament in their hand and some people don't? Like, when do you think, or what do you think will be, like, the first thing that's, I guess, pronounced that we'll see in human evolution? Love the pod. Hope to hear from you guys, too. Uh, that's a I, great question. I think I know the answer. I think we're going to start seeing stronger pinkies, especially the top side of your pinkies, mm. because people use them to rest their phones on phone there mm. so often. In, in fact, we have a coworker named Frankie that they think, like, so he has a, a nerve issue in his elbow. And the doctor told him, like, a lot of that is because you rest your phone on the top of your pinky all the time. And when you press down on that, it provides a lot of stress on that ulnar nerve that runs up. Like, it creates the funny bone. That's the nerve that they're talking about. (laughs) And so so he's like, his nerve got fucked up because he was using his phone too much and resting it on there. You're going to see, like, people are going to be more effective at swiping on Tinder if they have a stronger like top side of their pinky mm. and in that case they're going to they're going to reproduce more often than everybody else next thing you know more kids are going to be born that have that same modification mm. boom i, like I actually one. i got to push back cuz Yo, evolution push back? i'm pushing back evolution has to do with more traits that get people killed disappear so you got to think that's not necessarily true no because then the other traits if something so basically in order the first change we're going to see is something that kills people being eliminated from the population before they're at a like, reproducing age. Like the weakest link. Okay, right. so so no, no, in this scenario, that, it's not, no. the people that have the most sex are actually going to be eliminated because all the incels are going to track them down and kill them first. 
Good luck, fucker. No, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I think you're thinking about it wrong. Is it's 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 an adaptation to the to the environment. Right. So it's not it's not it's not you don't evolve to not die. You evolve to survive. Right. It's just through. So or you can also evolve to not die. Natural. That's what I'm either way. Sure, but it, the 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 goal is survival, right? So I guess I guess it's it's kind of one and the same. But I think you're you're thinking of it in a in a in like a negative way rather than a positive way. But, uh, like that would be a positive trait. But I, the thing I, is, so, so no one's gonna die if their pinky's not strong enough. No, that, but it, it's it's just it's just an ad, it be, not every trait that is evolved or or, or non random mutation is is just for survival. Sometimes it's just an adaptation to the environment. I actually think it's going to be addictive personalities are going to be, are going to go away. away yeah. <laughs> no, because people who can handle their booze. No, maybe that's going to become more prominent. No, no, people cuz think about it, look at the population. What is killing young people the most? Drugs. Drugs. Fentanyl. Fentanyl. Sure. So people who have addictive personalities like to use different so those people who get have more dangerous tendencies into getting into those things whatever psychological trait i think that's going to be eliminated before anything else does i see i think i think it's not going to be anything um uh natural i actually think our next step in evolution tangibly is like an integration with technology like a real 100%, elect yeah. electric um fusion with our, our anatomy like somehow somewhere like on some like we really all like you figure out a way to program the internet in your brain or some shit like that like it sounds like some super sci-fi shit but i think mm. that's how we take our species to interstellar which i'm a fan of what about um losing pubic hair because it doesn't really serve that much of a purpose now could you see humans just being completely pubeless and Five hundred thousand years. I could see that. It would I make see sense, that. Actually. I see that very frequently on the internet. In general, yeah. Too. Yeah. It actually makes a lot of sense because I mean, pretty much everybody I know shaves it. So manscape. But manscaped. that's not how. <laughs> that's not how like evolution <laughs> happens though. That well, then, is how evolution. Then, happens. then, then how mean? did humans like? Because obviously you compare us to apes. We have a lot less hair. Bro, hold on. Why, like, why did it help us to just have less hair? Because we developed clothing. Well, now we have. Well, this this is what I'm saying. So, you, what you're what you're positing is that we cannot uh, change the the course of evolution, which is literally why all you fuckers out there like dogs, because we changed wolves' evolution. We changed right, because that. We, we, we manipulated that because we selectively chose the ones. Yes, and what he's saying is you can selectively choose what our bodies would have on it and grow naturally. You you can't. I'm I'm not saying 100 percent it's gonna happen. I'm saying I can see that being a trait because there's no use for there's no survival mechanism for pubic hair. Right, but people who are naturally very hairy who shave are still gonna pass down their hairy trait to their kids. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of how evolution happens is 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 non-random genetic mutation. So there could be a mutation is what is what he's saying. Like it could just so happen that yeah. it doesn't serve us anymore as a, as a, as, so, a, as yeah. a species to have that down. But that 10 minutes of people shaving versus people who don't have to shave, I don't think will be, cause such a big difference Assertion. in I think there's going to be a random mutation where a girl's going to be born without pubes. Everyone is going to want to have sex with her and so she'll pass down her trait more. It could be a man too. If you're the born the first pubeless guy, I don't know. Would that make a lot of girls want to fuck you? I, I don't think know. that. I think I, maybe I, not. I, to I, be like, I, this I guy is a baby cock. Right though, I think that if you can you can look at the short term and see what's killing off the most people, and be like, okay, that genetic modification is going to be in the gene pool less frequently in the short term. So if that's somebody that is born with an addictive personality or with the uh, a trait that predisposes you to addiction those percentages of people die at a much higher rate than the population as a whole. So that's actually being, I think that that part of the gene pool is being shrunk like as we see it. I think Billy might be right. Not so, anything so against it, people with like addictive personality. No, 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 no. But, but just straight up from like, uh, you can quantify that a little yeah. bit. I was talking about more from like the, the physical characteristic standpoint. Yeah, physical characteristic. Yeah. Physical character, it doesn't serve us. It actually helps because the whole goal to evolution is survivability. Short people are out then because I feel like short people aren't fucking as much as, as they used to. We've become a meme where it's like, oh, short guys, get out of here. 
Uh, not to go all bagel wait, wait, boss you on you guys. <laughs> short guys used to get laid more than they do now? Yeah, probably. Back in the day, it was probably distinguished. It was well, just only short guys. Yeah. That's what's <laughs> interesting about this conversation. It's like fat people. Is we've kind of, we have definitely evolved outside of being, like we're apex predators, right? Mm. When we weren't. And so we've evolved outside of our environment into the point of like we're one of the only species creating our environment. And so it, it's interesting to see what, the evolution inside of our own creation will be. Yeah, and I'm that's not, why I think it's going to be technological. I'm not like being hunted when I walk outside. You know, like I don't yeah, have to watch yeah. out for giant. And you don't birds. have to worry about going to war. Really, like very few people do. At least here in this country, 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. And so, like the the goal would be like to survive. And now to survive means to uh, be aesthetically pleasing to procreate and and generate wealth in in our society mm -hmm. and those are fucking weird character traits to be evolved inside of because mm -hmm. this is we're, this is new this is relatively new mm -hmm. yeah because it's like you and then like a um tech ceo you guys both have the traits to generate a ton of wealth but i guess they're very different traits yeah but they both lead to the same outcome mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the goal yeah there's also a much quicker and i know evolution doesn't always work this way but like you could see lungs getting stronger due to having <laughs> we can't really breathe at the moment haven't been able to for two years so mm -hmm. we could That's see true. something to do with lungs That's true. um That's but true. i was thinking more initially uh along Don donnie's line of thinking nipples on dudes out Yep, they're out of here huh. yeah which i think would look very strange yeah well th that's a, it's weird because i've done some research into nipples because <laughs> i've had that question before too i have four nipples so I don't know what I, that's like oh, a yeah, vestige right. of the past where it's like I'm half Labrador, but it's it's determined the sex of the baby is determined after uh, the nipples start to form. So mm. the nipples are already there part of it before you figure out if you're going to have a penis or vagina. So it's just like it's going to be there no matter what. So that mm. but that almost makes me think it's more realistic that they would go if. Because it's not like the, the chromosomes are already there, you know what I mean, when the nipples are formed. Mm -hmm. So it, it almost makes more sense that you'd almost be able to tell a little sooner mm. what the sex would be. It's a possibility. But, I mean, who's going to want to reproduce with a dude with no nipples? If all dudes have no nipples, you're not going to have much of a choice. Mm. But how, when are they going to lose the nipples? Billy's just very you, distraught because now I'm very, I'm very distraught because you guys are not grasping. No, I get it. Don't fall off. No, that's not true. Just stuff that's useless doesn't disappear. We that's all not, we that, have still have that, tails. That's not true. That's not true. Wait, wait, stuff that's useless does disappear. It just disappears over a long, yeah, a long period, period of time. Does anybody wait, in this room quickest, have a tail? But the quickest, yes, you, we all have tail bones. That's not a tail. You just tail. said Whoa, we but, all have tails. We, tail, we lost tails <laughs> all because those have we tail walk upright and we, and we can keep Has our balance. Has Billy been hiding a tail the <laughs> right. whole time? It would explain no, a lot. But, but no. useless traits do disappear over time. Like whales still have hip quickly, bones. But the question was but quickly over, evolution. No, they didn't say quickly. No, it's what's quickly. the first? There you go. The first? You love to change the next. But next is the soonest. quickly. Next is the soonest thing to happen. Soon doesn't mean quick. But the thing is, the tailbone is just as useless as male nipples. That's a that's a statement that I would have to actually put thought into uh, that I'm no. not willing to. But Billy, tail, tail Billy, you use nipples all the balance. time to tell if a person is using steroids or not. Yes, that's why you're upset. Hold on, the nipples well, might well, how, how can you do that? So when, <laughs> <laughs> or is this like a 20 minute tangent? <laughs> Just uh, Google your former uh, what's his name? Oh, Brian Cushing. Oh my God. Google Brian Cushing, okay. Bergen Catholic High School. Bergen Catholic. I'm not going to indict one of the homies. <laughs> <laughs> not publicly. That's a good guy that works hard. Burton uh, County. So powerhouse. Powerhouse football high school. Burton Big County. T, you have any ones? No. Y'all y'all covered it. He don't, he don't think evolution lived. happened. No. no he doesn't think evolution that's happened. Not, that's not... Do you think evolution happened? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's not like... Uh, mutually exclusive with creationism like it is animals. absolutely no it's not no it's not it's a thousand percent no it's not Aaron. what what we're talking about creationism like, hold on okay hold on saying maybe god, your form of creationism. saying god created the universe in does, six does days not, does not preclude you from saying that like birds evolved to have different beats in like, six yeah, days I agree, with that. I agree with what you're saying yeah in six days it's the premise well that some people I'm, believe that's literal some don't. i don't know uh, I, what do you believe um, do you believe that the, that the believe Earth is six thousand years old? I don't know. Uh, I do believe do the know. the the week long creation thing 
probably was literal. So you think he created everything in a, in a week? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think how long it took God. If you believe that there is a God that created the universe, I don't find it ridiculous to say that it happened. Yeah, in I don't six think it would even days. take that long. If he, yeah, if, I think he could do it as quickly as he I wanted. But but, but now that we understand how stars actually form, why is he allowing them to form naturally now over millions of years rather than voila? I don't know. You're asking me to 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 explain no, what I'm, God I'm, does. I'm, I'm asking, not qualified. No, to I'm asking you to follow the logic. Like logically, can you see how it's hard to believe that somebody went like that rather than? Yeah, gotcha. I, I find it equally hard to believe that the universe just appeared out of nowhere trillions of years ago. And yeah, that... nobody says that. Sure, they do. No, we don't. This show's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Bang Theory is like no one fully understands. Like, yeah. what, also, was, what again, was here before the Big Bang? Then nobody again, knows. Again, right. if something happened like God saying, let there be light, I would find it reasonable for something like the Big Bang to have happened. I don't think that, those are... Why? Come on. How can you say it's unlikely that it happened out of nothing, but then as soon as you say God made it out of nothing, then it's likely? That's bullshit. I'm well, saying, saying they're both incredibly difficult to believe. Oh, okay. I'm, I jumped on you too and, early. And that. that if you believe God created the universe and uttered a phrase such as let there be light, science could, and that there there is a scientific explanation for how the universe started that sounds relatively similar to right. that. Yeah. I agree with Big T. I think he's, he's not making them, like both are None so hard to grasp as a human like so it because we're always looking for answers like i know you're very inquisitive you're always looking for it sure. so it's like what you you go down a path of questions and it's like well if the big bang was first like you have to ask well what was before that it's kind of like <laughs> you do but there's there's some things that are literally out of our grasp because when you talk about like something like the big bang right i, I just spent mad time th th thinking and looking into this shit but if you look at something like the big bang literally time didn't exist so to ask right. what was before the big bang is kind of nonsensical but so, it's, but, but it's but so you hear how, how ridiculous that sounds not ridiculous no, it's, it's not just ridiculous. hard to grab no, it, 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 not, ridiculous in to, that to say what happened before there was time is it's it's impossible it's almost a nonsensical question yes correct? but it's not it's not ridiculous nonsensical just means it doesn't it, no uh, we're probably asking the wrong question is what that means yeah right? I, yeah but when you say that and, and if and if you if you posit it like okay god created the universe in six or seven and, f and he rested on the seventh whatever if he if he created it in a certain amount of time in which the way that we see time and we know that things don't um, they are not born in that small amount of time, then we can logically conclude that that is not an accurate statement. Okay. I don't know if we're going to get to the bottom of the, the history of the universe on, on this podcast. We can pick it up on Snack or Dose. Yeah. See if we can wrap it up at the end. Um, all right, next question. That'd be cool if we did figure it out, though. It would. That would make the news. Maybe the best podcast that would ever. Make, uh, people okay. would clip that. That would make the news. <laughs> people, people, people would clip that. <laughs> that would make the rounds. Hey, Chad, sure. on Macrodose, yeah. you yeah. figured it out. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Tyler. I'm from Ventura, California. Uh, my question for everyone. I just want to know what is a passion maybe not so known to everyone or even to people around you that you guys that excites you guys that gets you guys going that that really you know drives you to be great um well thanks uh <laughs> Oh my God, just, yeah. Tyler enjoys a little bit of marijuana from time to time. <laughs> this this guy sounds like a guy who really needs some guidance. He's yeah. looking for guidance, Billy. Frogs, man. <laughs> <laughs> they really do get you going. No. Oh, and we all know that. That's not. <laughs> it's not a secret passion. Mm -hmm. No. It's, Go ahead. What it, remember what gets you excited when you're a kid? No, he's not asking. He's asking what makes you excited, not him. Yeah, but I I think I know what Billy's saying. It's like. Go back to, to go, what you go think. Go to the basics. Yeah. Like, go back to what makes you feel like, like, remember back when you used to wake up on, like, a, a, a random day and just be excited to do shit? Oh, you think he's asking... A snow day. How, to, how do he's, I get excited about life? He's basically... He, I can tell he's asking what excites us gotcha. and, like, motivates us, but I can tell that he's looking for... Gotcha. Hell of an assertion to make, yeah, but I feel like... I know. Yeah, I, a lot I, of projecting. I, no, I, I kind of like I like where Billy's head's at, though. Yeah, I'm just like, gonna I'm just gonna answer his question because uh -huh. I don't want to assume he's depressed. Yeah, that was like a wholesome Billy moment. 
No, it's, it's nice of what you're doing. I agree. Mm-hmm. If if that is what he wants, that was very nice of Billy. And yeah. if that's not what he wants, Billy you're an is asshole. quite assertive. You're an asshole. <laughs> no, but he's saying, well, like, what gets you going? I could tell he's like looking for like inspiration. Yeah, right. I, can, I can't okay. tell that. But um, Aaron, I think that's a very nice thing of you. What's your secret passion? Um, I really just enjoy creating things, and it doesn't really matter what it is. Like short stories, long stories, writing, music. I think just having an idea and then putting it into the world is just like a very fascinating thing to me. So yeah, Arian, if that. you ever want to post these things, boy, do I have a website for you. No. <laughs> if you want to get blogging on it. No, yeah. I'm not, I don't want to blog. We got we have Leonard Fournette as a blogger we on our website. Sure you can join his you ranks. your running back quota. <laughs> I don't have any quotas, friend. Oh. <laughs> um, Talk to him. I, I think I'm kind of with Arian where it's like writing something. Writing is like still the thing. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna beat up everyone in the world. Now, now cool is mad. I love to write, not for your fucking website though. <laughs> I just don't have the time anymore. I don't have I don't have any time to do it, but I love doing it. It's it's the thing that would always make me the most excited when I would write something that I would feel happy about or proud about or that I thought was funny. It didn't matter if like five people read it or twenty people read it or two thousand people read it. it doesn't matter. Like it just, that's what made me excited was just like creating something, putting it out there. Twitter. Same same thing with music. Same thing with music. It's like if I can sit down and write a song and it makes me happy, that's what gets me excited is just like being able to create something. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I'm pretty public with my passions, like you know, traveling, crab rangoons, um, <laughs> history. I love history. Um, I kind of in high school and college, I wasn't obsessed with it, but I feel like the last five years I've just gotten really into it, uh, read a bunch of history books, but something like new that I would love to try. And I think I would just like, I'd be fully enthralled by it. We talked about earlier making hip hop beats. So if I think I did have the time to pick up a new passion, that would be it. All right. Big T, do you have a passion that we don't know about? Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty simple. I mean it's I like Tennessee football, the Braves, America. <laughs> I do I fucking love America so much. Um I, I guess it's not like a seer I fucking I love playing video games. I like when I get home I'm gonna sit down and play PlayStation until like ten o'clock. I just What's I, your what's your game of Right now NHL. Oh, okay. And also like Warzone and shit like that. But gotcha. Yeah. Same. Video, video uh, games, I guess. Yeah. Coley? I, I'm really struggling. Like, I'm not a very secretive person. I don't... Mm-hmm. There's nothing... I don't think any of you don't know about me. I'm pretty out in the open about everything. So I don't... I'm, I'm struggling to think of something that, like... Like, that isn't just, like grotesque that doesn't need to be on here Uh uh-huh well now you got it you you just fucked yourself eating ass like that's a secret to everyone in this room but like that's is it not really like a passion like it's just fun (laughs) very passionate about booty in the face like who like i don't out of everything else i'm like i recently tried that (laughs) i was very drunk she was out the shower it's it's not the worst thing i've ever done but I, I'm not like a. I'm not hopping back on that train. What is the worst no? thing you've ever done? That was the worst thing I've ever done. Actually, sexually. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that it just was went from yeah. from okay to I'll never do it again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's because it's, it wasn't like a, a, you know, it wasn't filled with you know. So it Shit. didn't really. Yeah. There was no. It was just like licking skin. You know what I mean? So. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's just yes. it's it's weird. Just it's a, it's it's a weird thing. Yeah, and I don't even know if I would if I wasn't Josh, drunk, I probably wanted I probably wouldn't have done it. But you know, I did it. And you know everybody involved was happy, so we sounds moved. like you weren't. We <laughs> it sounds like you were not happy in the though. moment. Of course, I was like, whatever we got to do, we got to do. And then I woke up like ah, I did that. Did I brush my teeth already? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I definitely woke up. Brush and them again. Woke yeah, up and know. hit the Ace Ventura. You know, <laughs> drank the toothpaste. But um, we yeah, are you know, so getting that Spotify deal. <laughs> Is color color macro dosing? Right yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I said. I've, I've tried to tell you. There's nothing people don't know about me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like uh, being brutally honest. Avery, you got anything? Uh, yeah, mine's a lot less grotesque than that. Um, I, I just think travel. Like, yeah. you got to see the world, man. Shit, yeah. You have to see like the like the domestic parts of the country that you wouldn't really think of going to. Like me and my a group of friends are, are starting to go to places that we've never been collectively as a group. And it's uh, it's it opens your eyes and you really enjoy it. Like you kind of reinvent 
like your friendship in a way where it's like you're all seeing something f- for the first time. It's pretty cool. That's beautiful. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Billy, yeah. you got anything ex- except for frogs? <laughs> kind of like stocks. Yeah. <laughs> like stock. God. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Crypt, like I'm sorry, Kai got into crypto. That's gonna make yeah. this kid happy. <laughs> I love stocks. I just look at them going up and down. Yeah, Billy started that question with like, I need to tell this guy what to make him passionate about, and then he's like, Man, I'm a crypto guy now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've never talked about the that few before. times you I've haven't. bought a stock, though, I end up just wasting so much time of the day, like staring at the stock. Oh, you don't do and that. Just like, and so yeah. I don't know. I don't really think it's a great use of my time. I like to buy certain things that I can just wait for five years and check back on that's, it like that. Yeah, that's the, that's but the anything you got to be like trading during the day, it, it no. just like it consumes your whole life. Yeah, you Roth should. IRA. Yeah. Yep. I have one that's, of those. He's not asking for financial advice, but that is a safe investment. Psychedelic stocks. Don't take stock advice from this podcast. I <laughs> lost $400 on a, a magic mushroom stock, but I, it, I think it's a long play. I'm going <laughs> to wait it out. Wait, which one? Mind Mend. That's actually about to do really well. Okay, nice. Legend. Let's go. Uh, yeah. one, one more time. That's Everybody like buy mind men. I'm I, not a financial dude, advisor. Take stock advice men. from this podcast. Yeah. Uh, Mad Dog, you got anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, the like easy answer is like I very much enjoy... Rest I mean, stops. Rest stops. <laughs> easy. I had a lot of people in my DMs asking me, like sending me pictures of Ohio rest stops, asking me which ones they were. Uh show me the lobby that is unanimous unanimously the same is not going to help me but thank you for the concern um forming relationships with people obviously i think from this job doing that is a pretty easy task but i've always been very passionate about i i'm one of those people that like i hate if people hate me so making sure i stay on everyone's good sides or trying to at least um i guess also um if i want to get like cheesy with it like advancing kind of erica nardini's mission of like advancing women in sports and media um i mean obviously there's a lot of men on this podcast specifically Mm -hmm. um something like that too uh i wanted i was the finance major before i wanted to work here so kind of going into like male dominated industries is something i'm passionate about and Mm -hmm. trying to break the glass ceiling in a way but rest stops are also (laughs) really high on that list all right one small bit of advice mad dog it don't matter what you do, people gonna hate you. You could be the Pope. You that's could true. Be whatever. Somebody gonna hate you for it. And that's so, what. That's fuck like em. kind of the biggest thing I've learned with this job so far is like, obviously I've only been here for six months and I'm only an intern still, but like there are people who like will DM me or tweet me and I'm and I'm not you guys and I'm not like a public figure or anything, and they'll be like, yo, I hate her or like the subreddit I've like peeked mm-hmm. at and like yeah. people will be like, fuck Mad Dog. I'm like, well, what did I do to you? Yeah. They, but they, I. But it's also it's like. It, You've got a whatever. job they want. Yeah, ninety nine percent of 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 that kind of energy towards you is projection from them. Like they're not happy mm-hmm. with themselves, so they have to find something to pick at. And so like that's why it's just you just ignore that shit. Somebody mm-hmm. said that I that I'm the reason that pe- girls shouldn't be invited to the Super Bowl parties, and that hurt me a lot. You know I how many you know how many haters I've ever met that were doing better than me, Madeline? Talk to them, Big T. Huh. Not a fucking not one. a one, <laughs> doggy. <laughs> Not a one. Big T out here, big ten. What I, y'all doing? I just don't understand that comment of like, sh- you're the reason why women shouldn't be invited to, to Super, Super Bowl, Bowl parties. parties. Well, also, we're not a sports podcast. But I'm not going to go to any Super Bowl party with just a whole bunch of dudes. dudes. That's, That's like, horrible. Fuck out That's a horrible, horrible idea. Yeah, I make a mean buffalo chicken dip. There you go. Fuck there you yeah. go. And you're great company. Yeah. Thank fuck you. the chicken dip. You're a positive person yeah. in any room. I would yeah. much rather. So I play Valorant, right? And so also we, we need to get you our front one of our office managers Enrique plays Valorant and I told him several times that you and him need to link up and play. What's it, ask him what his rank is first and then we'll and then we'll hook it up. But I play Valorant right and so you have to play. <laughs> Aaron said, "Don't people. waste my time." Yeah, I'm saying if you, if you, I mean, if you like, he's, I'll play for fun. I'll play for fun, but it's he, like he plays like every day. But well, then we might be good. But like, but like anytime you you, you play with a bunch of people, right? Like. You might get toxic people on the internet. You know, they would be racist or they just be mad for no. What the fuck are you doing? And it's like, I would rather lose with a whole bunch of people that are just good people and just like, oh, it's all right, man, good try, than win with a whole bunch of assholes. And that's just that's the life lesson, right? There. I'd rather be with a whole bunch of people who are just good and just be a ha- mm-hmm. average or whatever than be sitting on a mountaintop with a whole bunch of money well, with a whole bunch. You literally of just asked if he was good, what not a good person. Yeah. But wouldn't you rather him be a good person? No, no, no. That was more for if I, I can't, I can't, I can't play with him because, like, 
the skill level is, right, is right, different. Right, like, right. so I literally can't, we can't be in the same lobby. Right. So I'm down to play with him. <laughs> if he, I, if I get a burner account, or maybe he's better than me, and I get a burner account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? He always talks about, it, but I don't know anything about Valorant, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I'm gold. I'm gold three. Right now, Not if anybody out there want to holler at me, Enrique, we'll ask. We'll yeah. ask Enrique. Cold three. I'm, I'm on the verge of platinum, baby. We out. We almost there. We got anything else as far as voicemails? Nope, that was the last voicemail. You're unimpressed with my Valorant skills. Like no, no. I don't I, know what that means. Yeah, I've never seen the game. Never played it. I know, but it's just the way you kind of shrugged it off. Is there anything? I mean, I'm almost platinum, though. That's pretty okay. Platinum, platinum is high. Where is, is platinum the highest? No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> what's above platinum? Diamond. Talk to me when you're diamond. Are you bet? <laughs> what's like? Is your are your hands better or is your Valorant better? I mean, I'm not gonna get millions of dollars from Valorant. I promise you that. <laughs> you but, could. I cannot. Some people do, probably. Yeah, 100. Yeah, percent But I'm not one of those. I, you don't have to put in and say like those. So the pros, like one of my favorite dudes that I follow, like he, I, like he was like, he's like, yeah, man. I was like, yo, let's get in the game, just a fun one. And he was like, he's like, yeah, man, we'll do it. And it's like been like four months, and he's like, bro, I have practice. And like they practice. Like I'm not fucking going to practice for Valorant. My like, college had an esports yeah, varsity team. Like they they do drills and like aim labs where you can just. I'm like I'm not that into it. Like, I just I, it's a, it's a fun enjoyable game with dope graphics. All right. Yeah. If you play on Valorant and you're at what level? Gold. Gold or anyway, above? Gold, gold, plat, even a, a high silver, like, we can rock. Let Arian know. Yeah, we can rock. He might play with you. Yeah, we'll rock. I love I love playing with cool people. All right, we'll see you guys. Uh, those of you in New York, we'll see you tomorrow night Whoa. at Lucky Jack's, Whoa, right? Yep. Lucky Jack's, what time Lower are we getting started? We'll uh, it's, if you want to be there super early, doors open at 630 and from 6.30 to 7, it's a meet and greet with the guys. I'm going to be doing tickets at the door. I'm the bouncer, so don't fuck with me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 6.30, doors open. Um, it's going to kind of go from like 7 to whenever. And then, yeah. Right. There will be or Angry Orchards there. Okay, I love it. Fuck yeah. We'll see you guys <laughs> tomorrow night, and the rest of you will see you on Thursday. Count your days, Mother Teresa. Oh, yeah. Love you guys.